Today, my dad and I start a new head-to-head -head challenge on Football Manager. Glory Hunter, a quest to win the league of the top five European nations and lift their main domestic cup, as well as also winning the Champions League and Europa League along the way. And we have just 20 seasons to do it. And the votes are in and you've decided to start us in different leagues, so let's reveal that by you press the subscribe button, because let's face it, you don't want to miss this series. 34% of you voted for my dad to become the manager of Chelsea, while 37% of you decided I should be the manager of RB Leipzig. But just imagine the fun we're going to have when this series really kicks underway and scenarios such as a job pops up that we both want to apply for, facing each other in a European competition, or when the best job available is in the same league as the other manager. Now, usually we score these versus challenges using points. However, not this time. Instead, it's down to who completes Glory Hunter first or has the most trophies won at the end of 20 seasons. So buckle up because dad is already complaining about his transfer budget and I'm already trying to sign free agents in the first transfer window. And I've also been pulled against Manchester City in the Champions League group stage. Dad, yes. the viewers selected Chelsea for you. I'm quite pleased with that, to be honest with you. Yeah? Um, Especially with the amount of signings they've done over the, over the transfer window, which I've, I've, obviously so I've got a lot of good players in. I felt that I had to add a couple to them, um, but I'm not expecting to win the league this season. So my main goal this season is going to be FA Cup. All right, good for the uh, for the Glory Hunter. You yep. signed two players yeah. as well. Uh, you sold a player in Malang Saar, then you brought in Dybala. Yeah. I'm mainly for the position that you see him on there, the attacking midfield position. I felt I really wanted a real strong one then. But he's also a striker as well. So if I yeah. get an injury there, he can also drop into that position. Absolutely. Good signing as well for just £10.25 billion. Yeah. Pound. Then you said you wanted a striker because, of course, the injuries that you've got to Nkunku and Lukaku's not there. Yeah. He's gone on loan. Luis Muriel from yeah. Atalanta, £3.2 million. I pound. didn't have a lot of money left, but I thought for, for the... I know he's 32, but for the price that he was, I thought this was a good signing as well. Yeah. So you can already tell by the two signings I've got I'm attacking yep. nobody's doubting that <laughs> so yeah so as with Glory Hunter of course you can sign players who are 32 and not worry is, about it too much this would be what I've got to get used to now isn't it because I don't normally like anybody who are 30 do I no so this, this is big fun for me I think exactly because <laughs> we'll be off and out and at different clubs very soon okay so your tactic then as you say is very attacking now yeah. what we have done here is we selected dad's favorite 11 because when you click best 11 it includes all of the lone players yeah. that is at the club which we don't want but you're not nailing any players in no okay no, I mean, there's my, a lot of injuries as well that you can a, see they, um, the main guy that i got from roma he's going to be fitting in there somewhere as well between the three yeah i mean i'm concrete out for like till christmas yeah, as so we see he's, he's just coming in real life so yeah. you'll have Dybala drop into that position yeah. straight away and I'd then imagine. when when the other guy comes back i'll probably drop me into the uh, the attacking two somewhere. Yeah, I think he's good enough to be the, probably one of the better strikers. Yeah, absolutely. Up, that's up to the assistant to do that, then, isn't it? For sure. Right. Let's have a look at my team then, because you guys chose RB Leipzig. Now, not a lot of people like Leipzig. No. There was a lot of people in the comments saying don't ever go to Leipzig, but that's who you guys voted. And I made a couple of sign-ins, as you've already seen. We do have a goalkeeper that's joining at the end of next season. However, I don't think the goalkeeper right now is very good. So I signed David De Gea on a free transfer for just 41k a week. He starts in my lineup. I'm happy with that. He actually already got man of the match yeah, he did, in yeah. the Super Cup. Yeah. <laughs> but we'll have a look at that in a sec. Uh, so David De Gea joins on a free transfer. Then the only other signing that I decided to make was a loan deal, which was Hamad Traore from, Bo from Bournemouth on loan, who plays that centre attack and midfield role. As a squad player, we've got two really good options in there, which is the reason why I've selected the 4 triple 2 narrow formation because I've got a shadow striker and an advanced or well, an attacking midfielder on support. Danny Almo, Xavi Simmons, both exceptionally good players. Xavi Simmons, five goals in three games already for me. Now, uh, the only player I am nailing in is De Gea because a lot of the times it puts Galashi in there, which I don't want to happen, but my best 11 does look like that. And it does put Openda up front with Werner. I was playing Sesco, but I'm okay with Werner going up there. Simmons and Olmo. We've got Schlager and Campo in the midfield. Good back line. I think Willie Auburn's not going to be around for too long. But we've got some really good backups as well. The likes of Simakan, who I think is a really good player, uh, who can fit in there. So, yeah, we've got good options, I think. Yeah. Okay. 
Let's have a look at the schedule then, because I haven't lost a game or dropped any points yet. Started well. Started very well. I beat Bayern Munich in the uh, DFL Super Cup. 1-1. Beat him on penalties. Yusuf Paulson scored a 91st minute equaliser as well. After Thomas Muller scored in the 81st minute. David De Gea won man of the match. Brilliant stuff. Then I beat Leverkusen. 3-0. Javi Simmons with a hat-trick. And Stuttgart. 7-0. Javi Simmons with two. Good start. Very good start indeed. Uh, so... I have Champions League football this year. Dad doesn't have any European football, which actually could be a good thing for that FA Cup run. Yeah. So, I obviously would be targeting the DFP Pokal. They've won that previously the season before, which is the reason why I was in the Super Cup. Uh, however, I think I could have a go at the Bundesliga this year. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Especially, Especially after that start. Yeah. yeah. So, I've gone toe-to-toe -to -toe with Bayern Munich already. But the Champions League, I think, is a little bit uh, out of my depth right now. And I've got Man City, PSV, Eindhoven and Celtic in my group stage. I could drop into Europa League and maybe cause a bit of a fuss there, get one done early, but... I think you'll qualify for that. Yeah, I think I'll be second from yeah, that yeah. group. So that, uh, that that's could be a disadvantage for you then. That's it. That's it. Because eventually we've got to try and win that Europa League. Yeah. yeah. It's a race at the end of the day. Who can win the most trophies? And Europa League is just going to be sat there waiting. I think you might actually get in that competition first. Possibly this season. Yeah. Hopefully I do. Well, let's have a look at your team then. Because you've been getting quite some strange results, I'd yeah. say. One win, one loss, one draw in the league so far. But you've had a difficult run. You've had Liverpool already at Anfield. I lost 2-0 there. Endo and Robertson I wouldn't the disappoint goals. Like I said, I don't think I'm going to win the league. So No. Uh, you beat Burnley 2-0 at home. Just comfortable victory. It's a game I think I should win. Yeah, and I want to draw away to Bournemouth. Disappointed with that game. Yeah. <laughs> But that was my first game. Yeah, that was. I think you had Darbala, but you didn't have Luis Muriel. No, you only just no. signed him, yeah. actually. Uh, and then you're also through in the EFL Cup. But that means nothing no. because that is not part of Glory Hunt. Well, I, I totally changed my team there, didn't I? Didn't I? A yeah. Total rot rotation for that team. And I still got through. So, But like you say, I'm not worried about that cup now. <laughs> no, absolutely. Uh, difficult September ahead as well. Tottenham, West Ham, Manchester United all up next. Yeah. That's going to be a telling month for you to go forward. But I think it's time. Let's start off. Glory Hunter, the first season. Let's see what happens. This Leipzig team was a lot better than what I thought. We even stuck it to Bayern Munich on their turf. And goals in this team came from many different players. But Xavi Simmons was this season's MVP. He was outstanding. Dad starts the season did pick up in September, but October started with a loss to Luton. However, like Dad said, his aim this year was for the FA Cup. And his new striker, Muriel, is on fire, surprisingly. So let's see if either of us managed to add a trophy into our Glory Hunter cabinet in the first season. Ooh, fifth place finish, Dad. That is where I, I expected to finish, really. Yeah. I mean, you look at the league table for the whole season, look. I gradually got better and better as the season was going on. And yeah, exactly were. how we thought Chelsea would do, wasn't it? Ninth, tenth for a while. Yeah. Up to seventh, sixth. Crept into fifth and stayed there. Yeah. I mean, the only thing I think you should be a little bit disappointed with is that Villa finished above you. But, I mean, going by real life, Villa's obviously doing a very good yeah. in that first season. Yeah. In football manager terms, they're very hit and miss. Sometimes they can be good, sometimes they can be great. But I mean, that's, how the, that's how the league table could finish this season quite easily. Well, Man United down in 13th, let's hope not. Uh, 65 points for you is somewhat off the top four yeah but you are in a league of your own really as we set tend to say sometimes because what? the team below you tottenham 59 points six points yeah. behind you so yeah you're in there by yourself really and you've got to look at the start that i had as well when i dropped to the my lowest point there Which was 13 yeah so to get back to fifth i'm quite happy with that. yeah absolutely uh i can build on that Luis Muriel was your top scorer. That is a surprise. And and I'll be honest with you, it's nice because it was my signing, but I think that's bad because it's only 16 goals. Yes, I was going to say that to you. Absolutely. So let's have a look then. You finish in fifth place. You gain qualification for the Europa League, which also Man United did, which means they might have won the FA Cup. I know, I'd seen that. Off, off. They've won something at least. Yeah, I'm hoping that's the um, Carabao Cup. Uh, you had 11 losses in total, and there's some Tonkins in there too. Lost 3-0 to Manchester City, 4-0 yeah. to Arsenal, 6-2 to Man United. A lot of them, though, only lost one home game, Aston Villa. Yeah. Uh, drew too many games as well, unfortunately, and drew a lot of games. So only Didn't two, draw any nil-nils. So I only drew two home games there as well. Yeah. So at home, I was a fortress. You were. You were a fortress, as yeah. you can see there. You, you won quite a lot of home Which games good thing. at Stamford Bridge. But okay, this is not too bad. Uh, across the season, the profile, Dominic Calvert-Lewin. That is a surprise when you think of how 
far down Everton are. They're in yeah, 15th. 15th. And so, uh, Erlen Haaland only getting 19. So when you look at my leading goal score with 16 goals, it doesn't look too bad when you look at the leading goal score at 20, does yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, that's true. So that ain't bad at all, really. Okay. Competitions, though. No European football, but two cup competitions. Ooh, oh. fourth round by Aston Villa again. Semi-final of the Carabao Cup yeah. to Liverpool. Which Again, we, we say it doesn't mean anything. But it looks good on your CV if you get another cup. That is that definitely, yeah. It would have been better for me if I had won it. But. For future, for future, obviously, job, pro job prospects. Yeah. Man City won that, which means it probably was Manchester United in the final against Crystal Palace, 5-3. I think that's a... I've missed that one, that chance there. We'll leave a big team out of that. Yeah, Aston Villa missed knocked you out in the fourth there. round. It's quite early as well, isn't it? Yeah. yeah like Plymouth went further. They were in the <laughs> championship. They got to the quarterfinal. <laughs> <laughs> knocked out by Palace. Uh, so there we go. You not, Man United so you, then knocked out. When you look at the quarterfinal, the, 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 the teams that's in that quarterfinal, they're nobody like, in the top five or six. Oh, I've missed a big, big chance. There. Yeah, because Aston Villa got knocked out there. Yeah. Okay. Well, your goals tally then was 16 for Luis Muriel as top scorer of the league and only two and a half star ability. You do, of course, have Lukaku coming back. Yeah. So that's either somebody you can look to sell or somebody you can look to use. Uh, Brogia with 14 and 10. Raheem Sterling had quite a good season as well. Didn't Nkunku come back? And what did he do? So Nkunku did come back there. Oh, no, that's Mudweke. There's Nkunku. 24 goal games, 8 goals, 6 assists. Yeah. Could be something to look to, to, to you know, mm. plant your, your yeah. hopes on next season. Dybala, I'm noticing, played 22 yeah. starts. That don't, that, I don't understand that Seven one. 7 goals. He, he's injured. What did he do? Timeout so far, 5 months. He broke his leg. Oh. Broke his leg that against Middlesbrough. Why, that explains why he only played 20 games. In it? In so he played nearly every Africa game. Cup. Yeah. He played nearly every game up until then. Yeah. Oh, that's, so that's a shame. A, that's a bit disappointing really, because yeah. he, was, he was the one I bought in to sort of really give me that push from there. Give you attacking position. options. Yeah. Okay. Before we have a look to see how I got on, let's have a look at your transfer budget for next season. £53 million. Pounds. I'm happy with that because I, I feel that I've got a few players that I don't want in my squad. So... I can make that a lot more than that. Yeah. But my biggest problem is going to be who do I who do I, who do I bring in to make my team better? That's my... Yeah. Because so I have got a lot of good players there, haven't I? You're already talking about next season. Does this mean that you can kind of confirm you're not going to be looking for jobs? It's got to be a, It's got to be like with a top team. And I feel that Chelsea are a top team now. Yeah. I mean, I've, I've got myself into fifth. I'm going to have another go this season. All right. I'm, I'm going to stay at Chelsea this, this year and have another go. Okay. I feel I've got. I feel like I'm. A, I always know myself to have another go. Yeah. With a budget like that and the team that I know I've got. Yeah. Give it another go. With Lukaku and those boys yeah, coming yeah. back. God, I. All right. Let's have a look then. Leipzig. I was top of the league at the start of the season. How did I get on? I won the league on the final day. On the final day. He was. Yeah. You were top nearly all season. Then you lost it. Then. Look. Wow. Okay. That's amazing. Uh, champions. Yeah. Bayern Munich second place. They lost their final oh, game of the season. Game. Who did they lose against? I wonder. Is that? Did they lose to Frankfurt? I will have to find out. I don't know how that's worked out. Uh, they lost four in total. Oh, you beat them twice. So that's how they lost twice. the ace. Beat them twice. That's fantastic. I lost four games. I also lost to Frankfurt there. Okay, but yeah, if we have a look at past positions, wow. So, I didn't even lose the two games, which made me drop. And drew two, <laughs> look. Two 1-1 one, one draws, dropped down and behind by Munich. Then they lost on the final day to Hoffenheim, who finished in fifth place. So who did you play on the final day to win the league then? Frankfurt, 2-0. Come on. Top of the league. Oh, my God. I didn't expect to see Timo Werner there as a top goal scorer of 18. Where the hell's Harry Kane? Does he exist? <laughs> Can't see him. He's come to this. Oh, he might have won the DFB Pokal, um, but he hasn't won the league. Uh, no. We've got highest average rating, all three of my players there. Two highest assists. Clean sheets, 22. Seven more than Gregor Cobell, David De Gea. What a signing that was. Then. What a free transfer. What a signing. Okay. DFB Pokal. I've already won the Bundesliga, which is fantastic. Am I going to complete Germany nah, you shouldn't. in the you first season? <laughs> Let's go! Harry Kane that. didn't win a thing. DFB Macau, Frankfurt again! A bit of fiddling going on there, I think. So did <laughs> I actually beat them twice? At the end of 2-0 both times on the two final games of the season.
So two nil both earned, times. You have the last two games, one to win the league and one to win the cup. Yeah. And you beat them twice two nil. Oh, got to the quarter match final of the Champions match League. Fixing. Lost to AC Milan. Sevilla on the way. Wow. wow. I want the German league to look into this. Uh, match hey, fixing I, going on here, I think. I topped my Champions League group. Only lost two to Celtic and Man City. That's unbelievable. So, so I went did you finish the of, I didn't look at that because when you won the cup, I can believe it. Went through the round of 16, 6-2 six against them. Quarter final, that's when I lost to AC Milan. Oh, only just 3-2. Yeah, my end of the season was a little bit ropey, look. I had a, since the, the loss to Milan, 6-0 in the Bundesliga, but then I lost to Heidenheim 5-3. Two draws in a row, then I dropped down, and then the final game of the season. So really, you were, you were winning it quite easily. It went for that, that game that you lost 5-3, then the two draws. Yeah. Which let Bayern Munich back in again, didn't it? Yeah, because I had nearly, a bit... Re, nearly a repeat of last season. Yeah, I had like weird ones like Boca 0-0. Uh, and then I lost 2-1 there to Cologne. Lost 2-1 to Frankfurt. So the games that I was losing, I wasn't losing by a lot. Because the first game I lost the season was Gladbach there. September, only a 2-1 loss as well. So I never lost by a, a big amount. No. Outside of when... No, at all. Heidenheim was the only team who beat me by more than one goal. Well done. I can't Out believe I've managed to do that. Out of a start. So my question is to you. What do you do now as a manager then? Well, that's it. I mean, first season, you never normally manage to complete a full country, especially, obviously, because no, I haven't picked Bayern Munich. Probably no one ever done it until you played against <laughs> me, <isn't> it, eh? <laughs> So, I mean, the, the question is, one, is there any jobs to go to? Because else I'm just sitting there waiting. Or, or what? I mean, we'll have a look at my team statistics. 22 goals from Timo Werner, 20 by Benjamin Sesko. This team's only going to get better, by the way. Yeah. Because I could hold on and see if I can, you know, go for a Champions League. Maybe too far out. I, I don't think you... I mean, if, oh, no, I'm not going to say it. If it wasn't me, I wouldn't do it. <laughs> yeah. I've only got gone, 33 mate. million, so... I'll but if you, you what, have what a look... you leave and I'll leave and I'll go to your team. Yeah. <laughs> it's a possibility. <laughs> uh, job security. There's two... Newcastle. The Newcastle job is available. They've got money, mate. They have. They've got we money. We can see how much. Oh, £250 million pound is their transfer budget. I think, oh. I think I'll leave the Premier League. <laughs> Oh, that is tempting. So, uh, I, I'm guessing Eddie Howe's just been sacked. He has, yeah. He's just been sacked there because they finished in seventh place, which is without Europe. It is without Europe. Uh, the only other team was Montpellier. I wouldn't really want to go there. So, let's have a look at the uh, the other teams. What happened then? Real Madrid won La Liga with Barcelona finishing in second. Atletico Madrid didn't finish very good, did they? Where are they? Oh, fifth. Antonio Conte's the manager. There's been a manager merry-go-round. What's happening here? Diego Simeone left his manager role and is the manager of Manchester United. <laughs> what is happening? And they're in Europe. They are in Europe. Uh, League R is won by PSG, who only lost one game and drew one game. So They're not going to sack their manager, are they? No, they absolutely dominated. The Bundesliga we know about. And Syria was won by Juventus. Inter Milan finished down in fifth place there. That's a surprise. Yeah, so Atalanta finished in second place. Allegri is still in charge there. Oh, it's very interesting. So what was the other teams that was available there? You just said Newcastle was the only team. Weren't the only team that was available, was it? Montpellier. Oh, so you wouldn't... No, there's a couple of insecure ones, Sevilla, Real Betis, but nobody that's like really attractive to go to. Jose Mourinho is at So this Roma. is all new to me now, isn't it? I'm, I'm just looking at this thinking, yeah. how does this work then? So, yeah. so Newcastle's available. Yep, Newcastle is available, as is Montpellier, but right. the rest of them here are only insecure right, right okay. now. You're stable. <gasps> Graham Potter's back at Chelsea, at Brighton. That's interesting. So where is... This is, this is fantastic stuff. Let's have a look. De Zerbi left his managerial role and is at Inter Milan. We're already seeing all of these managers change <laughs> positions in season number one. But I guess, obviously, yeah, the big question is, what do I do? Do I apply for Newcastle, try and get the £250 million and have a crack at the English Premier League and the FA Cup, join you in the Premier League already season two, if they accept me, of course? Or do I stick around at Leipzig? Maybe try and win some more, build up my reputation, or do I just resign and wait for something else? That's the big question. Yeah, I'll have to find out. First season, I have claimed the Bundesliga and the DFB Pokal to add to my trophy cabinet. But my dad was just as curious as you guys probably are as well. Do I apply for the Newcastle job with the huge transfer budget and join dad in the Premier League? The end of season one had more jobs pop up other than just the Newcastle one. Not to mention the Euros happened which France won and then that caused even more movement for the managers. Such as Thomas Frank leaving Brentford to become the England boss. 
which hilariously led to Southgate taking his former role at Brentford. Lukaku is named player of the tournament at the Euros and Golden Boot winner, so Dad was really excited to get him back into the team. But I finally made my mind up about the Newcastle job. I'm going to apply for it, but I'm not going to put my heart set on moving just for now, as I actually think they'll probably won't pick me anyway, so I'm going to try and sign Gjokerez for Leipzig on the chance that I stay put in Germany. However, it isn't long before they're inviting me to Newcastle for an interview. And just like that, I'm in the Premier League. And it was easy to see why things had gone wrong for Eddie Howe by some of his arranged sign-ins. I was also starting the season with no assistant manager, zero coaches, and only four scouts in my backroom staff. And hilariously, Jose Mourinho took my job at Leipzig. What a summer we had. Unbelievable. Very eventful. What can I say? And I've got a new club. Welcome to the Premier League. Yeah. <laughs> There was me up and I could just uh, breeze through the Premier League without getting involved in you. And second season, bang, you're in with me already. And I think, oh, and you two, two trophies in the bank as well. £250 million oh. in my transfer budget as well. Oh, well. Okay. I was, I was like that to sort of like, should I apply for it as well? And I thought, oh, I don't like being disappointed, so I didn't go for it. <laughs> <laughs> Don't let me reject it. Yeah. Well, I had £250 million. What did I use to spend it on? Well, £56 million on the outs as well did add up. Uh, now, there was some downsides. They already had Scott McTominay yeah. uh, join in. But they also had some really cracking players too from last season. So in the January window, they brought in Pedro Conchalves. Uh, they brought in Gu Guanar Duarath, who I don't think is around much. Demina is in the youth academy right now. Valentin Gomez isn't a bad uh, centre back or left back. Buna Notte as well is is quite a good signing there from Brighton. I think the Scott the Tommy is, is the one that got him sacked. <laughs> probably. Yeah, he's probably the one that that helped him get sacked. But I then spent £283 million, but you've got to take away the £28 million from Lewis Hall because that was already a pre-done deal with yourself at Chelsea. Usman Diamande was the first signing that I made. Centre-back option, really good, of course. They needed a good centre-back to go next to Botman with uh, Cher being a little bit 33 now, a little yeah. bit... And I want to push, obviously, for a little bit more. Then I thought, well, the other weak points is the striker option. So I went with Ollie Watkins. Now, there was a story, wasn't there? Because yeah. <laughs> while I was waiting for the light, for, well, for the Newcastle job at Leipzig, I said to Dad, well, I don't think I'm going to get the Newcastle job. And I know what I want to do for Leipzig. I want a better striker. And I want to go for Gjokerez at Sporting. He well, looks like the striker for me. To be honest with you, there was only one more trophy you could go for with Leipzig, wasn't it? And it, yeah. was, and it was the Champions League. So yeah. you had to go big and get some really good players in, didn't you? Yeah. To win that. So Which I don't think I would have anyway. But what I, what my plan was... Oh, you went was, for hell of a striker though, weren't you? Yeah. My plan was is if I got rejected from Newcastle, which I generally thought would happen because of only having one season in the game is I would stay at Leipzig. I would try and win more trophies there because then my reputation would be higher. Yeah. But I would come back every month and check the jobs. Yeah. And that's what we're going to do going forward. And we're simulating the season. Instead of holidaying all the way through, we're either going to come back in January and do our January windows, which we looked at doing in the first season, but we, we neither of us had any money. No. Uh, or if we're looking for jobs, keep coming back and finding out if there's any jobs. And that's what I plan to do. However, Newcastle came in and I'd already confirmed the Gyokerez deal <laughs> and I was absolutely gutted. So I went for Ollie Watkins as the first pickup. But he's a, still a good signing. Really good signing. Yeah. yeah, I mean, last season he got 13 and 35 at Aston Villa, of course, finishing third place, I think. Uh, but then I also ended up signing Victor Osserman for £86 million as well. Two players I happened to mention back along about playing for Spurs. Yeah. In, one, in my wishes. Then we got eight goals in four appearances from that. So, yeah, he started off oh, quite well, to be honest. Yeah. Left back, Alex Grimaldo, £24 million. Uh, I think they needed a good left back, to be fair. I think they had brought in a left back, but it wasn't anywhere near as good. Uh, and then finally, the goalkeeper situation. Mama Dashvili came in in goal. The Georgian, your favourite goalkeeper, for £39 million. One of nice. my favourite goalkeepers. One of, yeah, quite a few. You, yeah, you have got quite a few. <laughs> Uh, on the outs was the likes of Matt Target, Jacob Murphy, Jamal Lewis, Sean Longstaff, even Karius went out for a loan with a thing to buy as well. There's quite a few on the outs. Uh, and tactically, 
I've set myself up very similar to Leipzig, but almost uh, in a different way because I've got the winger options in Pedro Gonçalves. We've got obviously Anthony Gordon and Harvey Barnes is in the club as well. And the reason why I've got a player here instead of down here, which where I played all the way through the summer, was because I had a bad injury to Bruno Guimaraes, my best player, who broke his ankle and is now out for another two months. And unfortunately, every single time I was... <laughs> selecting a best 11 so down funny. there it was coming up with scott mctominay whereas i would rather have joe lington so moving him forward gives me the options to have joe willock almiron and joe linton all ahead of scott mctominay which is what i'd much rather do because uh, on even on the game he's a far better player than scott mctominay is so i'd rather do that unfortunately so i haven't got a best 11 selected well i haven't got anybody that I want to change because the best 11 I'm quite happy with Isaac and Osman up front with coming off the bench Callum Wilson and Ollie Watkins what can go wrong there not bad at all uh, let's That's have good. a look at what dad's done before we have a look at the schedule shall we so dad you had a little bit of money and you ended up spending quite a lot because you yeah. sold a lot yeah Connor Gallagher going out for I 25. started getting rid of players that I didn't use very much and I just thought well I've got better in the in the squad and I could I could Im probably improve on it yeah. And a couple of players I was selling because I was chasing other players as well when I did to make up the money. Yeah. So you've got Gallagher going out, Kukurea going out. You've got De Sassi to Real Madrid and Chalaba to Real yeah. Madrid for over £30 million pound each. Uh, Petrovic, which was a backup, backup goalkeeper. And Robert Sanchez, which was the original goalkeeper. So that's that, because... I told you that I signed a keeper. Of course he did. Yeah. One of the best in the game, though. This is the one I was chasing mainly. When I seen he was available to buy... I just I, I went from that was the one that I was selling players for to try and get yeah I just thought well if I can get him in we know through past experience you get him in you've got a really good keeper in your, on your books and you yeah absolutely so you won't need to change it next season I definitely won't be changing him unless, we'll see. Un unless I move teams and I'll try and get him again yeah <laughs> uh, but on the ins outside of that your first signing was Zaniolo 30 million yeah, I needed. I, I wanted to get another winger in. I wasn't happy with um, the winger I had at, at the stage. Modric. I mean, I was open to, to put Sterling to the left, wasn't I? Yeah. That's what I was looking for. So I was looking for a right winger. But um, Sterling stayed and this guy went left wing. So. And then you got Scalvini, which was your highest paid transfer. £83 yeah. million pound in total. Well, we know Silver was getting quite old now, didn't we? So yeah. it was a case I knew I was losing a, a really good centre-back. So I had to get one in. So this is the guy I got in. And he is brilliant. And Only I'm, 20. At 20 as well, yeah. Four goals in four appearances. He's got yeah. a hat-trick. So when I was when I was saying I needed a new striker, I didn't think I'd be getting a centre-back with my striker. No. <laughs> uh, but you did get a striker, though. You brought in Pedro. I got this striker in, but I've really got two strikers, didn't I? Well, Lukaku you did. came back. Lukaku did, so, did come back, yeah. So I've got Lukaku up front with this guy beside him. Yeah. Uh, and so you haven't new, changed your tactic. No. So I've got a new strike force, new defence, new keeper. So All you've changed is the player role of the DLF up front, yeah. because that's Pedro's favourite role, and he's probably better than that, than a uh, centre forward or complete yeah. forward on support, which it was previously. But I'm quite happy with that. Yeah. Okay, it's it's a better squad than I had last season, so I'm hoping that I'll um, improve and hopefully win the league. That's what I'm trying to do. Yeah. If I can win the league, I, I can go off somewhere and get away from you. Yeah, <laughs> you also picked up two bad injuries though. Yeah, Dybala did, yeah. is out for three to five months with damaged Achilles tendon, so he looks like he's just destined to be injured for yeah. you after his bad injury last season. And then Wesley Fofana again out for two, four weeks to two more months yeah. after breaking his foot at the end of July. So he's already missed a month. So he was out for three months. So a couple of really bad injuries. Sterling's out at the minute as well for a twisted ankle, which was another two weeks at yeah. least. So you have also had the bad injuries. But for you eagle-eyed viewers, first in the Premier League so far, Dad. Won all four start. games. I've had a good start. You even beat West Brom 9-0. Yeah. Wow. And my next Stanford game is, is most, the most interesting one that we've been looking at for laughing wise as well, haven't we? Yes. I've got Gareth Southgate. Gareth Southgate's <laughs> Brentford and Thomas Frank and Gareth Southgate just switched jobs, which was hilarious. <laughs> and you've got my old club Leipzig yeah, in the Champions League. That's what I'm not looking forward to. Send my regards to Jose what, Mourinho. I already know they've got a good striker. Yeah, they just like <laughs> Jokerez, of course. Uh, I didn't give them much money out, outside of that, so they didn't really have much to play with. It literally... I bought Giocres for the whole of the budget. Yeah. So they didn't have anything to play around with, but he is an unbelievable striker. I'm so gutted that I uh, confirmed that deal because I 
I probably would have signed him instead of Ollie Watkins. Yeah, you must admit. Yeah. I probably would have got him and Victor Osman instead. But yeah, what a, I mean, what a start. I'm pleased with that. I'm yeah. scoring goals. Scoring a lot of goals. West Ham 4-1, which is obviously a, a bit of a derby as well as Spurs as well. That's always a really good game, oh, isn't it? A result away from home. Yeah, 2-1. So yeah. uh, so you've played three London-based clubs already, yeah. beating Crystal Palace 2 as well, 2-1. So good start. Your Champions League fixtures look like this. Leipzig, of course, then Milan, Celtic, PSV Eindhoven, Barcelona, Juve, and electing Copenhagen. It gets easier as it goes along, yeah. but that start is a little bit scary with uh, the former I'll, um, club and uh, Milan. I'll take it, though, because if I can win my home games and my last two games are at home, yeah. I'm through. Yeah, that's true. And they're two, e what I would class is quite easily yeah. winnable games. Absolutely. Uh, and you've got like the, the two easier ones are away which yeah. means you play the good teams at home gives yeah. you a bit of an advantage mm. definitely yeah Yeah. Now, so I'll be, I'll be disappointed if I don't go for it yeah I think you should too now weirdly I'm also in a European competition because of the UEFA Conference League which I wasn't really too pleased with because of course that counts for nothing on Glory Hunter. <laughs> yeah. We're not using it as part of it, but there we go. But my schedule looks like this, and I did drop points once against Leeds after being 3-0 down. Uh, Victor Osman scored two, and Callum Wilson got one as well to put me uh, back on level terms, but that was all I could get out of them. I beat Sarajevo in the qualifications 4-1 and 5-3 after playing a bit of a rotated side, but I did beat Manchester United who is still Diego Simeone's Manchester United. 3-2, good win. Victor Osman with the winner there. We then got Wolves, beat them 5-2. Great result again. And then Southampton, newly promoted Southampton, 7-1. So I'm also scoring a lot of goals, but I'm also shipping goals as yeah. well, which is a little bit worrying for me. I haven't got, kept a clean sheet just yet, despite having uh, new defenders and a new goalkeeper. But there we go. So I am in the UEFA Conference League. And I've got to play six games. Zagreb, 20. Austria, Vienne. Zelenzen, Nikar, Jair Gordons and SJK. The only thing I could think is if I do win that, which I should be one of the favourites to do so, then it's an extra trophy in my cap on it for my managerial profile. Yeah, definitely, yeah. To be attractive to other, ma to other clubs when eventually I move on from Newcastle. And who knows, I might realise... In a couple of seasons time, I'm not going to get anywhere with Newcastle. I need to move to a better club. And I take Dad's job at Chelsea when he gets sacked. Who knows? <laughs> After I've won the, the Premier League. Yeah, all right, okay. <laughs> well, season number two of Glory Hunter started off with a bang, but how does I've it finish? I've got to really go for it now, though. And I've really got to go for it with you getting two trophies in the bag already. Absolutely. I mean, come on, how do you lot out there? Who honestly thought one of us would win two trophies in one country? Straight in, in, in the first season. In the first season, season. Yeah. yeah. I didn't, so. Yeah. Well done. Yeah, all right. Okay, let's have a look. See what happens. Season number two. The two sides met more than just the league games, also meeting in the Carabao Cup. Annoyingly for Dan, it means nothing coming back from 3-1 down in the semi-final first leg, knocking me out 4-3 on aggregate because it doesn't count towards Glory Hunter. However, he also does have the chance to knock me out of the FA Cup in the third round. And just like Dad's League Cup run, I was dominating teams in a competition that doesn't count towards our trophy cabinet. But hold on. I was also dominated in another competition too, the Premier League. And it just so happens that a match against my father became the most important match of the season. As with two games to go, Newcastle head to Stamford Bridge needing just a win to lift the Premier League title. <laughs> I don't believe that. How can you go from one league to another league and win the league both times? From out of nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> Did we say this is a five-year challenge? It might be. It could be. Oh, bling, you know. I mean, we played against each other at the end of the season there, uh, which you could have stopped me from winning the league. Well, you won the league by a point, and I lost against you the second to the end Second game. to last game. So I could have stopped you from winning the league then. You could have. But you didn't. And Newcastle are champions. Unbelievable. One point above. Manchester City. I actually nearly threw it away. Like, I did actually lose at the end of the season there. So that game that I beat you... Won you the league. Won me the league. That's even worse. In your ground. <laughs> Unbelievable. And I lost to Spurs a couple of games before that. That is hilarious. I lost seven games in total, Dad. Liverpool, Tottenham, Villa. Man United, Brentford, Man City and Fulham. How many games did you... You only lost nine, so you didn't lose that many because we drew the same amount. You're only six points behind me. Yeah. It was actually really close up there. If you consider that, I mean, again... The, the difference between you and then the team below you, 17 points. Yeah. 
I was never going to go any lower than that, was no, I? No, it was top five, or that is it for yeah. us. It was just who finished where in the top five. Uh, but yeah, you lost nine games. You lost 9-0 to Man City. 9-0. Well, that is hilarious. They were top league at the time. They were top. <laughs> uh, you also beat them, though. 5-0. Oh, I had to get my own back on, right? <laughs> That's crazy. Uh, so going down was Palace, Southampton and West Brom. But we don't really care about that. All we care about is the winner of the Premier League. And that is Omega Luke. Oh, yes. Uh, seven losses only, which is actually still quite a lot, to be fair. 83 points to 82. I had two top goal scorers in there. Isak and Osserman. That's good. Yeah. Isak had the highest average rating. And Kunku, you had the three highest assisters. Yeah. All in one go, which is pretty special. The problem is that the goalkeepers are one of the, the clean sheets tonight. And I think I'd have done better if I'd done that. Yeah, I think for a clean sheet, Dad, you might need to play a little bit more tactical well, yeah, in defence. Well, that's why I got the, one of the best keepers in the world for them. Well, it? yeah, but still, you need to give him a bit of help. <laughs> Just sticking everybody up front. But there we go. Okay, we're on Chelsea. Cups. You're in the FA Cup, you're in the Champions League. That's all to play for this season. Oh, but you won the one that doesn't count. Still, it's good, though. That's not the wizard. <laughs> yeah, but you get that on your manager profile. Yeah. Which is better than not having that on your manager profile. It's just annoying because you could have won the FA Cup. Uh, you were eliminated by West Ham in the fifth round. Not that in the knockout playoff round by Atletico Madrid. So I'm not in this competition, so we can check it now. Uh, Man City beat Liverpool in the final. Wow. Uh, the league phase, you won three games there. Three games you should have won. You yeah. beat Leipzig. Yeah. Jose Mourinho's Leipzig. Uh, you drew two and then you lost three. Oh, that's bad. Yeah. You shouldn't be losing to Juve. Uh, to, to Celtic, sorry. <laughs> shouldn't be losing to Celtic. But there we go. Okay. But Carabao Cup. Who did you beat in the final? Arsenal. I'll take that. That's not bad Thank at all. Much, yeah. uh, in the semi-final, you beat me. Oh. I mean, as we said, no points on this. No. It's literally just whoever has the most trophies at the end. So beating each other is just bragging rights in this one. Winning the trophy is not good to me, though, is it? I mean, like you say, it's just a case of it's on my record, isn't it? Yeah. Goes on your manager profile for yeah. when you eventually want to move on. But yeah, that's a good semi-final, though. You beat me 4-3. Uh, I think, was, what was I? 3-1 up in the first leg. Okay. Let's have a look, then. Omega Luke, Newcastle, probably a Newcastle legend now. How do we get on? Yes! Won the Europa Conference League. Again, it doesn't matter for glory hunter purposes, but it's another trophy in the cabinet. You knocked me out of the FA Cup as well. I'd stop you from winning something. You knocked me out of both competitions. I'd rather stop you winning the league. <laughs> you had a chance. Yeah, I know. You had a big chance. You could have done it. But yeah, I beat... 7-0 in the final. Jesus Christ. Was there, oh, no was there any hope for these clubs to beat Roma in the semi-final, quarter-final, Wolfsburg? I was playing some decent sides, yeah. to be fair. Round of 16, knocked out Dino Zagreb 9-4 in aggregate. Didn't play in that one, but I played in the league phase. Oh, I lost two games in that. Shea Gordon's and Austria Vienna. Who? I beat in the final 7-0. <laughs> <laughs> that was payback. Unbelievable. Victor Osman played in that division. He scored 12 goals. Crazy stuff. Can't believe it. Uh, 36 goals for Victor Osman, 31 for Isak, 20 for Gonzalez and Ollie Watkins, which is really good. 15 assists for Trippier and Gonzalez, but Trippier is leaving. He wanted to. Uh, Explore his options at the end of the season. Grimaldo and Anthony Gordon That's not bad, though, with I mean, 10. 34, you've had a good service out of me. Yeah, I think and I've you'd got, have to replace him anyway, wouldn't you? Well, I've got Tino Liveramento, he's okay to yeah. be fair, who can slot in, but maybe I can, uh, well, if they give me a lot of money, who knows? £241 million. You just had 250 of them. To have a crack at the FA Cup <laughs> and have a crack at the Champions League. Oh no, that could be trouble for me, couldn't it? What did you get? 77 million. Yeah, look at my wage budget, look. That's so still not, not bad. It's not, not, is it, really? Still not bad. You can have a go. Maybe you want to have a look at some other jobs. Well, what's on offer, then? Let's, Let's have, a, have a look. Any jobs going right now? I'm Trip Frankfurt. That's a no, then, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> They're in eighth place in the Bundesliga, which we... was won by Bayern Munich 
Leipzig finished in fourth place. Jose we did, we didn't notice there was a few changes in the Premier League as well. Didn't there we? was a lot of managerial yeah. changes, yeah. If we go to the Premier League here, we can see uh, the manager movement. So Ange Postacoglu was the West Brom manager. He isn't anymore. Uh, Thomas Frank, of course, left for Gareth Southgate. Ange Postacoglu was out at the start of the season, or in October, sorry, and then it's on slot. So Ange has been sacked twice in one season. In one season. <laughs> Simeone was sacked for Zidane, uh, the West Ham, West Brom manager and the West Ham manager both left the clubs. Iriola was sacked, Eric Ten Hag has come in, Andy Reid was sacked at Forest. Eddie Sean Howe's Dyke. come in, House and Hootle left because he went to a new job and Iriola took his job. Deich was sacked and Kira McKenna came in, the Ipswich manager. Yeah. And Steven Schumacher All right. was the ex Argo manager, came in at Southampton for Russell Martin. So there's been a lot of changes in the Premier League and there's probably going to be a lot of changes elsewhere too. But right now there's only one job available, which is the Eintracht Frankfurt job. And there's no insecure club jobs around the world. So it all depends whether that creates a ma manager merry-go-round, whether I decide to leave and create one myself. Well, but I've got to go to Germany, would you? Today. No, I've got to go to Germany. No, absolutely not. No, thank you. Don't need to do that. Completed it. Been there, done that. Okay, well, let's have a look at the updated trophy cabinet before we move on to season number three. So despite Daz Chelsea's side winning some silverware with the League Cup, it's still an empty trophy cabinet for Glory Hunter. But again, the Europa Conference League is another trophy that doesn't count. But good job for Dad, really, as I, of course, now add the Premier League title to the two that I've already won in just the second season. After the success of me lifting the Premier League, the Newcastle board awarded me with a new contract. And Dad was fuming, so he signed Giocarez, mainly out of spite. There were also some big names on the market, too. But they unfortunately went elsewhere for some reason. And I just can't think why. But a broken leg to Reese James during the summer and Dad deciding on a new tactic led to a big transfer window for him. Dad, you decided really early on you wanted to change your tactic, yeah. which meant there was a bit of uh, a, a, just clear a out. wipeout, a clear out yeah. yeah, of some of the wingers, including Zaniolo, who you only signed last season for 30 million. So you already know I'm not going to play wingers. <laughs> yeah, getting rid of him <laughs> so for 50. That tells you who else is going as well. Raheem Sterling, yeah. who left the club for 74 million pounds. Yeah. I mean, the two wingers, that gives me a, a big, big budget to play with now. Yeah. Um, so if I'm not playing wingers, I'm going to go attacking full out. Okay. And, I, and I, I had it in my mind, I wanted to change this season. I was going to take a gamble and I was going to go full out attack. Right. Right at it. And, and I think that's probably the best way to win the Premier League. And I can't afford not to win it this season because if I, do, if I do, I might have a team that's not, not, not going to do really good and you might be just beating me again and, and I'll, I'd, probably, <laughs> I'd probably leave. So this season for me is... Win or bust, ready. Okay, so you started off by signing the guy, the, the guy that I signed last year, <laughs> and then I left, and it broke my heart in Gyokrez. I've got a couple of good strikers already there. So what I wanted to do was, if I got any injuries, I wanted to make sure it was world class players coming in. Yeah. This this guy fits the, the bill. I could afford him, so I've got him in. Well, he actually's been starting for you as well. To yeah. be fair. Uh, then you looked at your back line. Yeah. Because you sold De Sassi last season. Yeah, it was. But you also, I think you sold another centre back or something. You sold you sold a couple of other players I lost with the, the likes I lost of the Mudrick. Guy, didn't I? The, um, That's right. Yeah. Thiago Silva retired. I lost him retired didn't I? Uh, yeah. By the way, Mudrick's also left for thirty-two million pound. Cole Palmer's also left. Yeah. As has Dacho Profano, of course, was another winger. They were just players I wouldn't use in. So yeah. No point of keeping them in the squad. I know a few people have been saying to me, oh, use him. You, you get them in your team and it takes them three seasons to bet them in properly, doesn't it? We ain't got that time. And we ain't got that time. I've got to be, I've got to be reacting next season, next season. Yeah, because you're already in your third season yeah. without a trophy. That's right, yeah. Right so now. I can't afford to be messing about. So, so Hinkampe come in. Strength from a defence up. I've got a good good forward line now. Get this guy in. Left-footed, left-sided uh, defender. He obviously yeah. can play left-back as well. So he's fantastic. I really like him as well. Uh, great player. Then you signed Mateus Nunez from Man City. So they bought Zaniolo off you. Yeah. You bought Mateus Nunez off of them. This, I mean, this is another good signing for me. He might not even be in my first team. No. Or you got, got Caicedo and Enzo Fernandez. such a good midfield as yeah. it is. But like I said, if I get an injury... It's another world-class player yeah. coming in. And they're given to you the same price as what they yeah, bought them for. Yeah, I was surprised with that. I was lucky with that, I think. And then we looked at you... Well, you had that Reese James injury. Yeah. Which is a big injury. Yeah, I was a bit disappointed because he was he was probably one of my best defenders. Well, yeah. Uh, so you brought in Sebastian Baselli, who can play right-back and centre-back. Yeah. Just like a Campe, really. You can play both. 
Uh, this guy is more suited for that right back role, but gives you options. That's right, yeah. And it was a good buy as well for only £18 million. Uh, then we have a look towards the end of the transfer window. Kendry Paez obviously is a player that was already signed by the club to join when he turned 18. He turned 18. Here he is. Very much doubt you'll be playing him in your side no. yet, because as you say... You won't get in and you need players for right now. But you had about £80 million left. Yeah. And you splashed it all on Evan Ferguson. I just wanted to make sure that if I did get any injuries up that top, I was still getting players coming in of this calibre. Yeah. I my, my midfield just... Oh, I just couldn't touch my midfield. I couldn't replace them at all, could I? Yeah. You'd have to go on into the under millions. So, I went for this guy. So, Evan so I, now I feel my, joined. my strike force now is lethal. Yeah. Whether I've got injuries or no, it's all there. Well, let's have a look at it because the tactic has changed and it's now three up front. I mean, it's uh, nearly, yeah, it's pretty because I've got the shadow, with a shadow striker, striker yeah. as well. He was obviously in Kunku, who's been class for you. Yeah, so you've got Pedro, who you got last season, Lukaku in that target four role. Giocarez starts, which means your bench has Evan Ferguson, yeah, Armando Brogia, Nicholas Jackson. Yeah. So you've got a lot of players. Dybala doesn't even get into the side so right there. So that four strikers there, I've got what well, our class is all strikers. I can replace every single one of them, yeah. And that's what I needed. Yeah. Uh, you're back to a Scalvian in Hikampe. Oh, that's wow. brilliant. Yeah. Uh, with Costa in behind. Best so you, the... you solved that problem that I think Chelsea yeah. have in real life. Yeah. If Thiago Silva does leave, uh, well, you've got three better players. I solved the problem by getting a goal scorer in as well, didn't I? That's yeah, with Giocares <laughs> as well. Yeah. Uh, and Caicedo and Fernandez in midfield. Obviously going to be solidified. Maybe this don't win it for me. I don't know what I can do. <laughs> <laughs> This is probably one of the best teams I've ever had. Well, I had £250 million as I know, well. That was what was frightening. Though. All the time I'm buying these players and I'm thinking to myself, how can you improve the team that you've got? But then you've got £250 million. You can easily spend, where I was looking at players for 80, you can easily go to 100, 120. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, I'm still a bit worried, but I don't think I could have done any more. Well, let's have a look to see what I did before we look at Dad's schedule and see how he got on. Because I decided to sell... Anthony Gordon for £60 million. He wasn't really cutting it for me. He hasn't really developed into the player that I hoped he'd be. Five goals and three assists with a bang average average rating. Not for me. So I sold him for £60 million. Good, good a bit, bit of profit. And I was quite happy with yeah. that. Did sell a couple of other players as well. Got another £14 million. Scott McTominay left the club. <laughs> Come on. Let's go. Buzzing. <laughs> Absolutely buzzing with that. He went to Villarreal, so I can't wait for the Villarreal job to come up yeah. so I can apply for it <laughs> and join him. Glory Hunter. Uh, so, no, I spent £72 million here. I spent a lot of money. What? So, my replacement yeah. for Anthony Gordon was Garnacho. What a signing that is. Yeah, he's class. 21 yeah. years of age. I'm a bit of a fanboy of him already. I think if you're playing wingers, he's, he's, you, you've got to get him in your team. In your he's team. lethal. He's yeah. unbelievably quick. That 19 pace, 18 acceleration, good with both feet. Just think in the match engine, he plays better than Anthony Gordon. Yeah. And I've seen him develop into an unbelievable player as well. So if I am here for a year or two, playing him in the first team, he might get even better. So yeah. he takes a number 10 role as well. Benjamin Pavard for £98 million because Kieran Trippier got himself injured. Yeah. And I was like, oh, no. Actually, to be fair as well, he was supposed to be leaving the club. He, yeah, he did at the, the end of the, the season, didn't he? It was, um, he did the old, I want to leave on yeah. a free transfer. Yeah. So you go, okay, no worries, Kieran. We'll see you later on. You know, thank you very much for your service. And then all of a sudden it come up, Dan Ashworth has agreed a deal with Kieran Trippier to stay. I was like, what? Uh, so Benjamin Pavard, I've bought him anyway. He's a better player. He can also play centre-back too, which gives me options just like Dad with his players that he's brought in. And he's world-class, in my opinion. He's a world-class centre-back, that passing ability. Inner Milan got him on an absolute steal in real life, £27 million. He's quality, and I like him a lot. So he comes in. Then, obviously, I sold Anthony Gordon to Spurs, and I brought in Basuma. No, I do like this player. This is my yeah. backup centre midfielder for when Tenali. I see, when I see you looking at this player, I still had some money. Yeah. And I was, I was thinking, he's gone past him again. And then, then you looked at someone else, and you went back to him again, you looked at him again, then you went off, and I'm thinking, don't buy him, don't buy him, because if you don't buy him, I'm going to jump in. <laughs> <laughs> and you went, oh, no, I'm going to have to go back to him. And you yeah. Went, oh, no. <laughs> there, was a, there was a couple of talents that were like, it would cost a little bit too much. And although I did spend £59 million, £59 million on a player that won't go into my first team, because unless I was, like we said, unless I was going to spend £150 million, I ain't going to get any better than Bruno Guimaraes no, no, or no. Tonali. No. So it had to be Basuma, unfortunately, uh, who will be that rotational option for me. 
And then finally, with uh, Kieran Trippier getting another injury, I think I brought in Mohamed Simakan, seventy-two million pound as just another option. So again, between play us, centre we back, just really right stitched back. that team up completely, didn't we? Well, Leipzig, yeah. yeah. I mean, Jose Mourinho is Leipzig now. Is he still there? He is still there. It's been absolutely rinsed yeah. compared to the team that I had, which won the double. Even the players that I brought in, I don't think. Oh, David De Gea is still there as the goalkeeper. But yeah, we absolutely rinsed their team. Then they uh, they might struggle a little bit next season. We might see the Leipzig job come up yeah. dad might have to take it who knows <laughs> that's glory hunter that's the exciting season uh, that we have the the summer season but let's have a look at my schedule so far because i've played three games and i have already dropped points i did though beat manchester city who were the fa cup winners 4-2 in the charity shield the community shield so good sign of things to come uh, they still have by the way pep guardiola for anybody who is interested everton i beat them no, I didn't. I drew against them 1-1. But I did beat Watford 4-1, who've come up to the Premier League, and Manchester United 2-0, and their current manager is Zizou. So, he's a bit under pressure, I think, already, because their team, obviously, I've took away Alejandro Garnacho. Yeah. They've lost Scott McTominay. Where are they going to get their goals from? <laughs> uh, let's have a look, because I am in the Champions League after winning the league last year. It's an outside chance, but you just never know. PSG, Lazio, Sturm, Graz, Feyenoord. Uh, Red Star, Galatasaray, Real Madrid and Porto. For manager's sake, we've still got Ancelotti at Real Madrid and PSG is still Luis Enrique. No movement in there just yet. I think you should go through there, shouldn't you? I think I should, yeah. yeah. Uh, I don't know where it'll be top eight, but I think the PSG and Real Madrid game will be close. I don't and think I'll get battered. You've got a good chance of winning the rest. Good chance of winning the rest, yeah. absolutely. Dad, though, how have you started? It's been all right, but you've also dropped points to Everton. That is weird, isn't it? who is a bit of a bogey team for both of us. And it's Kieran McKenna, of course, who we highlighted. Yeah. They've been quite good. They've done all right. Uh, you also beat Watford 3-0, though, and you beat Brentford 1-0. Still Gareth Southgate. So, who, yeah, we as we mentioned, <laughs> we picked up Neymar. On a free transfer. We couldn't believe free this. Free transfer. Yeah. <laughs> Neymar has gone to Brentford, and they've got Buendia as well, Gabriel Veron. I mean, I've seen the press conference. Neymar's dream was to play for Gareth Southgate. He even said he was gutted that he announced himself as Brazilian before Gareth Southgate became the England manager. <laughs> it's true facts. It's true facts. Yeah. Because yeah. at the time he was in Barcelona and he went... <laughs> and they were like... I'm no Brazilian. What's wrong? They were like, oh, I've already committed to Brazil. And they were like, what? Yeah, but what's wrong with that? He goes, I wanted to play for Southgate. <laughs> it's just such a shame. But now he gets to do that at Brentford. So, very good. Interesting He's stuff. The only ever players ever said that, though, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's have a look, though, at your Champions League fixtures. You've got Bayer Leverkusen, who would be a very interesting team to yeah. go to in Glory Hunter. Villarreal, uh, Juventus, Nice again. We mentioned uh, the French League probably being the hardest. Yeah. Nice is probably the bit, second team to go to in France. Three or four teams you can go to France, isn't it? Yeah, and I would say Nice is probably the second best right because money-wise and the type of player that they got, I would say they're the second best in the league. Borussia Dortmund, again, another one, but you've got them Manchester in the Champions Borussia. League. That's, that's, the German that's your German side, side you like yeah. to, yeah. yeah. Uh, AC Milan, that's another one of your former yeah, clubs that you've had. Yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, Ajax and Lech Poznan. I should go for it. You should. You've got with the difficult... The team, the team that I've built now, Yeah. I mean, really, with the team I've built now, I, I want to be getting to the final of this. Yeah. I think I had two harder teams, but you had more difficult games. Yeah. But yeah, you should still go for it. We, we should both go for it, really. All right, then. Glory Hunter, reminder, we are coming back every every month or so to check the jobs and interesting stuff that's happening, and we're coming back in January. Yeah. Right now, we don't have transfer budgets. You've got very little one, uh, and if you look at mine, I think I've got about eight million. Yeah, I've well, got about eight million. I'll put Ferguson in right at the death and yeah, I so to, to use the money that I have. We don't had. have much going into January, but every now and then, they just give you a little bit, and some options may come up. So, let's have a look to see what happened across the season. And we'll catch you at the end. As predicted, some interesting jobs became available, but none that were tempting enough to make a move from our clubs. And during the January transfer window, Dad started to receive offers for players he could cash in with. This, alongside the fact that his team had already started to click into gear around the new year, seen him in a title race just over the halfway period, with me lurking in the shadow just behind him. So he tried so hard to strengthen his team to make that last push, but was really struggling to find the right man. Then he had a great idea. The one man you'd expect Dad to go for, he went for him. And eventually, after some steep negotiations, Dad had an offer accepted 
for Frank Kessie. And him signing him could be the extra horsepower Dad needed for the rest of the season. After all, we were drawn against each other in the FA Cup quarterfinal. And our recent success led to other managers' casualties. But the final day of the season sees Dad travel to my stadium with us placed in first and second spot. Oh, I couldn't stop you. Get in. I couldn't stop you. I tell you what, I was really worried that you were the last game. It really worried me, but as it looks, I mean, what? Nine points? Yeah. Beat me 1 0 on the final day of the season. I was on form as well. Yeah, look at my finish. I won everything. Yeah, you won five games. Congratulations, that's the Get Premier you. League done. Oh, it's so annoying. That would have been hilarious if I managed to stop you. I mean, I wouldn't have done. I mean, my tactic worked. You were miles ahead. 13 goals. Yeah. I knew I was going to score goals. And I just, obviously, it had to be a Kevin Keegan tactic, as I call it. I will score more than you. Yeah. Yeah, you were miles ahead of Arsenal. You'd already won the lead by the yeah. looks of it. It would have just been funny. Uh, but still, yes, Arsenal really dropped off towards the end there. Uh, I'm finishing third. I'm still happy with that point behind Arsenal. 78 points. Why did I win it on last year? 83. So you had more points than I did last year. Yeah. So you would have won it last year too. Some bad finishes for other clubs. I mean, Manchester United down there, it does look like they've won something. However... That's bad He's, that, I think that's the Carabao Cup. I think that's what you oh, go into if you win mind. the Carabao Cup. Yeah, I don't mind them winning. Uh, Man City finishing sixth place. <sighs> Liverpool in fourth. Right, profile. Osimhen, top scorer of the league. Isak with 21 as well, but Lukaku there with 21 as well. I'm pleased with that because when I knew he was going to come back, I was tempted to sell him. Yeah. I mean, we came back in January uh, and Pedro and Lukaku were the top scorers yeah. of the league so far yeah. on it. So the fact that Osimhen and Isak's come through, I'm quite pleased with that. Uh, Osimhen with the highest average rating. Chill was up there too with the most assists and the highest average rating. Plus... Player of the match seven times. Not bad for a left back, isn't it? Yeah, and you had the joint amount of clean sheets with Ramsdale there. It always happens with that keeper, doesn't it? He's we good. always say with Diego Costa, we get him in. To he, be fair, he does though, a job for you. look how much money you spend on your defence. Oh, yeah. Which is which is what you intend to do. Yeah. Strike force, defence. Yeah. And that it, it paid off. You've won the, the Premier League. We're on Dad right now. What else have you done? He's done it. Get it. <laughs> Done the double. That's the two in the bag. I mean, I've got all three in the in the Premier yeah, League. Yeah, yeah, won the, yeah, won the, the English Cup, leagues. No, yeah, it doesn't count, but you've done it. Oh no, I've just seen it. Quarter final by PSG in the Champions final. League. So, but England's complete for you now. Yeah, you can move. I can move. You mate. can move on. Yeah, wherever you go, I will hunt you down <laughs> and I will chase you. <laughs> I'm not even going to try and go for the FA Cup. Whatever league you go to, I'm going to join that league just for fun. You've got to come back and win that one yet, though. Yeah, I'll still got to win the it. FA Cup. So. Uh, so the FA Cup, you won 5-0. Against Arsenal as well. Jesus Christ. And they were, they were on my ass all the way through. They were, they? yeah, looking at it. I mean, points-wise, when we're simulating each month by month, we can't see the points. No. All we know was that Arsenal was second. No, I was second. Yeah. Arsenal were second for a while. They were also top for a long time. I would say over the Christmas period, they were they were just yeah. after the Christmas. They were, they went top, and I went. I lost a couple of games. I think. Yeah. So if you take a look at the Premier League, the past positions from the three teams, you can see here. So there was a time where even I was top. Yeah. Um, they were for a little spell there. Arsenal were top for a while. Then you overtook them, but you were we were aware that they were in second. Yeah. And then we were aware that I was in second when it came up to that final game against the two of us. So they only picked me at the post there to that second place. But all three of us chopped and changed and it was a very good title race. But you battered them in yeah. the FA Cup final. Get in. Which is fair play. Well done. Let's have a look at where I went wrong then from this competition. Quarter final by Chelsea. Round of 16 by Chelsea. <laughs> So I stopped you from winning the FA Cup and I stopped you from winning the Champions League. Yeah. Get in. <laughs> yeah. And I went on to win one of them myself and 5-0. Oh, <laughs> so I blew Arsenal Good out of the water God. and I blew Newcastle out of the water. Jesus. Three defenders scored the goals. Wow. <laughs> Unbelievable. So you knocked me out of that one. Uh, then the round of 16 in the Champions League. 9-7 on aggregate. <laughs> it just goes to show we were both playing very attacking football oh, definitely. 9-7 Barcelona doing Inter Milan 6-0 in the second leg look. unbelievable uh, what an entertaining year I mean who did go on to win oh so it hasn't been played yet Ooh. which makes it interesting actually Barcelona and Bayern Munich in the final which tells you probably neither of those jobs will come up now no. Barcelona has a different manager in Gallardo uh, I don't know when that happened it was 
last year, two years ago, yeah. actually, two years ago. I, we missed that one, if I'm honest. Uh, the Barcelona job coming up. But Bayern Munich has Thomas Tuchel still there, despite obviously not winning the league when I was yeah. there. Uh, so they've obviously reclaimed the uh, the German Cup again. Because uh, if we look across the leagues, Barcelona has also won La Liga. The French league was won by PSG. Serie A was won by AC Milan. So maybe the Juventus, Lazio job, things like that yeah. might might crop up for your dad. Because now, I mean, you're free to go from England. Yeah. you got no reason to stay in England. No, nope. no reason whatsoever. Uh, in the Bundesliga, of course, Bayern Munich won. Leipzig finished in third place. Ooh. It's still Jose. They've He's done still better there. Than I thought they would do. Yeah, the Dortmund job is still Terzic too. So, no movement in no. those regards yet. I mean, German clubs are not ones to no, really snap yeah. and sack managers straight away. They are a little bit more patient than maybe the English. Clubs I mean, they're are. still in the Champions League as well. So. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Um, so, but we did notice some interesting stuff, didn't we? Yeah. <laughs> there are managers gone, and you might have seen it already. If you take a look, we have Manchester United, Manchester City, and Arsenal, and Nice, who we highlighted earlier yeah. as probably the second best team to go to because they finished in sixth. In League A, I think the biggest surprise there really is Arsenal. They come second, second in the Premier League, FA Cup finalists. Yeah, I mean that's a big surprise, really, yeah. isn't it? Because he was sacked I mean, like that five nil drilling by me at the end of the season. Just sacked him, I think. Yeah, <laughs> it says down here, Arteta sacked by Arsenal. Yeah, uh, Guardiola sacked by Manchester. City. I mean that's a big surprise with it. They're, they're sacking him. I, I thought he might have re left rather yeah. than being sacked. So, well, he hasn't done very well for the last two seasons, no. finishing in sixth place. I mean that's a team to take with Marilyn Howland, isn't it? Well, yeah, I mean, even I'm tempted to go, do I just do that for a season? Yeah. Get the FA Cup? Because, I mean, you you, you know you don't need to do the top three. There's no point you go into the top three. Because the, the only thing, the you next, know, would be Europa League. The next one I'm tempted, though. With Nice. I'm tempted with that. Or if you look at League One, I, I, I mean, I said this earlier. I think them and Monaco are the two best teams outside of PSG. And I think Nice is probably better than Monaco because of the side that they have. And they still got Turam and Tadebo. Yeah. So they still got their best centre back. They still got their best centre midfielder because he's quality. He's unbelievable. And if you take a look at their players, they still got Laborde. He's old, but he's good. Uh, Sofian Diop as a as a winger is absolutely 25. cracking. They got Emega who's joined. Bunani who's joined. Twenty one. Who's there? Sorry, Terra Moffi who's there. I mean, I think Great the only striker. thing that's putting me off there is that you've got to go there and you've got to have a really good one or two seasons to yeah. take PSG on. They signed a good goalkeeper too, Karnaseki. So you wouldn't have to worry about the goalkeeper. It's looking even better, isn't it? And they got Vitti, the other centre-back. They've got a great team. It is just the, the hardest thing, and they've got a player coming back on loan. The hardest thing is PSG. Yeah. I mean, they lost three games and drew six. Yeah. PSG don't have an out-and-out -out striker no. because they're not scoring. I mean, Muani I mean, is a striker. He's just well, not scoring that many. They're going to have a lot of money, PSG, isn't it? It's who they yeah. buy means they got. They've got 185 transfer budget. Yeah. Uh, whereas Nice, thank you, thank you very much for the TSC skin, or TCS skin, 33 million in the transfer budget and 100% of whatever you could bring That's in if you took Look, that job on. two or three players and get another 30 million in, 40 million in, 70 million, I could buy quite a few players with that. You've got enough strikers. You could run the same tactic as what you did at Chelsea. You could do it. Uh, Mate, that's not a bad side, actually. With me staying at Newcastle, because I've still got the FA Cup, 215 million. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Or, or, just a thought, I go to Manchester City, who's in the Europa League, with Erling Haaland. And... What's their transfer budget? 249 million. If they would take me. Unbelievable. That would be funny. To go in Europa League with Manchester City. Oh, God. If you took Nice, they're in the Europa League too. Yeah. I can't <laughs> against you then straight away, anyway. There we go. So awesome. let us know. How did my squad actually do then? What, what, who, um... who scored the goals yeah. for you? Well, it don't matter. You're leaving them. Well, 29 nice goals know, for Pedro. 23 for Lukaku. 22 for Evan Ferguson. Yeah, look at that there, many... Jackson with 19. Giocca has only got 16, but I'm really pleased because Ferguson was my last minute buy, wasn't he? Yeah, and he got quite a lot. So I'm pleased with that. Per game as well. Yeah. For my team, if I decide to stay, Osman 28. 26 for Isak. 23 for Garnacho. It's a fantastic season for Garnacho. Uh, and only 12 for Gonsalves. That's where I think I went wrong a little bit. Uh, that attacking midfield role, maybe I need to upgrade Gonsalves. He's not, not quite cutting it in that shadow striker role. But I could be tempted to move. But what are your thoughts? What do you think we should do? Who do you think Dad should go? Remember, that's not just his only option. I could go for Man City. Well, no. 
whoever takes the Man City job might leave a job for you. Yeah, true, yeah. Whether See, I'm, you I'm wait I'm new to this, these, aren't I? So yeah. why do I just sit back? That's three massive jobs that Big you hope managers. that they don't just go like that yeah. and just switch and change. What you kind of you kind of hope is that, you know, the Inter Milan manager takes one job, the yeah. Barcelona manager takes the other, or Real Madrid, well, you know, oh, no. so you've Carlo Ancelotti. Now, you? I don't know what to do These now. are the decisions you've got to make in Glory Hunter, yeah. and this is what makes this series absolutely amazing. So please make I'm, sure you're I subscribed. Might I might just do a bit of this, look. Yeah, and just wait. Yeah, just sit, sit and wait. And wait. <laughs> so make sure you are subscribed so you don't miss the next episode. And of course, let's have a look at that updated trophy cabinet because Dad's got some additions to make. So it was a huge season for Dad at Chelsea, completing England with the FA Cup and Premier League title in his third season. Therefore, it meant that I couldn't add any trophies to my Glory Hunter cabinet in season three. But with Dad set to resign and four big jobs available already, I can sense a manager merry-go-round very soon. After completing England from a Glory Hunter point of view, Dad resigned from Chelsea, much to the board's dismay, leaving everyone curious as to his next step in management. Which also meant four of the biggest clubs in the Premier League are without a manager currently. And it's a World Cup year which always leads to more manager movements. Dad made his mind up though and he applied for the Nice job to move to the French League if selected for the role. With the deciding factor being how good some of these players were, not a lot is needed to be added to this team to put up a fight against PSG with the right style of play. And while that was all happening, I was preparing for the next season making some new signings for Newcastle. However, favourite for the Nice role is Marco Silva, who also resigned as the follow manager. But Dad was still given an interview though a couple of weeks later with the owner, Sir Jim Ratcliffe. Meanwhile, the Real Madrid boss is being interviewed for Dad's old job, which would definitely have me applying to go to Real Madrid if he moved. But the Nice fans have spoken and considered Dad as their favourite. And sure enough, they were happy because Omega Dad is the new manager of Nice, signing a two-year contract. But that still left four massive clubs without a manager. And then when the World Cup finished, all hell broke loose. Managers were moving left, right and centre, jobs were appearing non-stop. And more big jobs in the Premier League appeared when Klopp left Liverpool. But I was sticking by Newcastle, focused on winning the FA Cup this season. But that was until this happened. The PSG manager Luis Enrique took over Dad's old job at Chelsea. And you could say the rest is history. <laughs> Dad, I can't resist. <laughs> I can't believe you've done this to me. <laughs> what did I tell you? Come on. Yeah. Wherever you go, I will hunt you down and I will chase you. <laughs> I'm not even going to try and go for the FA Cup. Whatever league you go to, I'm going to join that league. Just What makes it worse is the PSG manager took my job. Yep. Yep. It was all because of you. So, Dad obviously got a new job. He is now the manager of Nice. And because of that, the manager merry-go-round was well in force. And who took over Dad's former job? Luis Enrique. And who was Luis Enrique manager of PSG? <laughs> I mean, there's been so many changes, hasn't there? Just yeah. simply because there was also the Euros that was... No, the World Cup, sorry, was yeah. on. Uh, and there was already loads of jobs available, like Jurgen Klopp's gone to Inter Milan. There's so many jobs that came up that I was like, ooh, could I take that? I was tempted by the Man City job, but I thought, no, I'll stay at Newcastle. But then I could not resist the PSG job. I'd have been silly not to. The only thing I'm going to say is you've got to go back to England yet, so... I have, yeah, that is a downside. And do you know what? I know already people are going to say in the comment section, oh, I can't believe he's had a cop-out again and he's gone to PSG. <laughs> and do you know what? I don't care. <laughs> because I know I am the villain of this story. I'm the villain of my own channel. I know you're all rooting for Dad. I'm the villain. It's what I do. We I've all, haunted him. We all ate him, didn't we? We all ate him. <laughs> so I decided to do the thing that, that I knew that everybody would hate me to do the most. After that VIP thing that you put on the last video, you deserve all the hate anyway. Oh, yes. So, fantastic stuff. I am now the manager of PSG. And in the transfer window, I had 250 million. Of course you did. Uh, I still got 134 million pound left. Because on deadline day, I actually sold a defender um, and a couple of other players. So if we have a look, uh, there's a couple of players that I didn't sell that had already gone out. I mean, they got Laporte in on a free and then longed him out before I'd even joined. Uh, Ek Ekatike also left. 
and then I sold. These are the so the, the players that I sold. Usman Dembele for 52 million and Presno Kimbempe for 34. And I signed one player and that was Victor Osserman. Brought him with me. Brought him to your own striker. So you brought your own staff and your striker. Yeah. So I brought, brought Victor Osserman with me. Uh, well, I didn't bring my assistant manager because he was terrible. So oh, yeah, uh, yeah, I, yeah. I hired a new one instead. You brought one of your coaches, though, didn't you? Yeah, I brought yeah. one of the, a couple of the coaches. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Gabby Vega joined us on a free, which was a player that Dad tried going for, actually. So I, I stole him as well, but before I even got here. And Ruben Nevers as well. So they've got a great team. They've got a cracking team. Let's have a look. So very similar tactic but I have made it different in, in player roles and in, in some of the player instructions are different just to suit this PSG side. Uh, I haven't got any players locked in, but we've got Javi Simmons who slots right into that shadow striker role, Mbappe and Osman up front, Ansu Fati, Vitinha, Ugate, Hakimi of course on the right. My weakness is my centre-backs, but I still have Skriniar, Hernandez and Marquinhos, M M Mendes at left-back. They're going to have a hard time when they come up against my team because I'm going to be attacking them. Oh, Lucy. I just know everybody's <laughs> going to hate me and I love it. I love being the villain of this story. So, Dad, how have you been getting on at oh, I spent my Weasley... 30 million just like that really didn't I what was quite funny is Dad was really excited and hopeful when he went to Nice and then his mood completely plummeted <laughs> as soon as I became the manager of PSG when he realised it was his own doing really <laughs> uh, so the players that you brought in I mean we, we've seen that a couple of the players already uh, but you the first sign I think was one of your best in Coop and Miners. freebie as well yeah when this guy was available I had to grab him quickly yeah PSG also went in for him yeah, as well did, I was, yeah. so before I was, I, was, I, was club. I was a bit surprised I got him really yeah uh, so. and it's not too much of a, a wage really 125k no. and he's can afford that but yeah he's going to be a starting player for you uh, then you you identified that you maybe would need a better striker yeah and you brought in Wahi which actually weakens Lons who finished in second place last yeah. year I mean, being French as well helped me at big style, so yep. it was. I just couldn't afford to let him go. So yeah, got him in. He's a very good player. Yeah. For some reason, at one point he played left back. Yeah, he's, Don't he's know a why. good squad player, isn't he? Yeah. <laughs> then we've got Thiago Jalo, which is a better centre back, and the reason for it was your centre back. Yeah. As you're about to sign a right back. Your centre back broke his leg. I was gutted when I was Vitty, <laughs> not to because the right back I was after as well was a good right back as well, wasn't yeah. he? So, I, and that was where I thought I had a little bit of a weakness. So I went big for a right back then, and then I had to get a replacement centre back. So this one's okay though, and oh, you, you, you did it. say if you had more money, you'd go for the centre back. Yeah. But you had options in there, yeah. uh, and they've only just signed him from the French league anyway. So he yeah. has played in the French league. Leo actually went down to League Two, by the way, uh, but they come back up now. Twenty-seven million pound. It's not bad to be honest for for that caliber of player. And then finally we. We recognise you didn't have a, a goalkeeper, so you loaned Spike Brits on loan yeah. for the season. So I've got a really good goalkeeper, so I'm just hoping that he don't get injured. So yeah, uh, tactically, you can see we have nailing in one player uh, here, Buonani, because he doesn't naturally play in that position. However, you've played him there throughout the start of the season, and he was I think the unbelievable. First, in the first game, he scored all three. He scored a hat trick. Yeah, yeah. Um, five and five so far in your in your yeah. uh, your system which is again very similar to the system that you were rocking at Chelsea which won you the league just a few player changes oh, to suit a, the players just, that you've yeah, got. Yeah, I mean, it was just the front two. I didn't move about, wasn't it? Yeah. So outside of that, if we did pick best 11 outside of Buonani, imagine Buonani is in there right now. Uh, we can just put him in straight away. There we go. This is the lineup that Dad is is looking at. Moffi up front there with El Yawahi and Laborde. Kefren Turam in that centre midfield He's a with good Coop Miners. Yeah. You've got a really good side. Yeah. You have got a really good side. And I think you might... I, don't, I think I might be a little bit too strong to win the league, but I think you'll be second easily. Well, we, we do know that... I mean, on last season, PSG, I think they lost... It was between three or six games. I can't remember yeah. exactly. I think it was six. I'm not 100 percent sure, but I've only I only need you to lose a couple and me to beat you twice as well. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And then I'm in. Yeah. So um, I'll settle for one or the other. I'll settle for the league or the cup. Yeah. The first thing Dad said to me when I took the PSG job was, "I'll just wait for you to win it all in season one, and then when you leave, I'll take the PSG job." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's the way I've got to think of it now, isn't it? I'm, get, I'm getting wiser this game now. That, I just got caught. I, I got caught out there, didn't I? I yeah. You I mean, needed I, to resign and then be patient and yeah. wait. And see what actually happened with my job as well. With yeah. all those big jobs being available, Man City, um, Arsenal and all that. Yeah. 
I should have just sat back and waited and just see what happened. I, I think what it was, I looked at this team and I thought, they're not a bad side actually. And then I just thought, if I don't go for it, someone else might go for it. So I think that's yeah. what done me. I think I just jumped in too quick. I honestly don't blame you for making the move because as we identified um, last season, that the, the Nice job is probably the second best job in France. Yeah. And you don't know that Luis Enrique is going to go for a job. Oh, I didn't. Because at the time, he, he wasn't even favourite. No. Just... It was Carlo Ancelotti because yeah. I was going... Go on, Carlo. Yeah, you, yeah. Take the job because yeah. I'll go to Real Madrid and yeah. I was thinking everybody's going to hate me because I'll just go to Real Madrid and win stuff there. But if you take a look, Tottenham job is available right now and that's because other jobs have just been taken, which probably means the Tottenham manager has just left to go to one of those those jobs. Arn Slot left his manager role by Munich. That was yeah. one I was looking for yeah. because Thomas Tuchel has took over at Newcastle, I think. Is, it, is that how it's gone? It's, it's, it's gone mental, isn't it? I think he did, yeah. He was so, favourite for your job, wasn't he? Yeah, he was favourite for my job and I think he moved across to my job. He has. Yeah. So Thomas Tuchel is, is now at Newcastle. So the amount of managerial changes that started because you won the league it's been absolutely <laughs> crazy but what a time we have had this preseason! it's been hilarious i mean if i win something with this then it's been a success so yeah then i'll like i say i'll just wait for you to piss off and then i'll go take over it. <laughs> <laughs> schedule then let's have a look dad you've actually had a great start yeah. you lost one game uh, in total Leo. That, but I'm still happy. I've still got a good start, so I'm yeah. for it. I mean, the third best team in the league, you batted them 3-1 at home. Yeah. So it's a good start. 4-0 against Strasbourg. They were managerless at the time as well when you beat them. 5-2 against Rennes. 3-2 against Lorient. We don't yeah. face each other until October. Uh, but as we identified as well, you're in the Europa League. That's another reason why you moved there. Yeah, I've got a good chance. Europa League. I've got a good chance in here, except until I found out that New uh, Man City, Man City are also <laughs> in the Europa League. I mean, if you have a look at this, you can see Man yeah. City, Juve, there are some big teams in there. It's going to be hard. Yeah, it's going to be hard to get in there. But then sometimes you've got a big teams like that, haven't you? Yeah, absolutely. The good thing job. is that you you haven't got any Champions League teams coming in. No. So it's literally just Man City, Roma, Juve, Villarreal, out all of those teams and that's it yeah that's the only ones in there i just need um, to be a little bit luckier with the draws yeah that's it another club that didn't have a manager at one point was Leverkusen. yeah that's the team I'll, I'll, i'd be interested in taking over yeah if absolutely if you have a look at their manager it's now simeon inzaghi uh, it was coins and sal he left he is now the manager of napoli because Napoli's manager went yeah. out. It's it honestly, was it was loads going on. Yeah, there. because of the international <laughs> jobs as well, it was crazy. But there we go. Let's have a look then at my schedule and see how I've been getting on. I've won every game so far. I have conceded goals. 8-2 and a 4-1, but 5-0 start, 2-0 uh, and 2-0. I know you all hate me. <laughs> And I absolutely You won that it. first game 5 0 without even tampering with the side, didn't you? You just put your tactic in, let, let the best 11 be in, and then won 5 0. Yeah. Before and that, you one of, in. <laughs> around here was when my assistant manager was suggesting I should drop in Bappe. Yeah, that was weird, wasn't so it? So I was like, okay, and I won 4 1. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't know. Uh, there we go. We'll, we'll, we'll see. My Champions League fixtures are Barcelona, the Porto, Fiorentina, Shakhtar, Atletico Madrid, Salzburg, Stuttgart, Newcastle. and Newcastle. Ooh. <laughs> How interesting I've got to play my old club. Uh, but I think I'll, I'll, I'll probably come back in January and have a look at spending that 100 million. Well, you've got to have new, really. Yeah, because it's yeah. just, I think I'm a centre back short, really, now because I sold one of them. Um, but I'm very intrigued by this season. Do you intend on coming back and, and looking at jobs at all, or are you going to stick it out now? No, I'm here for the for the season. In for the season? I'm here for the season. Until I win and leave. Is I've, that... got a, I've got a good side, so I'm just hoping that you slip up somewhere. I mean, you could easily get beat in the cup, and I think it'll be me or you first or second. Yeah, the so cup's I... the one I'm worried about. Yeah, I think if you you slip up once in the cup, I could be in. Yeah. And then I, I, I could go for it through and win it then. Yeah, absolutely. Well, okay. I'll be happy for winning one of them, I must admit. Yeah. Well, let's waste no more time. Let's see how this season plays out. With the season underway and me surprising Dab with my move, his Nice team still cracked on with the assignment. However, as mentioned, January came around and I completed the signings of Joe Neves for £89 million and Edo Militao for £56 million. Unfortunately for Dad, he had nothing to improve his team. And just over the halfway point, I had created a seven point gap over his Nice side in second place and I yet to lose a game. However, Dad had other ways of disrupting my season. Because as fate would have it, we face each other in the Coupe de France semi final. <laughs> Get in. <laughs> There's one thing you're not going to win this season, boy, and that's the cup. <laughs> Get in. It stuffed me as well. I was 4 0 up half time. That's unbelievable. And. Both my January transfers scored the two goals. Oh, you're lucky. <laughs> <laughs> Get 
Get, I've got a hell of a chance of winning the cup then, haven't I? Did you go on and win it? You had Bordeaux in the final. You did. Wow. Oh, Good. That's huge. That's one big trophy in the cabinet, then, boy. Fair enough. <laughs> Added another trophy. Right. Let's go and see what I won. I got the league in the yeah, bag. Yeah, I knew you had. I got the league in the bag. However, it's a bad season. <laughs> it's actually really bad because <laughs> Newcastle knocked me out of the Champions League. My former club, the club I left to join PSG. And they actually went all the way and lost in the final. <laughs> now, they also went to the FA Cup final, the trophy that I need, yeah. and lost to Manchester City. Speaking of Manchester City, though, Dad, yeah. they knocked you out of Europa League. Oh, we no, mentioned I'm... it, didn't we? Yeah, I got to the semi-final, and, and all the way through, I was just looking at you, and I'm going, I just need to stay away from City, I need to stay away from City, and bang, they popped up. Yeah. Semi-final, I thought. I mean, I didn't do bad against them. No, 9-5 on aggregate. Yeah. Uh, but they went on to the final and beat Roma. I mean, I lost against Roma in, in the early stages of the. I think I lost two one. I think. Yeah. So, but I would have fancied my chances because I was getting better. Yeah. So I would have fancied my chances with that one. I mean, we said at the beginning, didn't we? City was going to be the team to beat in the Europa League. In the Europa League, and they were. They won but the isn't FA it? Cup. Isn't it weird? I find this absolutely fascinating. By the way, the butterfly effects. Yeah. Because you leaving allowed me to have the PSG job, but I was tempted to go for the Man City job, knowing that they had Europa League. They actually went on and won the whole thing. Well, yeah. I leave Newcastle, for the, even though I needed the FA Cup, they got to the final of the FA Cup, but then they knocked me out of the Champions League, another trophy I need. You knocked me out of the French Cup, even though I came to France to try and eliminate you both, or try and knock that one out of the park straight away, even though for the reason why you left is the reason why that manager joined your club from PSG and I joined PSG. The butterfly effect. That was a lot in that, wasn't it? It was. <laughs> but it's crazy, isn't it? I oh, love that there's like a yeah. weird interlinking storyline yeah. with it. And oh, there's so many things what in this. We, what season are we in now? Season four? This is season four. And how many, so many sort of things has happened already in it? You're just like, oh, God. It's, it's unbelievable. Run, it? If you haven't subscribed yet because you're so oh, gripped God. to this series, I don't know what's ever going to make you subscribe. This is unbelievable like drama. This is like the, the things that are happening. I'm not even over exaggerating, I don't feel like. You stopped me from winning the cup in that season, going on to lift it yourself. You put up, and I said you would, quite a good yeah. fight in the league. I mean, you look at that. You it, lost it, three. I only lost three. So one more less, one more than you, but I drew seven. That's the games that let me down. Yeah. One of them was against me as yeah. well. I lost two, which was to Reims and Marseille, but I drew five. Some yeah. bad results in there. <sighs> yeah. Unbelievable. I mean, it, you look at it there. I mean, I drew against you, and, and, and I lost against you in the league. So... I, and that goes to show I needed to beat you. Yeah. But then the, the draw games just let me down bad. Yeah. Me. I'm going to take that, though. I'm chuffed to bits with that. Uh, yeah. I, I, I mean, I'm like that now. I'm, I'm thinking, do I sit back and see what you do? And if you stay, I'll go. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah. if I go, you bugger, you'll do it again, won't you? You'll yeah. follow me. <laughs> the only thing do. I can do is I'll go to Germany. Yeah, can't I can't. Follow me to Germany. There's no point in me going there. Yeah. But if you look at the statistics... It's completely dominated by PSG luck. Well, it's going to be the, the most goals, the highest average rating, and the most play of the matches, yeah. plus the one clean sheet. Yeah. I had all of it. You had the most yellow cards, though, so you got that uh, one. Don't worry. That's what I'd get my players to do, though, wouldn't it? Yeah. Uh, Mbappe got 25, Victor Osman got 22, Xavi Simmons got 17. I know, I've, got have a, I've got to have a quick shape for my mate, Frank Kessie. Uh, going through the things, he won midfielder of the year, he as did. well, didn't he? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> also, during the January, I inquired about Frank did, Kessie, yeah. which you were fuming with. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but they wanted way too much yeah, money did, for, yeah. for him. But, but he, got, he got better, didn't he? Even he though he got did. older, he got better. So. He did. Yeah, so. See, I took him to a good side at Chelsea there. All right, next season, Dad, if you do decide to stay, you've got £22 million. I've got, I got less. You've got a good team. Yeah, but you can improve it with 22 you can you, really? I mean... Oh, I've know. got 159, but I'm over the wage budget. So I won't have a budget like I did the last couple of seasons. I'll still have about 100 million, yeah. but it won't be as impressive as what the last three budgets that I've had of 250 odd million each. So, so how did our, our squad do then? There we go. So Kylian Mbappe got 38. Which got is good for because he, they were locking him in that position, wasn't they? Weird that was. Changing, yeah, I don't they? know why that yeah. was. Uh, Victor Osman got 26. We got 23 from Javi Simmons. Ansu Fati's also at the club. I don't know whether I mentioned that. Uh, Moani got 30. He's also wanted as well, which I might uh, look at doing because that gives me an extra £62 million. Pound. Then, well, I've got to win the French Cup. It's pointless me going. It really is pointless <laughs> me going. I mean, job-wise, 
Chelsea don't Chelsea's win. there. <laughs> <laughs> I can't go back to Chelsea, can I? I can go back and win the FA Cup. No. Or you could, yeah. Yeah. Um, there was a few little jobs that changed throughout the season, wasn't it? Yeah, but it there wasn't, was, yeah. It wasn't too many. And again, I think it was in the Premier League, there was a couple of managerial changes. The Spurs job. That Someone took seen. it over and they were losing their job, it was. Under yeah. threat again, halfway through, wasn't it? I mean, yeah, Lewis Enrique's been sacked. Obviously, they've won the league and then yeah, lost it. Then the Spurs job. Uh, Spurs job came available. That's when he left to Thiago Motta. Yeah. But Thiago Motta, he, he wasn't doing very, very well, was no. he? Uh, because of that. So, obviously, all of these happened at the start of the season. It was really from, I guess... Zinedine Zidane when we, where are we that was last season yeah that was last season so yeah I mean a lot of it we really need to go by dates I guess and have a look uh, Ipswich, Chelsea and Brentford were the most recent ones 2027 Leeds and Southampton so nobody that we would be looking at taking no. over um, unfortunately to, for us to, to make a decision Manchester City won the league with Newcastle finishing in second so they've done, they done the uh, they've done, they the, done the treble yeah they won the Europa, Europa League, league the, the FA, FA Cup, Cup. yeah uh, and Liverpool won the Champions League, yeah. beating Newcastle in the final. So the Premier League is still very much dominant across Europe. But across the other leagues, I think, is quite interesting. But we'll have a look at what your squad did. So you got 30 goals from Wahi. It was great signing. Yeah. Great signing. He's also wanted by He's Newcastle. <laughs> Can write, could you? One of the players that you were chasing was one of the Chelsea players, wasn't it? They wouldn't let you sign him, would they? they, were, they were Scalvini. Asking, yeah, they, and I was... They, Three times I tried going they were to Scalvini. Look, they were looking after my back as well. There, yeah. They? they wanted to sign replacement on deadline day. Couldn't do it. So the <laughs> cheeky so and so's as well. They left it until an hour left, and then where I was waiting for them to sign replacement, they offered they offered for Lucas Hernandez in my team. <laughs> I was like, no one of those deals are going to get done in time. Uh, but then I tried in the January, and they wanted even more money. So Tell you I what, like, no. I, I did shouldn't have to share the goals around, though, didn't I? Did, really? Yeah, four players above twenty. One yeah. one that's got oh, that's easy on loan. Uh, one that's 15 still yeah. Bunani Buonani wanted by Man City Teramoffi wanted by four clubs that one might be tempting yeah. because you could replace him quite nicely with £40 million mm. Buonani I think he's finally a natural in there Yeah, great decision to put him in there mm. yeah. to lock him in and make sure he plays shadow striker every single game because he couldn't play there at all they were putting somebody I mean, really like, terrible in there I don't like no, no one like locking him in do I yeah. but, but what I a season he's had yeah, it's good that. Uh, fantastic stuff. So, the rest of your team, I think, yeah, you, you, you're kind of laughing, if I'm honest. You are definitely head and shoulders above the rest of the league. I mean, you've finished yeah. 18 points clear of Marseille. Mm. Uh, so, that was really good. But let's have a look at the rest of the leagues, I guess, and see what else has been happening. Because there has been some... I mean, there's been some changes. I think, didn't Real Madrid win it the, la the season before? No, Barcelona won it, so... Real Madrid have not won it two years in a row now. So Ancelotti possibly making go. the move. Yeah, yeah, he might make a move soon. The league, oh, we already know we're in that. That's silly, Luke. Napoli won the Serie A Milan from AC comes, Milan. Milan comes second. So yeah. First and second. So Constant Sal that's, moving that, straight in there. That was new manager. manager wasn't it? Yeah. yeah, absolutely. So uh, that's not too bad. We can see manager movements there. Obviously, Pochettino left. Constant Sal come in to Serbia left. Jurgen Klopp come in to Inter Milan, finishing third place. Only three points off the top. Very that close very title close. race there. Yeah, that's very close. Yeah, absolutely. And finally, the Bundesliga was won by Bayern Munich again. Leipzig finishing second place though this time round. Still Jose Mourinho. Uh, Dortmund still have Terzic. Yeah, he won't leave the week. No. And Arnslot, obviously, who lost Spurs, is the manager of Bayern Munich, who ain't going to go anywhere if they're winning no. the league. So there's so much happened in this season. I'm, I'm exhausted <laughs> yeah, it was, it? just doing this season. <laughs> <laughs> it was so good though so I mean yeah I mean I hope we have a quieter season summer but with Glory Hunter you just no. never know dad it takes one one person to move doesn't it and we, well, what's going to be fun if both of us apply for the same job because yeah. if Real Madrid comes up I can see both of us going for it mm. Mm, yeah mm. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is though I wouldn't mind if I lost it because if you do go you can take I will take the PSG yeah. job then so yeah so I could I could do a big job coming up really yeah so whether I go for it or you go for it and then I slot in that's it yeah I mean I think in a way though I'd be stupid to move in this role you're not going to get the chance very often to be in in France to be PSG are you no that's, that's, that, that's you cost my... me big time yeah there. I've got you in the season cup. yeah 
Oh gosh, you'll never see them. Yeah, definitely, yeah. 100%. So I've got to stick around now for a second season, which doesn't look too bad on my CV. That's the only, like, upside to it is when you keep lose, leaving jobs, yeah. every interview you go to, they're like, oh, you don't spend a lot of time at mm. job role. So in a way, it is good for that, but you did cost me big time this season, which also means we've got some trophies to add to the cabinet. Let's have a look at those updated Glory Hunter trophy cabinets. Well, despite the expected league title win, it looks like Dad had the last laugh, knocking me out the Coupe de France and going on to win the whole thing. Meaning he can add another trophy to his Glory Hunter cabinet at the end of this fourth season. Meanwhile, even with a disappointing season in all things considered, I'm still adding the French league title to mine. But it's another season in France for the both of us now. Dad started the summer going for targets wanted by other clubs. But he has decided to stay at Nice for another season despite temptation away. And now he's just got to fight Manchester City off for his best players despite the offers coming in for over a hundred million pounds. And I know for a fact I would have taken it. But then I was too busy making 50 million pounds out of players from Saudi Arabia that I signed on free transfers the season before. Again, from Saudi Arabia. The fun started right away as me and dad face each other in the Trophy de Champions immediately, of course, and put on an end-to-end -end classic full of goals. Dad still recruited well, though, even if he did leave things till deadline day. Dad had a less eventful time. We stayed put this summer. Well, it's nothing, nothing big came up, really, did it? That no. sort of made us interested in moving, did it? So, no, we'll stay where we are. Obviously, it was the Chelsea job was available at the end of the season anyway. Luis Enrique was sacked. And Unai Emery took over, who was the Manchester United manager. There's a little bit of a merry-go-round there, but no big clubs. No, nothing really. So, we stayed put and Dad made some big signings and some sellings as well. Yeah. Uh, £44 million pound for Jalo, which was kind of a backup centre-back for you. Yeah. I mean, I really, I, was look I looked at my team and I thought I was weak in two places. One centre-back and the right-back, wasn't it? Yeah. And I possibly could strengthen one of my strikers if I had enough money left yeah. over that. So that was two definite positions I was going for and a third one maybe. So yeah. that's what I was looking at, getting enough money to do that. Uh, which you then brought in a couple of players from doing that. So you brought in Roger Banyez on a free transfer, centre-back. Oh, so lucky to get rid of this guy, I think. I've used him before as well, and I? So uh, yeah. for a freebie, I thought, well... <laughs> There's, that's that position done then, isn't it? Yeah, Mateus Cunha. Yeah, there's the there's the forward line. I, I thought well, he was a freebie as well, so I thought, well, yeah, I'll get him in as well. So that's yeah. the forward one. Because you also saw Terra Moffi right at the start yeah. of the summer, £38 million pound to Aston Villa. He was the weak link I had in, in, up the, of the front three that I had. So yeah. I thought, well, if I get rid of him, get a bit of money in, and, and that free became, rid of, became available straight away. So it was just a no-brainer for me. A bit of money in the, in the kitty, yeah. and I replaced him as well. So. I think we even mentioned at the end of last season that that was probably one that would tempt you uh, into selling. Yeah. Then we had a couple of, like, well, you got your right back in. Yeah. Ignace van der Bremt, who I think is a really good right back. I think that was a good choice, especially for just £43 million. Uh, so, yeah, that's that's quite a good one from you. And then, as we got towards the end of the season, you had a bit of money left over. You seen this guy yeah. available, but you couldn't quite get him no, for a could, while no. until eventually you sold Sofian Diop. Yeah. I mean, I wasn't using this guy, obviously, because he's a winger and I've got no wingers. So, yeah. it made sense to get rid of him to get this other guy in. So, I've got a replacement now in... Two, two of the positions, positions that I definitely do play. Yeah. And it's a good replacement as well. Absolutely. He's a star player, four yeah. and a half star, and he's only 21 as well. 46 no, million He pound. won't get into my starting lineup, but God, he's, he's sat there right just waiting if one of them gets injured. Yeah. Or needs a rest, absolutely. Yeah. So you're sticking with the same tactic as last season? Yeah, I'm going to go with that. I mean, I was quite close to, to um, taking you all the way. Yeah. Um, I beat. I won the cup, so why should I change it, really? I mean, my, my, thing, my thinking now is really, I might hang around and wait for you to leave. Yeah. And then take your team over. Yeah. If I get the chance. But I could still stop you from winning the league and have a go at you. I mean, yeah. Really, I've got to hope that you win the cup straight away and go. Yeah. That's that's what my thinking is. So hopefully. All right. There's your start at 11. Yeah. Pretty similar to the start, well, to the end of last season, how you would have thought it would with the additional players that you mentioned coming into the first team lineup. So I think you have strengthened it. Yeah. I've got three new players, well, four new players in and three of them straight in the team. Yeah. So I'm happy with that. Okay, let's have a look to see what I've been doing then. Now, I had a little bit of money to start off with. I didn't quite know what I wanted to do with it. I also then started selling players to Saudi Arabia that the club picked up on free transfers the season before. There's £52 million there, another £55 million there for two players. That PSG signed on a free transfer last season. Didn't really use them. Sold them on for £50 million each. 
Can't complain with that. Of course you do. There's a couple of other players that left. I love being the villain. <laughs> 12 million pound there for Skriniar. I knew I had a replacement coming in. And Carlos Soler went out for 17 million. Again, I had somebody in mind who I wanted to bring in. Uh, I didn't start the, the summer bringing anybody in. I wasn't rushing in for anything at all. I just patiently waited until July where I splashed £120 million on Giorgio Scalvini. There was a couple of players from Barcelona I was trying to go yeah. for. Jules Kunde and Araujo. Both of them were rejecting offers for £170 million. It was ridiculous. So... <laughs> I ended up going for Scalvini. It's a guy that I went for twice at the end of last season. Obviously, former player of Dad at Chelsea. I'm going to show him what a real manager is like. And then I also went for Kieran Tierney because I needed a backup left back and he's good. Plus, he had a release clause of £44 million. So that was happy days. And then finally, Guendouzi, another Arsenal former player from Lazio, 28. He's French, so he fits that quota as well. £48 million pound release clause. He's played in the French League before and done a very good job of it as well. So, yeah, I'm, I'm happy with bringing in Guendouzi as a, as a squad player, backup option for these two positions here. I think he's quality, really. Best 11 picks puts Ugati in that ball in the midfield. And you can understand why. He's oh, absolutely yeah. fantastic right now. I've had a couple of injuries at the start of the season. Victor Osman's picked up an injury and he's only just come back. I think he's only played one game. Uh, Joe Neves is out for a while as well. Another two to four weeks of a torn thigh muscle. So, uh, and Javi Simmons has only just picked up an injury, but he should be back ever so soon. However, we'll take a look at the schedule. We played each other in the trophy, the champions, with Dad, of course, being the cup winner, myself being the league winner. And that ended 4-2 to PSG. Yeah, good start for you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, El Yawahi got your two goals. We got Hakimi. And actually... It was quite a tight game for a while, to be yeah. fair, because it was 2 all for, for a while, 3-2, and then Mbappe scored on the 64th uh, to kind of kill the game off. I haven't dropped any other points. I've only conceded a couple of goals to Montpellier and Lons. It's been a good start, but I haven't really had too many challenging games. My next month is the challenging month. I've got yourself and Monaco in there, as well as, of course, Champions League games. Which I, I kind of like keep forgetting that I still need to yeah. go for the Champions League. That's right, yeah. Obviously, the French Cup, the Coupe de France is what I'm aiming for this season. But I keep forgetting I have yet to win the Champions League. And this is a I mean, very we, much a, a team with enough quality to do it. We always joke about PSG never winning the Champions League, don't we? Yeah. Um, but, I mean, you've got a squad that could do it. Easy. Maybe that's like subconsciously in my head yeah. thinking, <laughs> I'm at PSG, I can't win the Champions League. I'm completely unable yeah. to. I mean, you, that squad though, you... you you should be there or thereabouts, definitely. I yeah. Think. Yeah. Okay, let's have a look. I mean, Newcastle knocked me out last season, my old team. So, <laughs> God knows what's going to happen next. Leipzig, maybe. Let's have a look, Dad, at your schedule. You had a bit of a ropey start. Yeah, I'm not doing very well at all. My, the two draws to start off just knocked me. I'm losing too many points already to try and challenge you for the league. So Yeah. But, I, I, you know, I need to beat you twice now. So, yeah. then I'll, I'll put me right back in at the end. So, I'm buying that player right at the death. I sort of strengthen my squad up again. So, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm hoping now, but then I'll go and lose my last game. So, Absolutely right. Yeah. So you've got some Champions League fixtures. Didn't take a look at mine, to be fair. But these are yours: Atletico Madrid, Norgeland, Sociedad, Arsenal. You should go through, really. Difficult end, maybe. Yeah. But there, I think there's four games in yeah. there that you can easily win, which means you should go through to the, at least the playoffs. Yeah. My Champions League fixtures is looking like this. So I also have Arsenal. I also have Sociedad and Milan, Napoli, Besiktas. I've got a difficult start there. Actually, but you've got, got an easy finish though in January. Yeah, you? that's so that's basically it. That so that's you at big star if you are struck by then. And of course, and you got the Newcastle again. That's quite Newcastle, funny. Newcastle, <laughs> who Thomas Tuchel is still there, of course, after his last season. They only spent sixty-three million pounds, but they made a bad mistake signing Anthony, the fidget spinner. Who I don't really rate at all. Uh, and they sold my Ollie Watkins to Manchester United. <laughs> Some Ooh. weird signings, honestly. <laughs> Very bizarre, isn't it? So there we go. All right, then. Shall we see what happens this season? But before we do, I guess, we mentioned how obviously now we're coming back month by month. Do you have any intentions if a big job comes up leaving France? Or are you happy to stick this out? It would have to be a really big job. You know, yeah. Like Real Madrid or something like that. And they don't normally sack, player, sack managers mid-season, do they? No. Um, I would go to a, I'd go to an Italian side. If yeah. It was one of the top ones, mind you. So... All depends who comes up, really, isn't it? That's it. You know, the top top three in Italy, I would, I would consider. Yeah. Apart from that, no. I think I'd be silly to move, so I think I can yeah, definitely, yeah. put my hand up and say I won't be moving yeah. until at least uh, the job is done here in France. I mean, like I said, my, my, my thinking is I hope you win the cup 
and then you bugger off and I'll take over PSG. Well, yeah, but you might win the league. Yeah, I mean, if I do, that's even better. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you'd have some way of doing it because you're already a seven points behind me because yeah. I've won five out of five. But hey, you never know. All right, let's see what gets on during this season. Throughout this season, many jobs popped up, but none were too appealing. Although Dortmund did change their manager to Roger Smith so fast that we didn't even see it happen after Terzic was sacked. The club Dab would like to go to in Germany currently sat in 10th place. But focusing back on the pitch, his new signings were fitting in well and getting good results in the Champions League. January then arrived and Dan had money, but no targets within that price range that would improve his starting 11. Meanwhile, I was solely focused on winning the Coupe de France and moving on to another country. With my dad waiting to strike as soon as I go. Dad, I am champions for the second time in a row. Yeah, well, I did expect that the way, the way I'd started off. Um, you so did manage to climb back up, though. Yeah, look did, at that. Yeah. That was awful. Yeah, One point, you're down in a real 11. bad start tonight. Oh, I was just getting worse. Wow, it took you a long time to recover, yeah. really. Uh, but again, look how you finish. You finished yeah. eight points ahead of Lons there in third place. El Yawahi was your top scorer. Doesn't surprise me. I lost four in total. None to you, unfortunately. Yeah. You lost both to me. That's that. I mean, that's the difference between you winning it and me winning it. Really, if I beat you both those games, you know, yeah, I'm, I'm in with a chance then. Really, you're scoring a lot of goals. 102 goals there, look. I, I should do really with the, the, the team that I had there. Really, you can see I? them quite a lot. I mean, I, I did know that your team were a lot better than mine. Yeah. Um, and I, I needed things to work my way, which was like beating you twice, and then you to lose the other games that you did lose so but with me losing six games I mean especially the four games I drew I, you can't, I can't afford to do that yeah uh, so looking at the player statistics we both got a player in there in the top goals we've got Hakimi and Wahi also there in the average rating uh, and Hakimi is also there with the highest amount of assists my goalkeeper got the most clean sheets by three <laughs> I've got all the yellow cards you got all the yellow cards <laughs> collecting cards yeah. for fun uh, we're on Nice Cup competitions, Champions League. Did you stop me winning the cup? If anything, that will be a detrimental. Yeah, I don't really. To your want, time. I don't want to do it. Kind of want to let me cup. leave. Yeah. No, you did not. Oh, Tenth right. round by I mean, Bordeaux. I'm, I'm disappointed, but losing that against Bordeaux. But yeah, I'm just glad I didn't because that means that you might have won the cup now, and I yeah. need you to win that cup. So, uh, well, there's no real like strong teams no, in that league anymore no, I mean Lons is like the only one who finished in third and their key player I don't think yeah. it's good enough for either of our teams I mean it was, it was the two squads that we've got it's definitely going to be between me and you so oh 100% we've got I the think best it's, two teams it's there. definitely finished the way I thought it would do so well Fair let's have luck. a look then PSG did I manage to win it yes I'm off out of here 5-0 <laughs> against Toulouse well, it's done me the favour or I stay because I I'm really close to the Champions League. No, that's the that's the one thing I'm worried about it now. So <sighs> that's, diff that's hard I to needed, take. I need another good job for you to for come up for you to take that you still got a chance of winning the Champions League. Yeah, because I don't need you in in France anymore. I could do it because if I could take over PSG, I think I should definitely win the league next season. If you don't win the league, you're sacked. Yeah, Let's I know. put it that way. I think. And then I've still got a good chance of having a go at the Champions League. So. Yeah. Uh, you, you, you got nothing to stay here for. No, so. again, I lost to my former team Newcastle. <laughs> uh, Milan, I drew with three three, but I won six games there and scored quite a lot of goals. There were you finishing in fourteenth, exactly where we anticipated. Yeah, with the four games that we also anticipated, you yeah. winning and drew two as Sociedad, Atletico Madrid, lost to Milan and Arsenal. But you put up a good fight. Yeah, it was a very, it was always scoring goals, wasn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so you went into the knockout playoff round, and that's where you were eliminated by Marseille, which is disappointing. Do you know, I, really. I, I, I thought Marseille would have been a lot better because of the new manager that they signed. They just got the jumps back, yeah. didn't they? And I, I the thought they'd be a threat for us this season, but they weren't, were they? But they no. were obviously a threat for me in the Champions League. Yeah. Then in the round of 16, I knocked out AC Milan. Good uh, result. Quarter final. I defeated Chelsea. Ooh, that's a good result. Yeah, your former <laughs> club, but unfortunately lost to Arsenal in the semi-final, which not was here, really. the winners. Yeah, Arsenal Champions League finalists. Okay, so let's have a look at my goals. Then we've got 41 there from Kylian Mbappe. Arsenal nice. with 31. Uh, they're both wanted. I might sell them before you join. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Will you apply for it? 23 for El Yawahi, 19 for Cunha. Good signing for you there. And Mega even played quite a lot and scored as well, as well as the board. And Buonani, great, great season again from him. Yeah. Uh, your new signing, Uwe Drago. Drago. Why do you have to sign all these players? Nah. You can't pronounce them. No. Nope. Eight He's goals, well, 11 assists. Very good. Yeah. Very good indeed from him. So, I mean, you've got a cracking team there, really. Yeah. It's, 
It's one of those where it's like, in any other league, you're really pushing for the title, but it's just PSG's PSG, well, right? I am pushing for it. I just, just, I can't afford it to drop the, the start. Drop the round of points. Yeah, that yeah. start I had at the beginning of the season. Yeah. Doesn't be really. When you think of how close I was to the, that start that I had. Yeah. You can't afford to do that. No, not at all. It was a bad start, but then, look how many greens come after that. It was yeah. only Champions League games, Coupe de France, and when you played me. O yeah. Outside of that, it was just a silly draw. Yeah. Or two every now and then. Other than that, great results from you. Okay, but if you did decide to stay, your budget would be 28 million. However, if you did decide to go to PSG and try to go there, because I think, I think I should leave. <laughs> I don't think I should stay at the Champions League. I think it, it doesn't warrant me staying. You got 79 million, but oh my God, the wage budget is awful. I've bankrupt the club. You, you, you'll be fine though, because the... The, the, the money that they already had put into the club is, is far away Mate, I, I, best could, in the I think I think I could walk into that team well not walk in I, if I got the job for that team I think I could just leave it as it is and it's still winning league. probably yeah uh, but where would I go I don't know because I could start a ma manager merry-go-round especially if you didn't get the job because actually you taking the job doesn't really help me because no big manager is going to go to Nice no but is there any other jobs <sighs> Manchester United, who finished in 12th. And I do need to go back, remember, for the yeah, FA Cup. Yeah. Uh, we've got Bayern Munich, who finished in third. So that's Bayern Leverkusen. I'm, that's what I'm worried about now. But do you go for Bayern Munich? Yeah. Because you still got to do Germany. I haven't done Germany at all, have I? I mean, if I took over, if I took over Bayern Munich, at least I'll have a good chance at the league. Yeah. The and the Champions League. Cologne won the Bundesliga. Hey. You're having a laugh. <laughs> Only lost two games. That's unbelievable. Lost to Frankfurt and Augsburg. 1-0. Well, well done then. And Leipzig coming second as well. That's You're all team. Yeah, my old team, which is still Jose. It is still Jose Mourinho. So Cologne will... Marco Rose, that's why. Yeah. Blok's genius. Uh, former Germany, Leipzig and Dortmund manager. Uh, the Dortmund manager has changed as well. Now, Dad mentioned, didn't he, that... Germany, go into Germany. Borussia Dortmund would be your team. Yeah. However, didn't fancy it throughout the season. No, I, I, I really, I, I'm banking on you leaving. Yeah. And I thought it'd be too much of a chance to take. If I'm in, if I'm in France and the job comes up for PSG, I think you've got to take it. Yes. So yeah. I'm, I'm banking on you leaving and me taking the PSG. Get France out of the way. Yeah. You, you've done Germany. I've done England. So I, I think I've got to stay there to, to, to get it done. Okay then. Well. Let us know your thoughts. What will happen? Manchester United, they finish in 12th. They did win the Europa League as well. That they do have the a good team. League, yeah. So I've got Champions League if I do decide to go to Manchester United. They still got the likes of Marcus Rashford. They don't have Bruno Fernandes, remember, because I sold him. I yeah. bought, him, <laughs> bought him for Newcastle. Uh, they've got an okay team. I don't think it's maybe worth going back there to do the FA Cup with Manchester United. I think I maybe would be taking a risk doing that. I think maybe I need to quit and just wait patiently and well, wait for things to stir if someone, up. If someone takes the PSG job, you know, if I apply for it and don't get it and someone else takes it, it then starts something if it's a big manager. Yeah. I mean, there's no guarantee they'll take me on. Yeah. I mean, I, I think if I lose the job, if I don't get the job, then I've, I've got to think about moving. Yeah. Because I don't think I'm going to beat PSG. Yeah, and then just so hopefully later down the line, at PSG come up again. Oh, all so, the it's all these, <laughs> all the different scenarios, all the different butterfly yeah. effects that can happen, right? Well, here we go. We've got a trophy to add to the trophy cabinet of Glory Hunter, and it's going in my cabinet. So let's have a look. That's right, Dad did delay my success by a season, but I eventually got hold of the Coupe de France. Dad still needs the league title though in France to add to his glory hunter cabinet. So the big question is, does he leave his niece side to obtain it? With France completed, it's time to resign as PSG manager, which was exactly what my dad wanted to hear because he immediately applied for my job as soon as I had left. And I was approached straight away by Bayern Munich, which I obviously declined. However, the leading candidate for the PSG job was Carlo Ancelotti, who is the current Real Madrid manager, which panicked dad a little bit. So he applied for the Bayern Munich job too. However, he was too late to the party and the interview process had ended, which of course worried my dad even more. Meanwhile, the Manchester United job was vacant again and they approached me and asked me to do an interview. A very tempting offer, as you can imagine, considering still I need the FA 
break up, but I declined. Finally, a response from PSG who invited Dad for an interview, though. And it turned out Mikel Arteta took the Bayern Munich job, but he had been without a club for the last two years since Arsenal sacked him. And whatever Dad said in his interview seemed to work as PSG approached him with an offer to become their first team manager. And of course, he immediately accepted. I was still without a club meanwhile as Kira McKenna took Dad's old job at Nice. However, I was using my experience to wait as more jobs become available after the Euro, such as Real Sociedad. But I still felt I needed to wait for a better role to pop up. While Dad was about to play his first game of the season against Nice. And it didn't go exactly how he wanted it to. But breaking news, I have found a new job. Dad, congratulations. You yeah. are the manager of PSG. It all paid out. You had to move, didn't you? So I'm glad you're gone. It gives me a chance to get in France out of the way now. Yeah, absolutely. So, You've only got one thing to do I mean, win the league. I, 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 yeah, I got, well, I can go for the Champions League as well. And I've got, I mean, you've made a brilliant squad there. So I, can I improve it? I don't know. I just got up that I've won the league as well. Yeah. Really. Just that up. one task. Yeah. Uh, okay, so. Very interesting turn of events happened this summer. You also applied for the Bayern Munich job, but came in a little yeah. bit too late. Well, I was a bit worried if I didn't get this job, because obviously just just by me applying for it, don't mean I'm going to get it. No. Nope. And there was a couple of favourites for it as well, wasn't there? So yeah. So I thought, oh, I'm going to just apply for the Bayern Munich job as well. Um, so that's what I've done, but I didn't get that job. Number, did I? No. <laughs> so quite lucky that you did get the PSG yeah. one. Okay, but that meant that I was off free... And I could go somewhere, <laughs> and I found a club. And I've even bought one of Dad's players, one of my former players. So, let's have a look. I am now the manager of Napoli. Yep. Yes. Congratulations, you're out of my skin. Get out yep. of <laughs> I ain't got to worry about you now. Off to Italy. <laughs> now, there was loads of movement again. Yeah, there was, yeah. Uh, there was only two managerial jobs that I was really interested in that came up. Real Sociedad was one of them, mm -hmm. and I did apply for that and got an interview. Yeah. But the Napoli one came up at the same time, and I took that role before Sociedad ever come back to me. So yeah. I could have gone to Sociedad, and, and at the same time as well, we were looking at it, and if I never had the Napoli one, I would have gone just for a simple reason. The Sociedad team is good they didn't have no money napoli had 50 million pounds they just sold a player but marco rose took yeah. the sociedad job after of course leading cologne to the bundesliga title yeah so sociedad has a really good side right now they've got Borenskia on the the wing they've got brace mendez still they've got oyatabao uh mikhail moreno However, they are slightly older yeah. than what I would be trying to go for if I could obviously pick and choose. So Napoli was by number one, but they still have a good team. And they finished in third last season in the, the La Liga. So they were the third best team outside of the two big ones in El Clasico. You could have took that on and maybe won a cup. That's yeah. all I was thinking when I was going for it. And you're there just in case one of the big two do have a bad season. And you know you can and you be, can be the, the job, cause of it. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, but now instead, I went to Napoli, and I think that was a good decision. Napoli's manager previously uh, was Kurt Consensal, and he went to Leipzig. And that is because Jose Mourinho went to Portugal. Again, it's all the merry-go-round that yeah. was happening. Um, the butterfly effect, as we like to say. So Consensal actually won a Serie A not too long ago which was the 2027 season so two seasons ago he won with this napoli side they don't have kravitz scalia anymore as i said i had 50 million pound and i brought in one player two players actually one player from dad's team yeah. gonzalo ramos and it's a first for any series yeah. whatsoever yeah we've had players where we have signed them after they've left the club of each other so we've had the same player in the in a versus rebuild or a series but this is the first time ever we have physically bought a player off each other well, it was quite funny really because he was the one player that i sort of picked out that i would, could i could possibly sell to make, generate some more money for me wasn't it? yeah and there was offers coming in all the time for a minute and that just wasn't enough and then of course you said of course i need a striker and i said well you come up with a good price and we'll, we'll and we were sat here talking about a good price feature before yeah. we went on the computer to do it he absolutely <laughs> ripped me off 45.5 million pounds you said 47 but yeah, i got you yeah. down to 45 yeah uh but it's paid off because he's got four and four so far more than what he did last season under me <laughs> <laughs> 
more in the last two seasons what he did under me, to be fair. So, yeah, so far it's paid off. Gonzalo Ramos, I think, is a quality striker. And for this Napoli side, I really needed that type of quality. Let's beat the offside trap. I've got Raspadori here still. My, my side is still, still good. Uh, I've also signed Joachim Anderson from Fiorentina, who got relegated. Another job that came up, and I decided it was nowhere near good enough for me to take. Uh, they got relegated and came back up. Uh, Anderson was at that club, age 32. So... I think it's a good, good sign as a backup centre back. I'm, you know, I'm hopefully I'm not here for too long. But I did sell Diacabe uh, to Real Madrid for 24 million pound. Kravitz Galia left before I joined, which is the reason why they had the 15 million pound. But I'm actually not too bothered by it. No. And there's a good reason. They've got a very good squad, to be fair. So tactically, let's start off with myself. I've gone for a four triple two with a uh, a long. DM, and that's because we've got Angisa, who is absolutely incredible. And if you look at my best 11, Antonio Nusa is the reason why I was okay with losing Kravitz Galia. He's really good. Yeah. Plays on both sides. He's fantastic. On the other side, you might recognize this man too. Rooney Baji's there, which is quite good. Raspadori up front with Ramos. Very good indeed. Lukas Sucic. This, this team is basically built by somebody like Spondikits. Kids. Because <laughs> uh, that's what I'm seeing right here. Of course, Fofana is a player that yeah. you sold to Napoli. Yeah, did you? Not too long ago when you were at Chelsea. And we've also got Valentin Barco sat on the bench. Who, remember, has just signed uh, for a new club in real life. And everybody's going on about it. Brighton. Yeah. So, there we go. Some interesting stuff happened for me. Uh, and it's been a very good start. But I won't spoil it too much. You can see some of the other players that I've got in my team. I've got a big squad. Nicholas Jackson's here as well. So, there's another player that both me and Dad have used. But he's just not quite there. That is, he's not very good at all. Dad, you went to PSG. Yeah. You didn't have a lot of money. No. However, you did make some signings. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, you sold eventually Marquinhos for £9 million. Uh, Ramos... Obviously, for 45. Did you sell anybody else? I can't remember if you did or not. I don't think you did. No. Uh, but you signed one player, Mateus Cunha. And there's a reason for it. Two reasons, really. One, I had to replace Ramos. Yeah. And I think he's better. But two, I wanted to make sure they were weaker this time. <laughs> <laughs> Weak in his old team, niece. Because, I mean, you have played against them twice already. Yeah. So. <laughs> I'm not giving too much away. No. £89 million was a lot of money. But again, if he's going to go into your, your lineup and weaken the side, then arguably that's worth the money. Yeah. Tactically, again, very attacking, but you have to be bold with this. Well, when I put in the best 11, it, all those players that you'd already bought were already in there, weren't they? So yeah. I just, just sort of like, just moved it around a little bit, but kept them all in. So it's still a very attacking side, but very good side. And all the best players was in in their right positions really yeah for sure I think mine was slightly different I had a left midfielder yeah. here and a centre midfielder but it's quite quite different in terms of mentality and a couple of the instructions are oh, different. and then you can see that that striker I've just bought is probably not going to go into my first team but no. what a reserve to have in there and I've oh, got, yeah, sure. got Fatty as well haven't I yeah and Su Fatty who yeah. obviously comes off on the bench um, as, a, as an unbelievable it's advanced forward really so yeah. you've got two really good because I mean he's only he's, he's actually started four games on Su Fatty and yeah. he's got you three goals and an assist so as backups go that's not bad at no, all is it so very good indeed great lineup very interesting start though because <laughs> it won a great start was it no you I beat actually, them in the trophy the champions when i got that result i thought that's brilliant at least i know i've got a good side there and a good tactic and yeah. i thought right first league game i should beat them again drew and one on I drew one on I thought, oh no <laughs> and i was at home as well what the hell's going on here yeah uh, a draw away to marseille as well i think marseille is going to be the team that's going to be chasing me as well so I, I i sort of took that one on the chin and sort of thought all right then yeah you know they're, they're going to be one of my competitors so one of your them. old favorites from Notts county who yeah. done you as well in the 91st yeah. minute Sod. <laughs> <laughs> but then but you went that, on and you stuffed leon four yeah nil. That, so I was, i'm quite happy now yeah and, and, I, six and, I got, against and I got that another striker in off them so it makes them a little bit weaker so yeah absolutely so your champions league fixtures because remember you're still going for I've, the champions league yeah, as I've, am i i've got a big chance for this now so yeah for sure that's what that's the one downside i think with my move although i need to go to a new league obviously to open up chances of completing trophies in glory hunter i've gone to a weaker side yeah. champions league wise yeah they were they weren't in europa league or anything like that so it would have been a genius move if they're in europa oh, yeah. league i mean we have got to definitely be in one of the top six or seven sides to try and win that Champions yeah league in me so absolutely and I, and I think i definitely am with the squad that i've got so yeah i'm going to be very disappointed if i don't get at least at semi-finals yeah i think this the 
I generally think Glory Hunter doesn't really kick off in terms of one of us is going to be really chasing until one of us wins the Champions League yeah. or Europa League. If you, one of us wins Europa League, I oh. think it could be curtains for the other one. Yeah. Because that's the hardest, the hardest one, one to get, one to get into, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, definitely, yeah. So, I mean, right now, obviously, I'm ahead in terms of trophies, but I don't feel like I have a big advantage. No. Because you're more cha- you're more likely to win the Champions League right now. I've got a bit of a build, I think, yeah. because I, I think, think, I think the best aren't... thing for me to happen was when I won in England, both of them. Yeah, the league and in the one go, Cup, bang, yeah. done. Yeah, so I, I, I mean, you're not in Germany, but I think there's a... F- there's about three or four teams in Germany you could do that with. Yeah. Where in England you've got to be you've got to be one of the top three or four. Yeah. You know, so it's going to be. And I still got to go back here. Yeah. To win both as well. And yeah, that's right. You got to go back. Ain't yeah. You? Yeah, I've got to go back to that one. Uh, so that's your Champions League fixtures. Again, you should definitely go through. Uh, let's have a look at my fixtures so far. Look, I am actually top of Serie A and I haven't dropped any points and I've scored a lot of goals too, but I haven't played anybody good yet. No. And that's the the only problem. 4-0-4-1-3-1-4-1. However, my first couple of hard games are all in the next month. I would say, look at your, all the four or well, five games there. Look, they're all hard, yeah. really, really, I would say. So it's annoying because I have, I, I'm, I don't know whether this this tactic <laughs> works or not yet. Uh, I've got all of the hard fixtures about to come. Lazio and Inter Milan and Juve just in the league alone. And then I've got some difficult ones in the Champions League. Speaking of which, my Champions League fixtures, Rangers, Man City, Atletico Madrid, Basel, Chelsea, Liverpool, a lot of English clubs in yeah. there, Feyenoord and FCSB. I should go through. I think I'll probably struggle to get in the top eight, but I'd like to think I can get in the playoff. And to be honest, it's not really a target for me right now. No. My target is to get as close as I possibly can to the Serie A title and as close as I possibly can to the Coppa Italia and mark one of them off. And if I can leave Napoli and Italy within a couple of seasons, I think I've done extremely well yeah, definitely, because yeah. I don't think there's a club in Italy because of the money situation mm. that I could potentially build a Champions League winning side. I think it's down to... <laughs> well, I'm hoping I'm only going to be at Paris for one season and I'm gone again. <laughs> yeah. But I think, I generally think right now, my only chances of winning a Europa League or a Champions League is if I go back to England when I go for the FA Cup. Yeah. I think I might be the only way. And we are, I did had a chance to do that with Manchester United. I got mm. off the job interview. Yeah, you did, yeah. But didn't really fancy it. Okay, then. Very eventful summer. Are we going to have an eventful season? Well, there's only one way to find out. Maybe there'll be a couple of jobs that come up. But I very much doubt either of us are going to be taking it right now. But possibly you might have some money in the January. So we'll have yep. to find out. Yep. Let's see what happens. So surprise, I am now in Italy and things are off to a great start at Napoli. And the decision to sign Ramos from my father might have been a stroke of genius. Because we are up there challenging with both strikers in the top three scorers of the season. And in the January, I was checking the end of contract options for next season and PSG's Cola Moani was there. So I thought I'd give it a go. However, an example of the money difference in Italy become very apparent. Speaking of PSG, Dad was quietly going about his business in charge in an attempt to complete France ASAP. Well, 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 Dad, you've got it done. Hey. Unbeaten as well. Unbeaten. Fair enough. Well done. How many uh, points clear? 22 points? 22 points clear. Unbeaten as well. It also looks like you defeated your previous team, Nice, <laughs> in the Coupe de France final. You yeah, did. Yeah. Obviously, you already won it with them two years previously, yep. but you got the job done. 3-1 in the final there as well. So you completely dominated France. Who'd have thought it? <laughs> what a great well, achievement. Let's, let's, put it, let's put it this way. I would have been very disappointed if I hadn't won the league there. Yeah, so absolutely. You've done me a favour by building such a good squad. Thank you very much. I'll take that. Let oh, take yeah. <laughs> so you completely dominated in the player statistics as well, outside of clean sheets, funny enough, although your old goalkeeper <laughs> yeah. was in there. Uh, and even your tactic came back and you started getting yellow cards again, which is, yeah. of course, what you love doing. So very good, obviously. There was another trophy that you were involved yeah. in. Did you manage to win that one? No. Quarterfinal by Bayern Munich. The team oh. that turned you down. Yeah, I was disappointed with this because when I played them in the first leg, I beat them. 5-2. And they stuffed me 5-1. Lost 5-1. Yeah. That's also the same leg that I was eliminated as well, as you can see there. Lost 4-0 in the away leg. I was 2-1 up as well. Looking at the teams that remained in it, I... I Apart from Man City, really, I would have been favourite. I would have been, well, 
disappointed if I didn't get to the final then. Yeah. I think. Final is still to be played between Bayern yeah. Munich and Manchester City. Okay. Fair enough. That's very good from you. It looks like you completely dominate. You've got Mbappe on 52 goals out of 52. Awesome number 35. A lot of goals scored. But it's time to wave goodbye, I think, I guess, for, well, uh, I, for I, that. Unless you want to go not, for another season. I'm not going to stay there just to try and win the Champions League. I'd rather try and go somewhere else and get into another country now and try and yeah. win something else. In one season and he's out. Yeah. He's gone. Even I lasted longer there. <laughs> okay. We, we always said France was going to be... You either had to get PSG or you had to build a really good squad with yeah. the other teams. And PSG have a bad season. Yeah. Well, I built I built a good squad with Nice, didn't I? Yeah. But PSG didn't have a bad season, did they? No. Nope. And you built you built such a good team with them. But I was silly not to take it over. Yeah. Get in there. Get, Anybody get else job done, done the same? Yeah, get in there, get job done and get out again. All right. Okay. Let's have a look then. How did I get on? Because, of course, my first season... In Italy and second place. Five points. Five points behind Inter Milan, who are the champions. I lost Unlucky. eight games. Yeah, that's what cost you. Yeah, both against Inter Milan. That's what cost you, isn't it? Yep. Two games against them is six points. <sighs> Never mind. Uh, Gonzalo Ramos got 21 goals. The time Martinez from Inter Milan got a goal more. But Scamacca, who genuinely serious right now, I looked at signing before I went for Gonzalo Ramos. Got 27 at Atalanta, who finished on the exact same points as me. Uh, I had a much higher goal difference, though, than the other teams around me. So that's one thing going for me, I guess. But remember, in Italy, if you land on the same points, it doesn't matter. You've got to play a playoff. Yeah. Which is quite interesting. Yeah. Uh, Raspadori was also up there for the highest average rating. And we had Barco and Bargi up there for the highest assists. Nice one. And Murray got... 14 clean sheets, but it was nowhere near Mike Magnan's 20 in fifth place. You bet he AC did, Milan. Uh, he was disappointed, wasn't he? Yeah. <laughs> uh, they go into the Europa League, funny enough. All right. So, what about the Coppa Italia? Did I get my hands on that in the first season? No. Semi final by Milan. AC Milan. Yeah. Oh, I was beating them in the first leg as well. They stuffed me 5-0 in the oh, second so you leg. You got done the same as me, really. Yeah. After winning the first leg. And Inter done the domestic double. Yeah. Oh, that's a hard one to take. Being so close to the final like that, obviously caught a final by Chelsea. Let's have a look at the Champions League group stage. Then you dominated it, losing one to Inter Milan. Yeah. Uh, I finished in 11th place. I lost two, final to Man City and drew two. Oh, that's a bad draw, Luke. Yeah. Uh, but still, I would have gone through roughly about the same place anyway. Then into the knockout playoff round, I eliminated Lons, French team. You obviously had already qualified through that part. Uh, I knocked out Real Madrid next. What a result that is. Wow. And you knocked out Atalanta before we you know, both eliminated You think them being knocked out that early, that's like um, second, man second the manager's job, really, isn't it? Well, yeah. They're not usually happy about being knocked out that early, are they? Not at all. Still Carlo, though. Yeah. Because they are winning the league. They yeah, won the league by a point really, this season. Ooh. That's really it's close. Uh, Real Sociedad. Any shocks there then that we can be looking at? Finishing in fifth place. That's Villa the one. Real. That's yeah, the Villa Real down. down in ninth. Yeah, there's a Real couple. Real that down there as well. Because of course now you've got to start looking for these jobs. Yeah. you got to start seeing what's going on. Because right now, job security, there's two jobs available. One of them is in Spain, Real Batiste. I think they're a bit too far down. Yeah. they got the uh, current new Spurs sat in the back there though. Dragosan. Uh, yeah, I think they may be a little bit too far down for you to, to rescue them right now. They don't have a lot of money. There's a few insecure clubs. Marco Rose at Real Sociedad and Villarreal is also there. There's some Spanish options. There's nothing jumps out though at the moment, is there? No. But of course, when you leave your post... That's the thing, isn't it? I could do the same as you, just resign and just sit back and wait. Yeah. And see what pops up. So that might be the best thing to go for. Or do I stay and go for the Champions League? Well, that's it. You've got a team worthy enough to beat the, to win the Champions League. What I did League. notice, though, was a lot of my players are getting quite old. Yeah. And they're coming to the end of their contracts and they're all agreeing to leave. Yeah. So I don't know whether PSG would be such a good or strong side as they will this season as they will next season. Totally. And your budget is dreadful. Yeah. Minus 1.1 million. I mean, just go on, just go so on to my squad no then and see what, what players were coming to the end of their contracts. I mean, you already have Muani, who said he was leaving, Lucas Hernandez, who's leaving, Fabian's leaving, yeah. and Laporte. So that's four players. Age-wise, if you look at the team, majority of the team, in, all the way down to maybe Ugate. Yeah, that's is, a lot of players, uh, isn't it? Close to 30. So yeah, it's a lot, lot of, of players. Starting team. Yeah, so... I'd... It's probably the right time to go. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. Probably the right time to leave right now. And like you said, we could we could start something by 
by me resigning another manager coming in hopefully to start a merry-go-round again yeah absolutely my squad then let's have a look goals wise gonzalo ramos was my top scorer so that was a good buy from me he's also wanted now by i'm pleased Milan. with that because it didn't affect me but it, it sort of helped you out really yeah. so i'm pleased with that one you're not supposed to be helping me out yeah but it, did, it helped me out though in the long run didn't it because i needed anyway to get rid of him. you yeah. couldn't get rid of him no uh 22 goals from raspadoria 14 assists that was good but where do i improve there's a couple of positions that i think i could get a little better in but i would need the money and that's the trouble and i have just 12 million pound right now your wage budget's good though yeah unfortunately they had already agreed to get nicholas jackson on a permanent i wouldn't have done that myself because he got six goals and three assists i, I didn't like him when he was at chelsea did nah, i remember him when he was at chelsea don't like his uh off the ball and composure it's just nah. absolutely woeful there we go. But I, I think I'm I'm happy with in my in my position right now. Although I did say that when I was at Newcastle, and look what happened then. <laughs> the perfect job opportunity <laughs> pops up, and I'll tell you, if the perfect job opportunity did pop up at one of the two big clubs in Spain. I think even, I would have to go for the it. The other thing we didn't mention really was we did come back in January as well to check on everything as well, and everything was going. There was just no jobs available. Was there, there was no, nothing. Was was nothing that was sort of tempting for one of us to leave halfway yeah. through a season. I mean, I was never going to leave anyway. I mean, I was, what was I? You are like 15 points 15 clear, points weren't you, by clear January? Then. Yeah, so I didn't want to move anyway, but there was nothing available then, was it? No. So I think, it's gonna, go. I think it's going to have to be you. Just going to have to wait to see what we do. Yeah, but we do have one trophy to add to a trophy cabinet. So let's take a look at those Glory Hunter cabinets, shall we? Yes, although a good first season in Italy happened, nothing to add to the trophy cabinet this season. However, it's Dad's time to shine as he finally completes France and wins the league title with PSG. But still, six seasons complete and neither of us have won a European trophy yet, or even come close. And while I'm occupied in Italy with Napoli, Dad resigning from PSG could once again cause a huge merry-go-round that he could could favor from. Dad's resignation from PSG wasn't the only big job coming up because Jurgen Klopp's move to Newcastle meant the Italian champions and Coppa Italia winners into Milan were without a manager. So of course a perfect role for Dad to apply for immediately. However Dad wasn't the only interested party and I couldn't help but apply for it too. They have a much better side than my Napoli team right now. And of course, it would also be a roadblock for my dad. The Inter Milan board contacted me first and invited me in for an interview as well. Dad was getting quite worried because the unemployed Tuchel took the PSG job, so there was no free slot that opened up. But not too long later, Inter Milan also invited him to Milan for an interview. And would you believe it? They actually approached dad to become their manager, while telling me I had been unsuccessful, which prompted a lot of messages from my dad. So he got the contract signed and a lot more on than what he was on at PSG as well and set out on his first day at his new job probably with a very smug look on his face with his first task being replacing the right back who was leaving from his current team and bringing along his old assistant manager to help him on his new venture to conquer Italy but then a new twist to the tale that left us with mixed reactions that's right the Real Madrid boss of eight years Carlo Ancelotti finally retired from management, leaving the role at one of the biggest clubs in the world free for me to apply for, which the fans in Madrid were very pleased with and seeing me as the leading candidate. And a couple of weeks later, I was invited to Madrid for an interview. Now who's laughing, father? But my dad has one last trick up his sleeve to sign Real Madrid striker Endrick before the new manager, hopefully me, was announced, as well as signing Frank Kessie again finally real madrid approached me but was it in time to cancel the endrick transfer from dad or not dad congratulations you're the manager of inter milan they wanted me they didn't want you they didn't want me no <laughs> but i'm pleased oh well, yeah you just scarp it because i'm in the country so the butterfly effect happened again yeah you got the inter milan job despite me applying for it as well i think they just didn't want to pay the uh the compensation fee to get me out of Napoli. That's yeah, probably yeah, what it was. You were a free agent. They went for the better manager. You were a free agent. So I'll like, we'll, we'll just take I you just, I just went whole season unbeaten, mate. Yeah. <clears throat> so you got the Inter Milan job. And right after that, oh, I tell, I tell, you, Carlo I tell you, you are Ancelotti, spawny as hell you are. Carlo Ancelotti announced his retirement. So it was obvious. I had to apply and I got the job. Of course you did. <laughs> I'm now the manager of Real Madrid. 
<laughs> so I'll obviously I need to go back to Italy at some point because yeah. I haven't, I haven't That's finished. That's the problem. I'm open I haven't to... done anything there. I mean, so. the ideal thing would be to do now is for me to finish off Italy, and then when you move off, drop in your spot. You're just going to keep in my shadow. <laughs> yeah. Just keep going the, the places. Can you I build work. up a good team for me so I can just come oh, along in, yeah. in the league again? Uh, so let's have a look at the team I've got and the players that I've sold and bought. Okay, so I did spend quite a lot of money, but I also sold £201 million. Now, Dad tried to sign my striker, Endrick, before I got there. I got the job just as the deal was going through. And I weighed up my options and I thought, let him have him. Let him have him. I could have uh, cancelled it there and then. I after, was generous. After you said, oh, I'm going to keep him, didn't you? And I was going, you sod. You need like that, didn't you? I'm going to cancel it. I could have cancelled the deal, but I didn't. I decided to be fr to be fair. They had offered, they accepted the deal. I would never have accepted 100 Mine, million. To be honest, if you remember rightly, I mucked myself up, didn't I? Because I'd already put in for him before you'd got the job. Yeah. The deal was going through, but I bought another player that took the funds away. <laughs> yeah. And now I had to delay you his delay it twice. And that's what allowed <laughs> you to be in in time to cancel it. Yeah. And I was gutted when I thought, oh, no, you're not. But you do have some player, <clears throat> Endrick. Yeah. He's 23 years of age. He's an unbelievable talent. So to get him at Real Madrid, uh, to get him from Real Madrid is is a big acquisition at Inter Milan. Really, he's got three and three for you already. 17 goals he got last season, but they were only playing him in kind of bit parts. 26 yeah. games that they had played him. But I weighed up my options and I thought, mm, I, I, I'm going to buy other players, not better. I don't think I found better players. That's the only downside. I thought I'll go in there yeah, you did, and yeah. I'll just buy better players. Yeah. I actually had an idea of getting Osterman from PSG but the money was way too much I thought no I need to strengthen other positions uh, I also sold their other striker Karim Adeyemi to Manchester uh, Manchester City now although he has cracking pace I don't think the rest of his attributes uh, are that great and he didn't do very well last season either so I was happy to get 77 million in total for him Zinchenko was still there 28 million pound for a 32 year old is not bad Borges also went uh, back to Portugal and I brought in some very good talent for cheap cost I think including Dressel who is 21 years of age from Austria 21 million that's not bad at all it's a bargain isn't it yeah he is absolutely cracking gets into opposition area <laughs> very now. good player yeah he's already over 100 million <laughs> so that was a good acquisition to start off with I also bought Nico Schlotterbeck their, their, their main weaknesses was defence they had very poor defenders I think their midfield is the best midfield we've ever seen. Oh, yeah. They still have Chiumeni, still have Eduardo Camavinga, and of course, Jude Bellingham, and like the backups like Valverde, <laughs> who's be world class anywhere else. Their defence needed some work, so I brought in Schlotterbeck, who, for the money of £73 million release clause, was a steal. There was another talent that I could not get just simply because he had just signed a new deal in, well, he had signed for them in the January. And it's this man from Chelsea. He is phenomenal. Yeah. I've never seen a centre-back like it for just 20 years of age. But he wouldn't move. And that was really frustrating me. So anyway, I went elsewhere and I got myself Schlotterbeck instead. Uh, I saw Nuno Mendes at left-back because I sold Zinchenko. That was my most expensive one. And I, did, I say overpay. They're not going to accept anything less. It's, it's PSG. Yeah. So not overpay. But I've got one of the best left-backs in the world now. So yeah, it's, it's a good good buy, I think. Your old boy, Buonani. Yeah. 67 million pounds. I trained this guy to be what he is. He is, yeah, yeah, he did indeed. Uh, he's now 24 years of age and he is still phenomenal. He's yeah. got me three goals already in four games. Peter Ratkoff from Leipzig. This was my replacement striker. I know he's not amazing. Endrick is certainly a better player. So in, in hindsight, maybe keeping Endrick would have been uh, a better play for me. But we can work with him, definitely. He's got good pace, likes to beat the offside trap. He's strong, he's six foot four. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm happy. And then finally, Jared Brandt. I never thought I'd buy an Everton player. <laughs> Jared Brandt, wait. Uh, he's, he's actually class on here, to be fair. Ignore the downward arrows. He's actually really good. He's good with both feet. Six foot five, great jumping reach. Yeah, 61 million pound again release clause. So for the price of both of those defenders combined yeah. was like the price that I would have to pay if I wasn't an elite defender, wouldn't it? Yeah, it was yeah. like there were people were asking 160 million and then rejecting it. Yeah, and that's I was right. like, what? <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't believe it. So I ended up going for two cheaper options at centre-back instead. 
Now, tactically, I'm set up like this. And it's a little bit weird, uh, but it is kind of a 4-3-3. We've got the centre midfield on attack, which is going to be Jude Bellingham. And he is fantastic. And he's already my top scorer so far with five goals in four games. Buonani, I want to nail in that position alongside Branthway. We've got winger on attack here, which is going to be Vinicius Jr. And if I did best 11 pick without that, you can see the two options where I would um, put, obviously, Shalaba. I don't want Shalaba playing at centre-back. I think the Branthway is way better. And Buonani, I think, is just slightly better than Dressel in what I want him to be. I want him to be the shadow striker and look how good he was for you yeah uh, i mean 17 pace off the ball and he's great at finishing i think it was here you had him and you uh or it actually might have been these two here and you were class with him so that's what i want him for the rest of their lineups very good indeed i didn't need to change too much i think he was Courtois still there I think too done most of his danger in, in them assisting as well i think his assist yeah. was absolutely amazing as well wasn't it? yeah so yeah I'm, I'm, I'm very much happy with with this side however I did lose the first game to Osasuna 1-0. <laughs> <laughs> you was all over the place with that one, wouldn't you? <laughs> I, don't know, I have changed the tactic since because it was a very... Uh, I was trying things to see what I could work because as much as it's like, oh my God, you've got the best midfield ever, finding a team which would fit all of these positions yeah. then was really hard because I was trying to find like a diamond formation where I could also play Valverde because he's still class. And they have got good backups in Illich as well. So I thought, well, I've got backups as well. I can Edson Alvarez is at the club. Maybe I can do that. And then I just thought, I'm just going to have to just bench one of them at, at the detriment of uh, losing results, unfortunately. So Camavinga and Chiumeni still in the lineup. But Bellingham is also there as well. Uh, and yeah, I lost to Osasuna 1 0 first game of the season. Then I beat Valencia only just. <laughs> 9-1 uh, and Jude Bellingham scored 4 so uh, he also scored in a win against Villarreal but then I lost to Barcelona the big one uh, Jared Brantwaite's first game scores an own goal <laughs> hell of a player yeah and my old player who I had at Newcastle was it Newcastle I had him at yeah I think it was yeah I yeah. bought him for 106 didn't I yeah uh, he scored an own goal for me <laughs> it was like give me a wink after uh, and then Two minutes later, Brantwaite. It did the Jonathan Woodgate, didn't yeah. he? Score, score an own goal on his debut. So we have also, for you eagle-eyed viewers, yeah. we've got I'm each other in the Champions that. League. How funny. <laughs> At the Bernabeu as well. So, yeah, we're going to collide in the Champions League, which is quite funny. So, Dad, let's have a look to see what you've been doing uh, over in Italy after I deserted the country. You had quite a good window, to be fair. Yeah. You sold quite a lot. There was a few that had already gone out, but if you have a look by date, you did sell quite a lot of players. Lucas Torrio, 35 million for a 33 year old was a good deal for you. I think your backup right back was another 27 million. Uh, backup goalkeeper, 10 million. You know how much you love goalkeepers. Well, you I'll had just, Lucas Paquetta, you sold just, for 30. I was just getting rid of the, the, the players that I just felt that I, I would I would never use. Yeah. Just to, just to create a bit more of a transfer budget. They had a bloated squad too, didn't they? Oh, massive it was, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah definitely, yeah. Uh, so you've done quite well, I think, to, to churn There's out. a lot of deadwood there, so yeah. got rid of it. And you spent 214 million. Now, all of these done, were done before you got here. Of course, yeah. your first one uh, that came through wasn't actually Entrick, actually. No. Um, it was Hator at Chelsea. Yeah. Uh, good right back, to be fair. Yeah. And you couldn't register him to begin with. No, no. The non-EU. So you, yeah. you, you ended up selling a, a non-EU player so he could be registered. Allison came through the door. Well, I had to get a really good keeper good pick up. Yeah. I, do like, I do like having a, a top quality Google, Google pick. Like yeah. Goalkeeper. Uh, before I left Napoli, by the way, my one and only sign-in was Edison uh, <laughs> in goal. I was like, oh, crap, I'll get Edison in goal. That, that should hopefully win me the title. Um, and then you was good because you wanted to sign him at Real Madrid. Yeah, I needed a goalkeeper at Real Madrid. <laughs> Courtois not very good anymore, and I could not find one. So uh, that was that yeah, was. I was a pleased shame. with that signing. Uh, then, then you I, got this. Then I got never the, heard of him. Then I got onto the phone. Yeah, I mean, Mate, blower. I need I need to win the league. Do you fancy coming with me? We won the league together with Chelsea. I'll be their boss. Yeah, here he is. Here he is. Frank Kessie, his second son. Frank Kessie turned up again. Like, he's only just signed for Bar two seasons. He's had at Barcelona. He's yeah. been there twice. Yeah. Signed for Barcelona for thirty-seven. Came to you for twenty-five. I mean, you look at you look at him now. Look for twenty-five minutes. That's still a bargain though. For what he can yeah, do. still good. Yeah. He's still a good player, isn't he? Yeah, 32. He'll win the league, piss off again. Yeah, and that's all I need for it. it. He won um, the league for me at Chelsea. Yeah, he do did. Do it again. Yeah, in one season. Uh, so fair enough. Okay. Frank Kessie in the door. Then, of course, that's when you got Endrick. Yeah. £100 million. Pounds. That's uh, your strike force of Endrick and Lataro Martinez. Oh, sorted. Force, and Eduardo Bove. And this is a smart move, I think. Weakening an opposition yep. in Roma. Taking yeah. their best midfielder. Well, I spoke to Josie Marino and... Um, 
he knew he was out the door, so he said, yeah, buy this player first yeah, before sure. I go. Yeah. Model <laughs> Citizen, 27, very good player. Okay. Tactically then, Dad, talk us through what the hell is this? Well, I got... I wanted to be a little bit solid in midfield because I knew, I knew I had Frank Kessie to be in the middle of there. Yeah. I've got the two boys up front. The boy, the attacking midfielder as well is a good player He's as well. very good, isn't he? That's why I had to get him. I had to get him in there as well. Yeah. And my winger's a good winger as well. Yeah, Gonzalez is class. So... He's going to get the balls over there for me. So I knew I had a good wing, good winger in the team. So I thought, change the formation to have a winger in it. So that's what I just done. Just change that a little bit. Yeah. I mean, my defence is really good, I think. So. Yeah, you got Barella as well. He's one of them the best centre defence. I mean, him sat just in front of them. My defence as well. It's just, I think it's brilliant, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it's a good so, team. Yeah. Good lineup. Let's have a look then. Your schedule so far. All green. Looking good, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, you've only played three games, but, but three games that you've that played are difficult. Atlanta are a good side. Yeah. They're a good side. I mean, a weakened, weakened Roma. So yeah. went there and, and went there and, and took the points off Beat them. Beat 2-0. But that was the biggest result I was pleased Stuff you, you just don't know what now. they're going to be like, Juve, do you? No. So they were the, that's the one I was pleased to get in the bag, really. I agree, yeah. My Napoli team, they had to hire somebody else after I departed. On slots come in, who won the league, of course, with Cologne. Well, after so. me and you moved, there was no big sort of move around. It was players, it was managers that was un unemployed and, and um, That's right, yeah. coming from smaller teams, wasn't it? Yeah. So it didn't, it didn't create anything really big, no. did it? Tuchel took the job at PSG, didn't he? Yeah. You had, you'd been without a job for a couple yeah. of seasons, so I that, mean, that uh, doesn't help. Real Madrid, uh, the Athletic, why am I saying that? The Real Madrid manager, he just retired, didn't he? So. Yeah, Carlo Gomp, yeah. <laughs> uh, and obviously we're in the 2029, so it's not a Euros or a World Cup. Like 2030, yeah. there probably will be some managed movements because of the World Cup. Yeah. So we'll probably expect something happening there. But yeah, Napoli, uh, after I signed Edison for them, and they already had Nicholas Jackson come in, they did go and spend a little bit more money, but not too much. Uh, they're in third place right now. So be interesting to track to see how they do, my old, seat, my old side against you. But right now, you're in the lead. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Good start. Yeah. Let's see then how you do in Italy and how I do in Spain and see how this season plays out. Starting off with that huge fixture at the Bernabeu in the Champions League. A trophy neither of us have won yet. Yeah, that's right, yeah. Let's see what happens. So what a summer, and how ironic that we face each other anyway despite me moving to another country. But an outstanding game of football was played at the Bernabeu with the halftime score being 2-1 after Jude Bellingham's goal. Second half, the ball bounced off the pulse and came to be an own goal from Alisson. And that may have looked to kill the game off, but Dad's Inter Milan side were determined to not leave Madrid empty-handed and the Argentine winger Nicolas Gonzalez claimed man of the match as he scored two fairly late goals to help Inter Milan claw it back to 3-3. Leaving things in the balance between us once again. At the turn of the new year though, I am chasing down a very good Barcelona team, four points ahead of being La Liga, but the surprise package is that Jude Bellingham is top of the goal scoring charts with 15 so far. He has been the best player in Europe from centre midfield by a country mile, scoring or assisting nearly every match. However, Dab was in a five team title race at the halfway point, but also having the top three highest scorers in the league. And he started bullying teams near the end of the season with his Inter Milan team. But his main rivals, AC Milan, could be the ultimate villain this season. A point ahead of Inter in the league with three games to go after already knocking Dad out of the Champions League quarter-final and with them being Dad's opponent in the Coppa Italia final as well. But AC Milan then face a familiar face in the semi-final of the Champions League. Me. And in the first leg alone, my Real Madrid team completely destroyed them 4-0 and at the Bernabeu leaving them with no hope of a comeback in the second leg. But... I have my own problems with my own rivals, in fact. Because Barcelona was relentless, and despite Jude scoring 25 league goals, Barcelona were running away with the La Liga title. And that is also who I was about to face in the Champions League final. But first, Dad pulled off another comeback. Well, the season ended, Dad, and you are champions. Fair play right at the end as well. You were second for ages in behind AC Milan. I, I was just chasing Milan all the time. Yeah, they had a bad end, love. Yeah, let you me won in. by four they points. They slipped right at the death and just let me in. Yeah, that's mental. They led for over half the season. Yeah. In, well, the, the second half of the season. Picked them up top, post. I went top two weeks at the end. Uh, so they lost to Hellas Verona at home. Yeah. And that's cost them the league. And then they drew with Fiorentina. Yeah on the final day to put up a fight but obviously you won both your games your your last two games you won 2-0 uh, so fair play you've uh, gone and won 
something in your first season in Italy, something I couldn't yes. do. Oh my god, the player statistics you dominated. Yeah. The Tower Martinez with twenty nine, Nicholas Gonzalez with twenty three, Endrick, what a waste of money that was. Twenty goals. <laughs> he did have the highest average rating in the league though. Uh, DeMarco had the second highest and he had the highest amount of assists. Obviously you gave him that left hand flank yeah. for him to bomb down and he's done that and he's he's done very done well business. for you. Uh, Profondi obviously in second in the assist as well. That's great to see. Well done. What about though? What about Napoli though? Fifth. Napoli in fifth place. Is Arn Slot still around? No. Oh, I sacked him after one season. If I've completed Bane, I could just go back. <laughs> yeah. It'd be like I've never left. <laughs> yeah. That would be hilarious, wouldn't it? Hi guys! <laughs> Me again! <laughs> So, yeah, who knows? But, yeah, he has been... I'm guessing he's been sacked. He was. He sacked, yeah. Only, only just 28th of yeah. May, a couple of days ago. That's mental. All right. So, Napoli down in fifth place. Missing me is what they were. They were yeah. Like, we want the other bold guy back. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's what they said. So, fair play. What about the Coppa Italia? Something else I struggled with last season. All yeah. oh, runners up. But lost in the final the night. I thought I'd done it. Yeah. As we I mentioned, done it. the Champions League final. Look who's in it. Oh, oh no. <laughs> Against Barcelona as well. Yeah. For Spain, this is amazing. Right. Coppa Italia though. Oh. Yeah, they oh. cost me. I right, cost them the league, they cost me the double. Yeah. So really we cost each other the double. Yeah. An extra time. Absolutely. Samuel Ricci, a hundred. Absolutely minute. gutted I was. Absolutely gutted. I thought if I could do the double, I'm on my way out of Italy straight away. Yeah, that's a tricky one. Man, I'll, I'll be honest with you, I was disappointed I didn't get to where you were as well. The Champions League. I, I had such a good side, I thought I, I could go all the way here. I yeah. could go all the way. Well, you were saying to me, weren't you? I think it could be us two in the final. Yeah, me. If we didn't meet, I think we could have got to the final each at all. I was disappointed I didn't get to the Champions League final. Well, obviously, we would have seen it already, but earlier on in the season, Two score draw each. yeah it's a very tight game as yeah. well uh, you went 1-0 up quite early on and Vinicius Jr did equalise I got one before half time Jude Bellingham he's been outstanding Alisson got an own goal we're actually got done by Bayern Alisson <laughs> but Nick Gonzalez two late-ish goals yeah um, equalised at the Bernabeu so we did not face all the way through you were actually eliminated in the semi-final of the I oh, know uh, in the Champions League quarter-final by AC Milan so they cost me the double they also cost me getting into the Champions League as well yeah uh, who then went on in the semi-final and lost to yours truly yeah so that would have been semi-final between me and you there you would have faced each other in the semi-final oh, but wouldn't look that have been good? wouldn't that have been good Nice also know, in the semi-final I that your former club that was great wasn't it yeah so it's weird how now all these stories are being woven yeah how, like you know you built Nice up quite a lot reached the semi-final of the Champions League because I knocked out Leipzig, my old team. I was only there for a season, but yeah. they were still there. Yes, I mean, that's four, four of our teams there. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, goals-wise then, I mean, oh, we know how much they scored in in that competition, but 38 and 48, 28 and 49. Endrick got 27 and 14. He's now class as your best player as well, and you yeah. can understand why. So, good um, stuff. 23 I, as well, according. Yeah. He's out of a good, isn't he? I take it you're going to be staying put? Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I've got to try and win that cup tour. I've got to... I mean, I've got out of a side. I'm... I'm not, I'm not going to be disappointed if I lose the league. No, as we said, cups are always difficult, yeah. more difficult than leagues. You've only got to lose the one game, in you? Yeah. I lost five games in the league and I still won the league. Yeah, so £81 million pound that you've got next season. Just yeah. out of curiosity, you could move to Manchester United, yeah. Atletico Madrid. That one's ooh, like that, isn't it, really? Yeah, isn't it? they're not very good. No. That's the trouble. Uh, they, think they finished in sixth place. They're not amazing. I mean, at the moment, when you look at that and, and sort of think what's possible of it happening... I think to myself, better for me to stay and try and win the Italian Cup. Or if you left Real Madrid because you've won everything, I'll take your job. Yeah, yeah. that's the only thing I think is worth Wouldn't me make you leave leaving. For. Yeah, yeah. Okay, Man United just seems to come up every year, didn't they? They yeah, just yeah. sack somebody every single year. Been ridiculous. The amount of different managers. That was Xavi. You like? Oh no, he left. Where did he go? Oh, imagine leaving a Man United job and going down, like downhill, and going to Spurs. Mental. Uh, Ruben Amorim was sacked though. Unai Emery left the manager's role. Zidane was sacked. There's some massive managers who got sacked. Yeah. All right. Real Madrid. How did I get on this season? I know I'm in the Champions League final. That is still to come, as we said. But. Ooh. I 
didn't win the league. Did win the harder one, the Copa del Rey. Beat Atletico Madrid in the final, mm. 4-1. So my Madrid rivals there. So that's fantastic. I'm buzzing. I've got that one out of the way. I even went 1-0 down in that match as well. In the semi-final, I knocked out Barcelona. I mean, it, that... Barcelona is going to be the only team you have to beat in that league. Yeah, I mean they they amateur, don't they? Really, and but looking Stop at it though, mate, league. you only lost three games. Oh no, you lost six games. I lost six. They yeah, lost one. They only lost one game. Yeah, they are very top scorer of the league though. Jude Bellingham from centre we, we midfield. Could, we could we could sense that from the first couple of games we watched to play. Yeah, we? and if you don't believe it, look, centre mid, centre mid. He played wing every now and then, but yeah. centre mid. He was getting hat tricks. He's getting two goals. Uh, he did take penalties. I'll give him that. He scored eight penalties, but still, that's unbelievable. <laughs> How's he done but that? But that's when you look at it, that's what's actually happening in real life, though, isn't it? Yeah, he's just scoring you know? a lot of goals. So I've got the team to do it. Uh, I also have £146 million uh, next, next summer to build a team big enough to win the league. But it's all down to the Champions League. And we thought we'd come back as we've seen it. <laughs> right before didn't we we don't know this do we? we've been waiting for this haven't we we're going to see what happens uh, Rasmus Hoyland is their striker they got Lila Bada. they've got Gavi Gravenberg they've got a different side but they've still got some of the uh, the big hitters the lineup that I'm using is quite risky because both Bellingham and Buonani need to rest we've got Vinicius Junior who's only recommended 60 minutes of match and I've also got Jared Brantway who again needs a rest but it's the final day of the season lads if you, you just need to do you this. You can pull it out for the Champions League final, then there's something seriously exactly. wrong with Exactly. If you can stick your boots on and get yeah. on the field, we should be a go. So, so. It's, it's one of those things, isn't it? Do I really want you to win or do I want Barcelona to win? <laughs> after Surely you want Barcelona. After your stupid comment about bringing that manager going to Spurs now, fucking Barcelona to win. You shouldn't have any allegiances <laughs> to Spurs in this. You should have more allegiances to Glory Hunter. <laughs> Right, let's see how I get on in the Champions League final. The final didn't start great for me as Rasmus Hoyland, who looked offside, went through in nine minutes to score a goal. And I then had a bad injury to Buonani and had to take him off and bring on Dressel. We left it very late in the Champions League final in this really tight affair at the Stade de France, but Jude Bellingham finally found Dressel to take the game to extra time. But no goals were scored and it went to penalties and Jude Bellingham stepped up and missed. Ronald Araujo for Barcelona was next and he also missed. Vinicius Junior slotted in with no mistake as well as Christian Pulisic who put Barcelona back level. But then Omega was next and it was another missed penalty. Gavi put Barcelona in front and we kept scoring to keep it within just one penalty but we needed another big save from Courtois but we were running out of chances. And that man, Rasmus Hoyland, stepped up again to score and win the Champions League for Barcelona. A tough one to take, but it's hard to say they didn't deserve it. They've been excellent all season. I can't believe I lost on pens. Especially against the one that you lost to with the winning penalty. Rasmus bloody Hoyland. <laughs> he, was, he was your uh, fawn in the side all the way through, though, wasn't he? He was, but he was dangerous yeah. for them. He was dangerous. Like yeah. Nobody else really caused me anything, no. but yeah, that's that's a tough one to take. Yeah, I mean, you look at the seasons really for us both, really. I mean, I won the league, but lost the cup and got knocked out by um, a rival. rival. So I look at it and think, I've had a, an half-decent season. And I think you've got to look at You've won the hardest thing in Spain, I think, is the cup. Yeah, I agree, yeah. But you had the chance of winning the two big ones, really. You know, yeah. Winning that league and the, and you got to the final of the I mean, Champions League. So, in the league. I was nowhere near. No. I mean, so I would think I'm a little bit more happy than what you are. Yeah. I think I'm going to be a bit, especially if it going to penalties. Yeah. You, know, you, you, you you took them on on the day and I think it could have gone either way, that one. Oh, the late goal from Dressel as well. The yeah. substitute coming on. I yeah. thought, this is it. It's yeah. written in the stars. And Jude missed his first penalty. I'm oh. like, it's not written in the stars <laughs> no. anymore. We just literally <laughs> praised him just before that. But yeah, I'm going to have to have a big summer, I guess. And uh Look to see what I can do with the money that they've given me and, and see what I can potentially put up a fight against Barcelona next season. But it's a very eventful episode as it's as it's been. Oh, More butterfly yeah. effects yeah. for Glory Hunter. So that means we've got some trophies to add to our cabinets. So let's have a look at that. Unfortunately, no Champions League today, but at least I get to add the Copa del Rey to my Glory Hunter cabinet. Meanwhile, a very happy dad nails down the Serie A tire with every intention of keeping just behind me going into season number eight. What I didn't expect to see this summer was dad selling Frank Kessie to Liverpool after just one season with him in Inter Milan. Probably won't be the last time we see him though, I'd imagine. And the 2030 World Cup took place in Turkey, where a lot of big clubs 
clubs had early eliminations, leading to France winning the whole thing, which also created a lot of jobs for managers to move. However, we both stay put at our clubs this season. Now, there was a lot of managerial uh, appointments being made internationally, which yeah. meant there was obviously a few club managers, like the England manager, yeah. who come from Strasbourg, so that was never going to open up anything for yeah. us. And to be honest, we weren't really interested. No, we were, were we? We, we, wanted, yeah. we had finished business to get on with, so... Yeah, and instead, we just had an unbelievably busy transfer window. We spent a ton of money, so let's have a look to see what Dad's done first. Because you also turned down quite a lot, yeah. if, if I remember rightly. So, on the outs, Frank Kessie. Yeah, the, the, he's coming and done me a favour again, and I've put another winner's medal in his cabinet. So, um, I just said to him, well, Frank, I've won the league again, mate. I don't need you anymore. So, he said, oh, okay, boss, I'll go. So, I said, I'll call you back when I want to win another league. <laughs> I can't wait till he retires <laughs> and becomes like a coach or an assistant <laughs> and just you just carry it along with you yeah. and see what it's like. But yeah, he's gone to Liverpool, £15 million. Uh, he's moved in the last three windows. <laughs> It'd be interesting to see if he wins with Liverpool now, wouldn't it? Yeah, so there we go. Uh, you also sold Marcus Turam for £30.5 million, yeah. so, which was your backup striker from last season. 33, so get that. For, I mean, Nats has really overpaid there, haven't they? Yeah, definitely. Considering yeah. he only got seven goals and eight assists. I know he didn't yeah. play a lot, but still. Uh, which meant that you spent quite a lot of money. £178 million. So, free transfer to begin with, Andre Onana. Well, my goalkeeper was um, res uh, retiring. Awesome. Both our keepers retired. Yeah, that. so uh, I had to get another keeper in. Yeah. So... That's a good replacement, I think. I mean, it was, it's going to be, Milan it was going to be a fight between him and my, my reserve keeper who, who takes the the, um, the top spot. And yeah. So I'll let him get on with it. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, then you identified right back was the position that you needed yeah, the most. Yeah, my weakest in, in the whole team, wasn't it? So yeah. I went in for a good right back. So I've got yeah. this guy. I'm, I'm quite pleased New with Nugent, 22 yeah. years of age. Yes, he looks quite good, doesn't he? He does look good. Yeah. yeah. Cost a lot of money, 85 million. But when you're at this point where it's like, that's the only position I really need to improve. And the players to improve him are going to cost that much money. Yeah, definitely, yeah. Especially in a right-back role, which is yeah. very much like there's not a lot of positions. No. Not a lot of players in that position. You're going to be overpaying like I did last season for Nuno Mendes. Yeah. So Lucas Broles, a youngster coming in from Cologne for £85 billion. Then you went back to an old friend yeah. for a centre-back role. Well, same again. He was good. Yeah. But I, I felt like morale, was Yeah, it? I felt I could just get a little bit better and yeah. just strengthen my defence up. And you also this, only had two actually out and out centre backs. Yeah. So uh, I just went in for this guy. I knew it was. I knew it had to be um, someone a little bit better than what he was. So and I, I know this guy quite well. So yeah. I was on the phone to him the other day. Yeah. <laughs> he's like he's like the second one blowing up. <laughs> yeah. So Genio Des, twelve billion pound. This was, on this was the, the guy that, when I had a bit of money left over, it was a case of, right, let's get a couple of squad players in just in case I get a few injuries. And this yeah. guy this guy covers both sides and he's quite good as well. So. Yeah. Uh, and Java Schlager yeah. from Liverpool. Another, another guy that come up that was quite good as a squad player, really. Yeah. Just in case I get any injuries. Cause Solid mentals. Yeah, definitely, yeah. So, I mean, it's so good, really, isn't it? So, yeah. now I've got, a, the first team speaks for itself and I've got a couple of good squad players right behind them. Just to cover me for injuries, really. Yeah. Uh, you changed the tactics slightly as yeah. well. You brought the two midfielders up higher. Yeah. I mean, I'm just thinking to myself now, I just want to be a little bit difficult more to, to, to beat. So my defence are coming up quite quick. So I don't want I don't want a, a, a midfielder just sat there just in front of them. I want them already up front. Yeah. Up in, and then let's, let's take the game to everybody else now. Yeah. So I'm going for it this time. Uh, you changed the inside wing, or inverted winger, sorry, as well, to an inside forward. Yeah. Those are the main changes that happened. A couple of in, uh, player instructions as well. Uh, and this is the starting 11, best 11, which, yeah, you can't really argue with no. that. No, not really, no. All I've right. Got, I've got quite a few good midfielder players just in case I get a few injuries, like, like Smith Rowe there. He's quite good as well, yeah. isn't he? So, yeah, I'm, I think I'm covered here. So, I mean, like I said to you in, in the last video, I'm not interested in the league now. I'm just going. I'm interested in just going for the cup. Yeah. So I, I can't afford to have a weak side because you only got to lose one game and you're gone, and you. Yeah. And that's a season wasted for me then. Apart from the Champions League, really, I can go for still. Yeah. Schedule then. You've played three games. You've dropped a point. Well, two points against Lazio away from home. Yeah. Always going to be difficult, and yeah. they score in the 96th minute. Yeah. Uh, Sassuolo 5-2, Sampdoria 6-0. Oh, that's a hell of a result, isn't it? Yeah. There is a little bit of problem, though, that you've got 
with Lataro Martinez. Yeah, it is. And a yeah. lot of your players are about 32, 33. Yeah. So yeah. you're getting a lot of offers, but it was like, I've never going to accept that. No. Uh, I've he got is a... prepared to leave on a free. Yeah, next season. So I'm, I'm hoping really that I've, I win that cup this season. Yeah. Then I can sort of say, okay, you're going, you're going. But if I don't win the cup this season, I've got to replace him. Yeah. How do you replace that? Yeah, he's so good. He's absolutely exceptional. Because yeah. I know he's 33, but he's got 20 natural <laughs> yeah, fitness. Yeah. So he's in, he ain't going to go like drastically decline. He's going to stay world class as they put him here. So, yeah. I mean, last season as well, 29 goals in 34 games. He was your main guy scoring the goals. Yeah. An unbelievable and he's already got six this season as well. Yeah, so, so he's he, going to be hard to he's replace. He's up and going already for me. Yeah. You're not playing against me in the Champions League by no. the looks of it, but you are playing against... My old team Newcastle and your old team Chelsea. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. So, yeah, we've got a couple of uh, interesting games coming up there in South the Champions well, League. Like. Right, over to Real Madrid. What have I been doing in Madrid? Well, other than needing to register some players, I have had a very busy window as well, and I've still got £18 million left, and I just kind of left it in the end because uh, I thought, ah, never mind. I've sold £63 million worth here. Trevor Shalaba was one of the players that I got rid of a mega for another 23 because I've bought in a striker. Uh, Melaman for 18.5. And I also got rid of Ivan Freznader and for Kyle Tomori as well as Diakabe. Uh, so a few of those players went out for good amounts of money, which allowed me to have an even bigger budget. And I spent a lot of money. So starting off, Dusan Vlahovic. 30 years of age now, what but striker, he is a world-class striker, yeah. in my opinion. £72 million. I was annoyed when you bought him, because I was looking at him as well, when I, but he you was. jumped in before I did. Yeah. <laughs> uh, eight goals in four games so far. He's actually going to he's gonna rival Jude Bellingham for goals, yeah. uh, by the looks of it. I've also changed tactic as well, by the way. But yeah, I think he is an improvement to uh, the striker that I had previously, as much as that striker was good. I actually think now I've got two... Ratkoff, I've got two Serbian strikers. Yeah. So there's a lot of Serbians that have come through, actually. That's quite good. Luis Gonsalves, this is a steal. £25 million. How good is he? Yeah. From Benfica. Now, I had him on my shortlist from the season before, but yeah. the season before that, he was, well, the season before this, he was really expensive. I just had him on my shortlist as a, oh, that's an interesting player to look at if I ever need to sell one of the big midfielders that I've got. Didn't even need to sell one, any of them. I just had £25 million and it was a release clause. Like, that is unbelievable. So, he's a fantastic player. Phenomenal, like, in, in terms of he's been starting centre-back for me. Even did, though I yeah. bought a centre-back. He did, didn't he? he was, yeah. we, we looked at him and went, why is he in centre-back? Yeah, we? I was like, he's, by mid, he's a centre-midfielder. Like, yeah. what's going on here? He's actually he's not bad at centre-back. I mean, his heading's only 12 and his... Bravery's 13. He's got okay jump and reach of 14. Positioning of 15, though. So, I mean, he can do a job there, definitely. Well, but we I bought well, for a him a squad role. player, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. But I bought Gonzalo Inacio, really, for that position. That's the, the, the player that I bought in. I had two players turn me down. Yeah. Well, not turn me down. The Chelsea lad who, who I mentioned previously, who was centre back, the Ukrainian. I had a deal accepted, offered him money. And he turned me down and signed a new contract. This guy here, 21 now. I was like, I know exactly who I'm getting in at centre back. That's my guy. Lovely stuff. We go forward. And I'm like, why is that transfer being cancelled? And I clicked and he had signed a new bloody deal. And I offered him way more money than what they've, they're they prepared to pay. Yeah. So he's just loyal. Uh, and I guess you got to respect that. Guy. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So, but he is dead to me. Um. <laughs> So instead, I bought their other centre back, Gonzalo yeah. Anasio, instead, £70 million. I would rather have had the other guy. And actually, to be honest, I did say to you, maybe the Anasio deal was a mistake because I had loads of money left over and I probably could have gone for a more expensive centre back. Yeah. But then I also realised that Courtois had retired. Yeah, I didn't even you forgot, didn't you? Did, completely forgot that I had to bring in another goalkeeper. So thankfully, I had a good amount of money left over, 90 million, and I brought in Villarreal's Jorgensen, who is fantastic in goal. So yeah, I'm happy with that goalkeeper acquisition. 28 now, so it's a good time to pick him up. Weakens an opposition, but he got 15 clean sheets last season, which I think was in the top three that we that I remember rightly in that profile. So that's good. Start the season. Remember last year, I lost to Osasuna first game, and you're like, what the hell? Well, 
this season, drew to Celta Vigo. <laughs> and what did you do the second game last season? I won 9-1. <laughs> This time I won 9 0. So, yeah, there we go. I need to win the league. So, dropping any points like that is absolutely disgraceful. And I should yeah. be ashamed of that. You can't afford myself. to drop a single point in this, in this league no. now, can you? Real Batiz was a 6 0 win after that. So, we're all looking good. And Espanyol, 5 1. I've also got to play both Chelsea and Newcastle. It's funny yeah. how things work out, isn't it? Uh, as well as Arsenal. I think so, Arsenal was in mine as well. Ones. Yeah, they were. So, three of the same teams that we've got yeah. to play each other. As I said, I changed the tactics. This is what I'm going for instead. So, last season I had a bit of a wild one didn't I with the the shadow striker but Buonani is actually more of a winger anyway than he is a shadow striker so bringing him into this if I did best 11 pick I'm quite happy with this other than of course Gonsalves goes into that role instead of Anasio do I nail in Anasio for while we're going through the season I'm not quite sure I'm still a little bit whether I should do that or not because I don't necessarily like nailing in a player for every game when no. I have a goal of doing something so, yeah, I might just leave it and let Gonzalo Gonza The good, have the a good go thing ahead. is, if you have an injury in the midfield, you know that he can go forward. He goes forward, yeah, yeah that's it. And a lot of the time, like even just in the preparation up until this point, I had injuries or I had players who needed resting yeah. in this position. Now, I do have other players, but it, it meant that Gonzalo goes in straight away or anyway. So, yeah, that's it. Well, I've got one goal left in Spain. But I kind of think I might stick around anyway to have another crack at that Champions League. Because I was so close anyway. I yeah. know this is a Champions League worthy team. Taking Barcelona to penalties. Barcelona have a good team anyway. But you've only got one goal in Inter, uh, Inter in Italy. And I feel like time is ticking for you with that Inter side. Yeah, definitely, yeah. There's players 33, 34. I mean, they're, they're quite capable of getting to the final of the Champions League as well. If they I are. If I have a favourable draw. Yeah. But yeah, I, I can't afford to miss that cup again this season. No, if you, if you have Milan another Dummy. season, I think you could go maybe one more season yeah. with Martinez. But after that, you've got too many players yeah. who'll be retiring. Or yeah, because next season, enough. if I had a fairly budget and just sold one or two players, I could, I could afford to buy another striker. Yeah. But I wouldn't be able to afford to buy anything else. So. No. Yeah, um, I've got to, Milan done me badly that season. Yeah, they beating, did. Beating me in the cup final. Yeah. So I've, I've got to make sure I try and win that cup final. That's my goal this season. Interesting times ahead. I can't believe we are already up to season number eight. But at the same time, what we've accomplished in those seven seasons so far is pretty remarkable, well, it, it, to be honest. It was, I mean, I I said to you, well, season eight already, isn't it? And I said to you, didn't I? Did you think we would honestly have won what we'd already won this quickly? And your answer to me was no, didn't you? Because I've never played this game before, so I don't know Glory how it went. Yeah. I'm learning as I'm going here, and I'm thoroughly enjoying it. But I must admit, I think we've done so well. But I mean, for you to turn around and say we didn't, we you didn't think we'd win this amount already? No. You know, and it's just it just goes to show how good this this we are really on each other's tails here. Yeah, we? I think not, the, I thought the compet I thought the fact of having a versus Glory Hunter would make things harder to win. But I feel like it's upped us yeah, to the point where like, oh, I need to win it. Yeah. Whereas like when I was doing Glory Hunt, I was a lot more casual. I was like, okay, I can build a team yeah. for next year. And I've got time to do that next year. But now it's kind of like, no, I need to do it now. Yeah. I need to do it now. I need to go balls out now and win the it The prime now. example as well is earlier on this one, no, near the end by the transfer window, I had some money left over and I could have gone for another goalkeeper and it was quite a good one, wasn't he? Yeah. And you said, no, it was my first, the one, the first team goalkeeper Someone offered me 40 million from, didn't they? Yeah. And I was thinking that Mende was going to be my goalkeeper. First oh, keeper. Oh, Nana was going to be first keeper. And you were like, do you want to sell him? And usually I'd have just gone 40 million from your keeper. Oh, yeah. Shocked, he said no. <laughs> and I went, no. Yeah. I don't want to I don't want to lose such a good keeper. Yeah. I've got two good keepers in there at the moment, so nope, leave it. Uh, so, you know, we're on the button, aren't we? We've got to be. Yeah. We're chasing each other's tell you, so. I hope you guys are enjoying it because we are. We're having so much fun here. Absolutely. Make sure you are subscribed because you don't want to miss another episode. Let's see what happens in season number eight. We got a goal set for this year. Dad's season really began in January when the Coppa Italia came around, starting well, beating Bologna 5-0. My season started immediately, of course, trying to overthrow Barcelona to La Liga title. And when the first El Clasico came around, we needed to make it count. And with all the best players in the world on the pitch, Barcelona pulled back a two-goal deficit to make it 2-2 before half-time. Even though, due Bellingham of course, it had to be 
scored the winner. This game was feisty too, with both teams having a player sent off with a straight red card. And by January, I was still unbeaten in the league, but only two points ahead of Barcelona and dominating the player statistics. And while Dad continued to go deep into Coppa Italia rounds, an early exit in Europe looked likely after a first leg loss to his old team Nice in the round of 16. Another El Clasico win for Real Madrid in the league, but I'd have to face them yet again in the Copa del Rey and in the Champions League knockout stages. Three points and two games in hand with just six to play and I was feeling confident. Especially when Jude Bellingham is chasing 40 goals this season with a month to play. Helping us with a chance to win it all this season. All right, Dad. What Ooh. a season. I mean, I'm, I'm pleased. AC Milan. I'm... <laughs> I'm pleased I'm still there, but I'm, I'm a bit, oh no, because it's Milan again, isn't it? How well have they done? I oh, know, I'm worried now. I'm, I'm pleased that I've stayed right on their ass, but that's a big 17 points. Yeah. That's, that's a hell of a lot of points. You lost seven games in total. You lost to them as well, away yeah. from home. Juve was another one, Roma. Uh, you only lost away games. At home, it's a fortress. Yeah. Got to win your home games. In Milan, yeah. <laughs> is also at home. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, uh, you drew five again against Milan. So you failed yeah. to beat your rivals. I mean, like I said to you, I was I, I wasn't too worried about the the league. So I'm I'm hoping I've just concentrated on the cup. Yeah, and it is Ooh. all down to the cup for you. Now in the league, you had the two top scorers. Rafael Leal got the most for Milan with only 17. You had 10 more with yeah. Lautaro Martinez. Yeah, that's your right winger getting the 30 goals. So that done me. Uh, that was a right decision to put him at play yeah. a winger wasn't it yeah and he was the, and he was he's the 33 now and he's a top assist as well look. yeah or average rating sorry one of the top wait well, he's in there for the yeah. top assist 13 yeah. 21 yeah one and beyond. the most man of the matches as well so your keeper's also there for the um, Mike Mannion I've never seen that 26 clean sheets and if you think about the legacy that AC Milan have had yeah with not conceding many goals I think it was the 91 92 season where they only scored 36 goals or something in, yeah. in the 38th yeah, right, game yeah. and they won the league. Yeah. The amount of clean sheets, 26 clean sheets is absolutely insane. So they must have an unbelievable team. But it's all down to that Coppa Italia. Were they big enough and ugly enough to keep you away from winning that again? You've done it. Job done. You've done it. Get in. Two seasons, Italy done. <sighs> Right, okay. I'm knocked, so pleased with that. That knocked that out by was, Nice. Oh, no, I feel hell of a side up there. Like they're going to knock me out of their Champions League. <laughs> they reached the semi final last year. Yeah. They're definitely in the quarter final there. Oh, what a team I, I couldn't believe that when I seen that one go through. But I mean, I was pleased with that. Someone done me, I don't know whether it was Juventus or what, but I didn't knock Milan in. I don't think I did. No. So someone done me a big, big favour by knocking Milan out. Yeah. They were knocked out by Spezia in yeah. the third round. Oh. That was a big favourite for That's me. That's really done you a big favour. So I must have been the favourites to win that then. Yeah, you knocked that Torino 3-0, uh, Sampdoria 8-2 across the two legs. And it was Juve who defeated Udinese in the final. Big win. Big oh, win. Please for that. All right. Now, Real Madrid. No, how did we do? Did I manage to do it? Please. Yes! Oh, he's 98 done it. points. Oh, Look at that. Mate, you were top of the league all season, by the looks of it. Yeah. Yeah, I stayed top for a long period of time there. Six points ahead of Barcelona. And I had to have a good... I, 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 there was no way I couldn't do it without having an almost perfect season. Yeah, you lost two games, wasn't it? they had 101 last year. They're not yeah. going to all of a sudden drop 40 points. No. So I needed to have a big, big season. And 92 points is still massive to finish in second place. Sel Vigo finished third, by the way. Cool. Which, and Zaragoza in fifth. For everybody out in fourth. So, yeah, I mean, look at it's, this, it's a mental. I mean, <laughs> yeah. severe. Bill Bow's down in 14th. I do feel for Bill Bow because, like, on the game, they got a great start in team. Yeah. But they never have that many good Basque players come through. That's and also, hard, they're not it? allowed to sign anybody. No, you tend to see them really struggle later yeah. on. Uh, but anyway, besides the point, I only lost two games Real Zaragoza and Espanyol. I did not lose to Barcelona. Didn't draw against them well, either. There you I go. beat them. And that's the six points that I needed because they would have also gained a point there. Well, it's it's so. always going to be in that league between you two. So yeah. whoever beats each other is probably going to go on and win that league. Yeah, I had the three top so scorers well done. in the league. Oh, well, you, you should do, shouldn't you? Oh my, it's only for Jose Fontan. <laughs> it's <laughs> the only reason lot. why I'm not yeah. dominating that completely. Oh, Jude Bellingham, now. 26 league goals from centre midfield is absolutely bonkers. Yeah. I know it's Jude Bellingham. I know he's at Real Madrid. 
but still to get that on Football Manager yeah. is mental. Yeah, definitely, yeah. Great average rating as well. Dusan was a great signing. Uh, Vinicius Jr. moving into an inside forward definitely worked. So I am absolutely buzzing with that. But do I put a cherry on the top of this cake with a Champions League? Get in! Oh, didn't really see that. Mm. Ah. It's the first. Done. That's the first big one really in the cabinet, isn't it? 2 0 against Man City in the final. You nearly done the treble, mate. Almost. Oh, I'm so pleased with that. Oh, I can leave Real Madrid. And you need a job. <laughs> I've got to do Spain yet. <laughs> that's all that's quite annoying. <laughs> <laughs> do you know what's even more annoying? Is I can't take your job because your your team's about to be too old. They've got another season, you want to go buy a striker? Nah. <laughs> nah. I, I I wouldn't trust it. Wouldn't you? No, I think I have to wait. I really do. I think I might now aim to go back to England Ooh. and get that FA Cup. I mean, when you look at it, I've had two seasons in Real Madrid. I come first and second, and I got into two finals. Yeah. And I won one of them, obviously. So, yeah. they're, they're a good side. Oh, got Real Madrid for um, Inter Milan. Champions League sorry. ticked off. That's... That to me is the big, big one, isn't it? I mean, the, I think the Europa League is going to be the hardest one the league to win because we've got to get into a team that's in the Europa League, and we. But yeah. that's still a big one to win. I take so, it you're going to be resigning then from Inter. Um, yeah, I don't think they're good enough to win the Champions League, are they? <laughs> I might stick around. <laughs> I've got time on my side. I'm enjoying my time at Real Madrid, enjoying my legacy. So I, I might leave you unemployed for a little bit. This could be a case of what jobs come up. Yeah. Really? Oh, it's going to cost me. Yeah, I mean, right now, uh, this team is disgusting. 45 goals from Vlaovic, 36 and 25 from Duke Bellingham, 36 and 14 from Vinicius Jr. Like, what is... Dressel, 15 and 15, he was my substitute. <laughs> like, how good is he now? And he's barely playing. Oh, I'm actually quite interested. By Luis Gonzalez, he played 50 games. So I think he did play centre-back quite a lot and that's an unbelievable team that they've got there yeah. so they should I spent a lot of money there really so the problem we've got now really is is like like when I built the Nice team isn't it they're they're a good side so they're they're a competition against anybody oh, in the Champions yeah, League yeah. isn't it yeah you know so it's Real Madrid now is going to be there or thereabouts for the next three yeah. or four seasons same as Man City if you think about it yeah. I mean Erlen Haaland's still knocking around they almost had a perfect league phase there whereas we, we had a bit of a ropey one I drew two games there against two teams I should not be drawn against uh, you drew against Arsenal and lost to Chelsea, your for former club there. We went into the round of 16 straight away. I knocked out Liverpool. That's a, that was a tough one as well. Yeah. I was 1-0 down in the first leg. Uh, you, you, that's where you were eliminated by Nice in a 5-4. So that's quite an interesting one. Uh, Quarter final, I knocked out Aston Villa. So that was an easy -er, easier tie. Yeah. Uh, but I went into this and that was where Nice was knocked out by Manchester City. I went into the semi-final and I knocked out Ooh. Barcelona. Anyhow. And I was 4-0 up in the first leg. Yeah. <laughs> because the second leg, I almost bloody threw it away. 3-0 yeah. <laughs> in the second leg. That is mental. Ooh, that was a deep. close one. Yeah. So at the camp now, that was a close one. But I'll take that. So I've got to be happy. I'm absolutely buzzing. I almost got the treble there. That would have topped it off completely. But obviously winning the Copa del Rey last year. Uh, I'm absolutely fine with that. So, job-wise then, I mean, if I was to stick around, £113 million. Pounds. Who won the, the Copa del Rey, by the way? Because you lost in the final, Barcelona. Didn't you? It was Barcelona. It was Barcelona. They beat me, yeah. So, job-wise, let's have a look. Who do we have? Not oh, Bayern Munich, Dad. Chelsea. I could go to Chelsea. That could be an FA Cup winning team. And I can, I can sell that Ukrainian little knobhead. <laughs> Who rejected me twice? What? Um, he could be on the chopping block straight away. That's an FA Cup winning team right there. What's What's Bayern Munich's team like? I've, I got, mean, to, I've got to do Germany now, don't I? You have got to do Germany. You've got you. They let you. They, they you were too late last time, weren't they? Uh, Ivan Nilsson, amazing. Matisse Tell, amazing. Jamal Musiala, amazing. Jeremy Pino's there. Alfonso Davies is still a good age. There's some great players in there. They finished in third, Dad. Leipzig won the league by a mile with yeah. Nelson Viper scoring 23. So he had a good, yeah, he's had good growth. So, I mean, 62 points. They were 21 points behind Leipzig. That's astonishing, really, how bad you that see, is. Who did, who did they sack then? 
Who was the manager they sacked? Who? Oh, it was. Was it? Yeah, oh, I tell. Ooh. <laughs> he did win five trophies there. To yeah. be fair, he won the DFB Pokal three times while he was there and the Bundesliga once. But yeah, it was time for him to go and he is gone. So, I mean, the Chelsea job is very tempting. They have just sacked Unai Emery, who had been there for a while and only won one FA Cup in 2028 which was three years ago so i mean for me to win that tottenham's anybody could win that then so <laughs> it's been a while since you've been there uh, it's very tempting mm. big question now is what are we gonna do it's every other year isn't it what we are have we gonna do kind of a quiet one yeah and we just know all hell is gonna break loose this summer but before that happens there's a couple of trophies to add to our trophy cabinet and then there's one massive trophy to add to the trophy cabinet so let's take a look so congrats to dad who completed italy in just two seasons winning the coppa italia with inter milan and has now won half the trophies required to complete glory hunter but no doubt he's still forced behind us with my real madrid team winning both the champions league and La Liga, I'm now in a very dominant position right now. And if I somehow manage to get the Chelsea position in the summer, they also finish low enough to qualify for Europa League next season. My job here in Madrid is complete and it's time to resign and the Real Madrid board are begging me to stay. But with Spain complete, I leave the best team in the world behind. And it's straight on to finding the next role, applying for Chelsea and potentially crossing off the Europa League next season. With dad complete in Italy, he also resigned from Inter Milan, who did not ask him to stay at all. Of course, he didn't let it rattle him though. And straight away on the same day, he went and applied for my old job at Real Madrid, as well as the vacant role at Bayern Munich too. Chelsea wasted no time in asking me to come in for an interview for their role. And almost immediately it seemed, I was off the job and right away i noticed a free signing of nicolo barella coming into the side which of course is dad's old mate from inter milan meanwhile dad was brought to munich for an interview and they offered him the job before any news from real madrid so dad delayed the confirmation thomas tuchel ended up leaving psg and took on dad's old role at inter milan and finally dad got the real madrid interview he really wanted but he wasn't favourite for the job. But he had another option as Pochettino left Liverpool for PSG. And they approached Dad to see if he wanted an interview, but he turned it down. However, Omega Dad was waiting ages for the response he really wanted. Dad, I moved to Chelsea. I think it was the best move that I could possibly have made Whoa. at that point. They're in the Europa League, aren't they? So that's the one European champ. Uh cup that you're after so yeah very very sensible move yeah and the FA Cup of course yeah. I have yet to win thanks to uh, my quick move out of Newcastle and straight to PSG earlier on in Glory Hunter but yeah I think Chelsea gives me a great opportunity to win the Europa League we qualified for it we've got our uh, fixtures out I'm happy uh, let's have a look at this Chelsea team because how they finish sixth don't oh, know don't know now unbelievable team so i've actually made a couple of transfers as well and funny enough they had already signed nicolo barella on a free from, my team. from dad's <laughs> inter milan side so i was like yeah cool that's, that's quite that's... bad because they were losing their main striker as well wouldn't they? yeah he, he was going league. out yeah, that's so... why i didn't want to go yeah. anywhere near inter milan i thought <laughs> nope no chance so yeah that was a good move to come in uh, and then i sold enzo fernandez he, uh, he had his uh, last year's contract he wanted to leave 35 million is uh, like nowhere near the value that he should have gone for. But when they are one year left in their contract, wanting to leave on a free, you just take anything you yeah, can, unfortunately. Yeah. So he's gone out for 35 million pounds. So I brought in two replacements. I had about 100 million pounds in transfer budget. So I brought in Kefren Turan as the starting position for 69 million pounds. I want him to be like my Bellingham. Yeah. At Real Madrid. Bellingham at Real Madrid for me scored 25 league goals that season. Uh, and Kefren Turan comes in very much nowhere near as good, but very much the similar type of player. That centre midfield on attack is fantastic for him. He's already got three and four. Good so, start. Oh, yeah. Good start. That's what I'm hoping. Six, nine million pound, I think, is a naughty bargain. Number. And it's a naughty number as well. <laughs> How do you know about that? And then uh, 
Actually, don't tell me. Uh, <laughs> just remember who I asked. And then as a backup, because I didn't have many backups in centre midfield, Kobe Mainu, one of my favourite players to watch right now in a Manchester United shirt. Kobe Mainu comes in, he's homegrown, so that's another string to my bow for the reason to sign him for £51 million. He's been playing a lot of football for Manchester United, who just won the Europa League. Yeah. So hopefully he can win back to back. That's the plan. Tactically, now I've gone for this, and it's strategic. Yeah. So, in the other leagues where I'm looking to win the league, win the cup, I'm going all out. I'm going attacking, and that's basically how we try and win the league. Because yeah. you know you're going to pick up some losses here and there. And occasionally, you're going to get battered because the team just outright outplays you when you're playing to attacking. But I'm not here to win the league. I'm here to win a cup, FA Cup and the Europa League over yeah. two legs. I need to be smart about this. Well, I did say to you when you put this tactic out there, this is more of a, a European tactic rather than a yeah. winning the league tactic. So Yeah, so I'm trying to be smart with it. We've got a fantastic team. I'm not nailing anybody down throughout the season. Uh, Evan Ferguson is my star striker up front. He's suspended for the next game, but that's absolutely fine. Uh, he is phenomenal. You're Barcelona lucky, sniffing you're lucky around. You're having him in the team, aren't you? Yeah, he's great. Yeah. yeah, Didn't you buy him for them? I think you I bought think, him. Think yeah, you did. You did. Yes. 81 million, million pounds. Yeah. Kenju Paez has grown into a fantastic player on that left-hand side. Uh, Darvic that they picked up from Barcelona. He's there as well. Obviously, Turan Barella. Caicedo is phenomenal now, so don't have to worry about that position for a while. Incampe, which is another position that you bought, of course, next to Levi Kolwo, who's developed quite nicely. Next to the Ukrainian centre-back, who turned me down two seasons in a <laughs> row. So I came after him and said, he has 19 for pace. He's quick. That is rapid. Uh, 22 years of age as talking well. We've got Reece James is rapid as well. you got James is quick as well, isn't he? Yeah, he's, he's all right. He's not bad. Uh, he's a little bit old now. Yeah. He's 31. So his pace has dropped down to 14. And then, of course, Diogo Costa. Best keeper, I reckon, on the, on the game. Yeah, so we've got a couple of like good backup options as well. This man looks quite nice if we did play a, a number 10. We don't. I'm training, him, I'm training him to play on the right-hand side. But he's not bad as a backup striker, really. Uh, Lynch, again, is a good centre-back backup option. Tifi's a good CDM. We've just got a, a player in each position there, which is, is doing okay for us. Now, uh, fixture-wise for us, we have played a few games. Now, there's also a game that's coming up next against Liverpool, who offered Dowd a job. Yeah, they did, yeah. And they, we still they, don't know where Dowd's gone yet. They come hunting for me. Yeah, they so, asked yeah. for you for, a, for an interview, but you, did, you declined it. Yeah. You had business elsewhere, and they took on Zinedine Zidane. Ooh, interesting. Now, the four games that I've played, Burnley 3-0, West Ham 2-1, Arsenal smashed them 5-0. And when this came up, I said, whoever's the Arsenal manager, they should be sacked for that bad performance. It's Pep Guardiola. So I don't know how long he's been there. He's been there since 2026. This is his fifth year. So, I mean... 5-0, getting absolutely tonked. And then Andrew Revan. Uh, <laughs> Pull you back down the girl. Yeah, so um, Benoit Badiashile, former Chelsea player as well, scored two goals and we got a 92nd minute equaliser. So, the Europa League fixtures. Let's take a look and then we can finally see where Dan went. PSV Eindhoven, Rapid Vien, Toulouse, Carabag, Trabzonspor, Maccabee Haifa, Cluj and Udinese. Now, the Europa League, I, I genuinely think I stand a good chance. And if you look at the teams that are in this division now, we don't have to worry about teams coming down from no. the Champions League. It's just who is in here. And to be honest with you, there's no one there that should touch your team. Yeah, there? usually there's like one or two. You're like, yeah. oh, maybe I need to avoid them. But you look at it and it's Lazio. And then that might be it. Yeah. I can't see another team that realistically should challenge me. Cologne, of course, won the Bundesliga at some point, but they've dropped off since. They've got Marco Silva. They've got a couple of good players. Nowhere near what I would consider a contender. I should be winning this tournament. Absolutely. you should. You, yeah. This should be in the bag for you. Yeah, Lazio's my only really uh, contender there. Baldanzi is their star player, who is fantastic, worth over £200 million, but I still should be beating Lazio, I think. So I stand a very good chance. Yeah. Dad, finally, you had you you had applied for two jobs. I applied for two jobs, yeah. Applied for the Bayern Munich job and the Real Madrid job, and I got the Bayern Munich job. They offered it to me. Then I went to yeah. the interview, and they offered it to me. But, but I wanted the Real Madrid job more, didn't I? So I had to delay the yes, decision because yes. they they offered me the job before I even had the interview for the Real Madrid job. 
So I had to delay it with fingers crossed and hoping that the interview would come up. And then? And then the interview did come up. And you moved to Real Madrid. <laughs> I had to take that chance tonight. You were just riding my coattails. Yeah. I just had to take it. I mean, that team was so good, it gives me the chance of winning the Champions League and doing whatever I can. There's only two teams you guarantee you're going to win the league in Spain. Yeah. Barcelona and Real Madrid, virtually. Yeah, you, you have to build up other teams. Yes, you have to build them up. And then those two teams have bad seasons, yeah. which doesn't happen very often. So I had to take a chance and wait for this job. It was there. Zidane was the favourite to get it, wasn't he? Yeah. It was there to be taken. So I just waited for it to see if it came up. Got the interview. Got it. Yeah. So now I've just got to go in and do what I can do, and hopefully, I'm I'm an, I'm hoping really I could do it all in one season. But I mean, yeah, <laughs> you could win the league, the win the cup, and Champions know, yeah. League in one I'm, goal. They are good enough to do that. Yeah, yeah. proved that. It's, they are definitely good enough to do that. There's only Barcelona's going to stop me from winning the 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 league. I feel, and obviously the 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 Cup of the Ray. So the Champions League is on the day, really. I think. Yeah, you absolutely. Uh, so you had about £100 million worth of players. You established that there was one position you wanted to to change, to in, yeah. improve. Well, that was mainly because of the, the tactic I wanted to play. Yeah. I wanted to play a very attacking tactic. I decided that during the week when I've been thinking about it, because obviously I knew you were going to hand your notice in type of thing. So I've been thinking about a tactic I could play with Real Madrid, and I just thought, no, bugger it. I'm going to go full out attack, and you play one striker. So I've decided to play two strikers with a shadow striker as well. So I needed another striker. Yeah. And you picked up this man, which was all of your budget in yeah. one go. You yeah. were like the spawniest man ever <laughs> because he was uh, rated as the highest player from your scouts. Yeah. Marcel, who came from Villarreal on a £115 million release clause. He got 23 goals last season in La Liga. He is pretty special. If, I think it finishes off that team. Yeah. With the tactic that I'm playing. Yeah. I so. mean, the 14 pace and acceleration, it, that's still good. 14 is obviously yeah. a very good number. Yeah. But that is like the only thing you go, oh, that's a shame. Yeah. Because the rest of him, 18 for anticipation, 19 composure, 18 off the ball. He's got 15 strength. Yeah. He can use both feet. He's a good finisher, good first touch, good pass of the ball, work rate, determination's all right. It's all there, isn't it? Bloody and he's only, hell. And he's only 22. Yeah, he's only 22 as well. He's already so got that, caps. He's a buy for them, really. Yeah, yeah. Madrid, so. Yeah, it's, it, it would make sense in a, in a real life situation yeah, that he would yeah. go there. So, uh, yeah, and so far, he's got one goal and two assists, which is amazing. No. Not compared to the. But then I think he's been helping the other striker that was already there because when we go on to who has scored the goals, Dusan Vlahovic has been scoring a lot of goals for you. So, your best pick 11, this is the tactic that you are running. Talk to me about it and your best pick well, 11. Like, like I said, I, I wanted to go more attacking, so I've decided who was my best wingers because I knew I was going to do a winger, and it's obviously Finish Junior. Junior, yeah. So, I've left him as the winger, then I've gone for my two strikers and my shadow striker. I was open to play Bellingham at a shadow striker, wasn't I? Yeah. But when we put in the best 11, it dropped Bellingham and put Drezzo in. And I forgot about Drezzo being in the team. Yeah. So remembering what happened with you playing Bellingham in that same position last season, he scored that amount of goals. Yeah. It made sense to keep it as it was. I mean, yeah, last season he got 26 and 15, 25 and 15 the season before yeah. that. I mean, he's had five assists and just, and just and scored one, which was in the last game where we just played before. Yeah. We're ready to go, isn't it? So, so he does, he just score and create so many opportunities yeah. from that centre midfield on attack. Uh, are you afraid of support roles? Uh, looking at that, you pointed out to me, I obviously am, and I, but I'm, if you look at it, they're nearly. I'm, I, I said to you I wanted to play a very attacking side. So every player that I feel that needs to be attacking is attacking. I'm not interested in getting back in and helping out. Let's just go. I've got, I've got uh, the ball winner in defence, so he'll, he'll help the defence out, and I'll just help the, the, the defence do the, their job that they're paid to do. Right, okay. Let the forwards get in and bang their goals in. All right. Uh, and so far, they have definitely done that. Yeah. You have won all five games so far this season. Not convincingly in some, but some others, well, yes. I beat the best team in the world 4 1, so that must have been convincing. Me. Oh, I'm glad you agree. Uh, they were the Europa League winners, as mentioned, which meant you played them in the UEFA Super Cup and defeated them 4 1. Real Zaragoza was the first game of the season 3 1, which was quite funny because they had Real and a white kit, and we thought you lost the first yeah. game of the season <laughs> straight away. We were like, oh, no, you're the way team. Uh, Villarreal, you beat them 5-1 after stealing their best player yeah. and he scored against yeah. them as well. It's just to rub it in. Albacete, only 2-0, which is like... Ooh. 
It's alright, it's away though. Yeah, and then our favourite Spanish team, Mallorca, 5 2. And that's where Bellingham was the start of scoring now. So yeah. He's up and running as well now. So I'm Vlavic with a hat trick. He has got a lot. Well, yeah. yeah, he's got six goals so far in the yeah. four appearances. Only 28 last season. So. Yeah, he's already on course to defeat that. Your Champions League fixtures, because that is the competition that you're aiming for this season. Yeah. Uh, Zinedine Zidane's Liverpool, of course. Stuttgart, Salzburg, Olympiacos. Then, of course, you've got Arsenal, Pep Guardiola, yeah. Marseille, Apoel, and then and Tom. who? I've never heard of them. <laughs> Xavi's Tottenham. Javi, is eh? also there. I mean, I'm just hoping I am. I'm not playing too attacking. Yeah. Because, like I said, your team is definitely European competition uh, tactics. Yeah. Mine's to win the league tactics. Yeah. So I'm just hoping I'm not playing too attacking. But you've got time on your hands, really, That's right, with yeah. this, I mean, because I, none I'm of these get... players are like late thirties. No. I, I mean, I can easily change that tactic next season if I do the double. Yeah. And not have to worry about that at all. Yeah. Because in a Milan job, you knew you had. You didn't have a lot of time. Well, not you had that players league. leaving. They're two best players Barella, leaving. Yeah, and Martinez. Yeah. Uh, so you knew you didn't really have a lot of time. I mean, if you have a look at the Inter Milan side now, they they took over by Thomas Tuchel, which was the PSG manager, which is quite funny anyway. Uh, they still got obviously Hendrik and stuff like that. But did Lautaro Martinez leave? He might have gone as well. We have to have a look to be fair because he was your best striker while you were there, yeah. and he's gone to PSG. Yeah. Well, he said he was going to go, didn't he? Yeah. He said that was his last season to me yeah. when I was there. So so he went to PSG on a free after 27 goal contribution, or 27 goals last season, 29 the season before that, two years that, that you were there. That was two seasons I was there, yeah. So. yeah. so yeah, I think it was a good move for you. Annoyingly, that it, it obviously takes in my shadow of uh, the Real Madrid job, but that is the glory hunter. You were ready to leave when That's I right, was yeah. gone. I mean, I, it, just, it, it was just convenient that each time you've left, like left PSG and I've left Inter Milan, both, time, both times you were leaving 18 that I've needed to take away. Yeah, yeah. So I've just slotted back into into the really. Yeah. So and sometimes you just need a little bit of luck. Oh yeah. And I've got it at the moment. I think it makes up for the two times I've tried screwing you over. Yeah, I, I must yeah. be honest. But there we go. <laughs> I mean, you had the luck the very first year, didn't you? When you won, when you done the German. League. That wasn't luck, my friend. That uh, was skill. Come on. That was absolute skill. <laughs> I had luck when you when the PSG thought? manager came out. Yeah. That was luck. Yeah. That was also absolutely hilarious. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Let's simulate this then. This is a night season and see what happens during this season because now we're at new clubs. Don't think we're going to be leaving them anytime soon, but we've got a couple of competitions that we've got our eye on and potentially we could cross off in this episode. Dad and his new Real Madrid side settled very well at the start of the season with his old mate Buonani continuing to work well in Dad's system as well as the new signing Marcel who benefited with some goals. And they absolutely destroyed Barcelona in the first El Clasico of the season, 5-1. By Christmas, they were walking away with the La Liga title already, 8 points clear. As well as being unbeaten in the Champions League. Meanwhile, back in England, I was focused on the Europa League run, putting away teams of ease. Losing only one game in the whole of the league phase, topping that league which included an 11-0 away win, which was very impressive. We were even doing well in the Premier League with an outside chance there as well. But as each round of the Europa League came, we look more and more certain to win it. All the way to the final versus Schalke. However, my dad was on a similar path with this Real Madrid team. The Real Madrid team I won the Champions League with last season. But let's check in before the finals because they weren't the only competitions we were thriving in. Ooh, second in the league on the same points. That's unlucky. But then you didn't need the, the, um, the Premier League, did you? So no. That's still good because you need you need to be on a winning sort of run, really, don't you? Yeah, you need to keep the job. Yeah, of course. So obviously taking them from sixth to second on the same points is not too bad at all. And no. league wise, I'm happy with that. Yeah, like, definitely. That's, yeah, you got to be. That's really good. Yeah, considering how good Man City's team still is on the same like well we had the best record on the league they just scored more goals yeah or conceded less in fact uh, but profile of the league Erlen Haaland got 27 and Ferguson got 22 yeah all right that's they, why they, they came deserved first. it yeah. yeah absolutely uh however the two competitions that I needed to win and we've come back early because I am in the final of the Europa League now let's not talk about the fact that Tottenham Hotspur knocked me out of the semi-final <laughs> 1-0, annoyingly. That's really oh, frustrating. they've done me a big favour there. So, yeah, I mean, I was knocking out teams quite easily. There's Everton 3-2 there, 4-0 against Millwall in the, in the third round, whatever. So, I mean, yeah, that was great. So I have got the Europa League to play. 
So we're going to see how we I mean, get really, on with the team that you've got. That's where we expected you to be, isn't it? Yeah, in definitely. the final. So. Uh, and I'll be really annoyed if I don't win this. I mean, 100%. I lost one in the league there to Cluj, but I probably had already qualified at that I'm point. Look at the goals you scored. Yeah, <laughs> stupid amount. Goal difference is plus thirty. My um, round of sixteen knocked out Fenerbahce. Only just three two as well. It was God, a close yeah. one. Quarter final five nil against Joe Gordon's, and then in the semi final. Uh, I knocked out Alaves, so I had an easy run as well. But let's be fair, like that wasn't a very difficult run. Lazio were nowhere to be seen there. The only team I said would actually uh, cause me a little bit of trouble, yeah. who actually won it three years ago, by the way. They won it back then uh, in 2029. So, yeah, I've got Schalke to play, but also, Dad, you won the league. 106 points. You've got a game to play, but yeah. you are already crowned champions you have crowned one and lost one a long time ago because yeah. you're 25 points clear I mean, of Barcelona with the team that I got I had it had to be didn't it yeah I noticed Barcelona started dropping points quite early so I knew I was in yeah in quite comfortable as well really uh, lost to Bilbao drew to Valencia yeah. I was your giving, goal difference of 102 I was giving Barcelona Amarins yeah. as well so 102 for the goal difference uh, you conceded only 27 scored 129 so far Profile, Dusan Vlahovic with 33. You've yeah, got the top brilliant. three for average rating. Jude Bellingham, most assists. We knew that was going to happen to me, so... Yeah, can't get the goals of Jude Bellingham, though, can you? No, I, that's all right. I still won the Liga, so I'm happy. <laughs> How did you in the other competitions, though? Dad also has a cup final. Chuffed the bits with that, but gutted with the um, Copa de Rey. Yeah, quarter lost, final lost against on, Valencia. Lost on penalties. And I had them, and I lost that game. And about two games later, I beat them 6-0. Yeah. So absolutely gutted. But I mean, Barcelona. Oh, I mean, they're, oh, they're still there, Barcelona. I thought they'd got knocked out of that. So, so they might. Are they in the final? They lost in the final to Valencia. Oh. You lost to the winners. Yeah. So there we go. Oh well, can't be helped. However, this is, this is the main one. If I can get this one in the bag, then I can concentrate on one trophy next season. So that's three finals in a row for Real Madrid. Yeah. Because I got there the season before, but yeah. didn't quite win it. Uh, I mean, I, I know this is going to be an hard game as well because Milan didn't they do me for this? For the for in, yeah against Inter. Inter yeah yeah they were very good Milan's yeah. team is is absolutely awesome they still yeah. got Pioli there they got Javi Guerra from Valencia's youth academy he's phenomenal what yeah. a midfielder they got some cracking players there so that's going to be a really difficult game for you yeah but first it's the Europa League and I have picked my lineup. And this is it. Now, I am taking some risks. I've got some players who are a little bit injured, but I'd rather just play my best team rather than that uh, and play some different types of players that haven't necessarily performed as well as these guys on the pitch who probably got me to the final. So, without further ado, let's see whether I can win the Europa League and then we'll come back and see what Dad does in the Champions League final. So, yes, my Chelsea team line up in the 4-3-3. That has given us a very respectful season so far to get to the final against Schalke, a team we know very little about, really. But the Europa League is arguably the hardest competition to win in Glory Hunter. It requires the right place with right time managerial movements and I have given myself a perfect opportunity this season with Chelsea to nail it in the first attempt. But nil-nil until midway through the second half and Leopold is through for Schalke and makes no mistake giving them the lead. I thought it was over until the 89th minute where we stay patient in the build-up and with a bit of luck too, Ali Duckett was through and equalised much to my relief. However, immediately from the kickoff, where we are at our most vulnerable to score, Schalke find an opening and completely crush our momentum, scoring a second. And the final whistle blows. The score is Chelsea 1, Schalke 2, and our Europa League dreams are over for this season. The perfect plan just missed the perfect execution. Doing everything right all the way to the final and losing due to a quick lapse in concentration from kickoff. Absolutely gutted. Well, that was a wasted chance. I can't believe you lost it. He was all over them, really. I battered them. Yeah. I had the best chances. They just caught me on the break a couple of times. Yeah. Uh, that was heartbreaking as well. Yeah, 90 yeah. minute after equalising the 90th. Good substitution. That bringing him on and he's got the goal for you. Get you back in the game. But... Yeah. Oh, that's so annoying because now, obviously, I need to find a better... I need to find a different club if I want to win the Europa League. Yeah, you're not going to be in it, are you? No. You're in the Champions League now. In the Champions League next season. Ooh. And I'm only in England just to win the FA Cup. Yeah. <laughs> So I've only got like to pin my hopes on one thing next yeah. year, which is annoying. And that is definitely a big chance wasted. This However, is where the game gets interesting though, isn't it? It mate? does, yeah. Because yeah. if we start to struggle now, it's going to be one of those things. Uh, Dad, 
it is time for the Champions League yep. final against AC Milan. Your first Champions League final, and you're without Vinicius Junior. Yeah, so I mean, you've changed the tactic because well, I just it. changed. I didn't want to change anything else. I, I knew I had another good winger for the opposite side, so that's what I've done. I just changed wingers from the opposite side. Yeah, this guy's brilliant to come back into the team. Oh yeah, Bernani's so, absolutely yeah. incredible. So I'm just hoping that one change really, and I've changed my left back more in, as an attacking. Uh, left back now because obviously he's got a lot of space to run into yeah compared to last yeah. tactic which would have been that yeah. yeah so yeah I'm hoping that's what it is I mean I'm lucky you had a lot of um, players playing that weren't just quite there weren't you yeah you, you've been alright yeah I'm, I'm not too bad at that really so I'm just hoping this will be a good enough team to win it it's really annoying the Champions League final you get like a week and a half's rest yeah Whereas I, I, I didn't. I had to play like four days after. Yeah. So, yeah, a lot of my players were struggling, which is my excuse. That's the excuse I'm going to use. All right, Dad, Champions League final. Let's see if you can I'm add nervous. that to your glory hunter cabinet. I've got to get this one in the bag. I've got yeah. one trophy in there. I've got to get this one in the bag now. Let's see. Dad's taking a slight risk, mirroring his formation and switching wings. And that could either be genius or foolish. And there's only one way to find out. Because this Real Madrid team is amazing. It was the last two seasons when I was in charge and we reached the final both seasons as well. And this is Dad's huge opportunity to get his hands on that Champions League. And it started so well when a player was brought down for a penalty in just the fourth minute of the match for Real Madrid. With top scorer Vlavic to take and he missed. But Dad was sweating for a very short period of time because Vlavic actually scored from a corner just 15 minutes later. And then he went and doubled Real Madrid's lead 10 minutes after that from an unbelievable assist by Jude Bellingham in the heart of the midfield. And right on the stroke of half time from another corner, Jude Bellingham stepped up to score himself and make it 3-0. AC Milan had no response in the second half, only managing to hit the crossbar. And for the second season in a row, but with a different manager in charge, Real Madrid lift the Champions League trophy, earning Dad the big one to add to his glory hunter cabinet on his quest to catch me up and complete it first. Cracking win. Easy one, really, at the end yeah. of the day. I mean, they, it took them to the 44th minute before they even had a shot and go, so comfortable win, even though we missed a penalty in the first couple of minutes, so pleased with that. I think it's because they had to take off their striker in the 14th that, minute. That helped as well, yeah, definitely, yeah. You, like I've had a little bit of luck on the way again. Yeah, so. he scored a few goals from yeah. this season, 16 and 33, Lorenzo Colombo. Uh, and you missed a penalty in the fourth minute as yeah. well. We were like, oh, what's going to happen? You'd have had a hat-trick if he'd scored that yeah. as well. But he yeah. got the job done yeah. in the Champions League final. Congratulations, Dad. That's a good trophy to add yeah. to your cabinet. Two, in fact, yeah. that you've added this season alone. Just missed out on the one that I, the other one I really needed. So I'll be staying. Yeah, I've you got will to be. Stay. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it'd be silly to leave okay. Real Madrid yeah, at I this point. I've just got to get that job done, and I say, yeah. you got to get a job, job done, and you for the yeah, FA Cup. But do I go anywhere? Oh. That's <laughs> the question. I don't know. I, I think the only way I would go is if a job in Italy came up which is Europa League. Yeah, and it's a good team. And it's a good team. Yeah. But I think at the same time, I am a little bit silly if I do decide to go. You've got to stay in England to do the FA Cup, haven't you? I have to, and yeah, I've got to do saying, it at some point. You lose one game and you, you, that's, just, that's that season yeah. finished, isn't it? Yeah. That's the problem, isn't it? I got to the semi-final last time. I've got a good enough team to get there. Oh, a little 100%. bit of money I think I've got left. Uh, well, given to me in the chance, but oh, maybe not. I've got a little bit yeah. of money. I can move maneuver that around £66 million. Pound. For the team I've got, added on to that, maybe a couple of sales as well. Yeah. I could definitely do it. Yeah, I think you could. But congratulations, Dad. Let's add the two trophies to your glory, Hunter Cabin. I'm absolutely gutted that my Chelsea side couldn't quite get that Europa League trophy, but I still need to finish England and win that FA Cup. But a congratulations is in order to Omega Dad after a fairly successful season, and he picks up the La Liga trophy and, of course, the Champions League. Putting him level on trophies won so far, and you might say... He is now in the driving seat. Just the one noticeable job came up during the summer of season number 10 at AC Milan, and I was tempted. But I still have unfinished business here in England, and I continue to improve my Chelsea side with some Brazilian flair. While my dad was buying Arsenal players again. I swear he's trying to tell us something. AC Milan came in and offered me an interview, which I declined. And I went and signed some more of dad's old friends while the Juventus job also popped up. Meanwhile, dad signed the best centre-back in the world for 150 million as well as rejecting huge bids from Manchester City for his player dressing. There were more jobs at the end of July appearing, including the Napoli job. 
and Man City kept offering Dad more and more money for Dressel. Dad, considering you won the Champions League last year, you're selling a lot of players. Yeah, I'll just get rid of the fringe players that weren't going to get into my first team, yeah. uh, just, just to generate a bit of money. And I wanted to change a little bit of a formation, so I might have got rid of a couple of players because I knew I wasn't going to use them. Yeah, so there's a couple of midfielders that I've left, Valverde being one of them, Illich being the backup centre midfielder as well, Ratkoff, which was the striker I bought in the first season at Real Madrid, Suma, which was like a backup again, Inacio, the centre-back that I bought but yeah. didn't actually get much game time, as well as Jared Branthwaite, which everybody yeah. laughed at. We saw no, get rid of them. sold them to your old friend's niece. Yeah. You brought in some players, and you're going to laugh at this. So, William Pacho joined Dad. Yeah. £48 million pound from Tottenham. Yeah. Good player, isn't he? All right, all right. <laughs> well, I made a mistake. I've put too many EU players, didn't I? Non-EU players. Non-EU players. I didn't realise I was doing it until I bought Ramsey. And so... Rams, Ramsdale. 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 Pacho. Romero was another one. Yeah. Obviously, you already had Bellingham, which meant you had to sell Pacho. I didn't have to sell him. The month after. I didn't have to sell him, but no. I'm not going to use him for the season. I just got rid of him to generate a little bit more money because when I, that I didn't have enough money to buy a couple of squad players I wanted to get in. Didn't I? Yeah. So. so he left the club, thirteen million pounds less than what you paid for him. He just didn't. He didn't even move two months. <laughs> no. So he's gone to AC Milan. Christian Romero joined from Newcastle, yeah. thirty-nine million pound. I think it's just a good, solid centre back for himself. Yeah. I mean, he, he'll probably be a reserve. He, he might get in the team now and again. So. And then Aaron Ramsdale, £7 million. Well, I, I was surprised this one came up for Selbridge really, at that price. That's, I mean, I, I think I got him first and then sold my reserve keeper. I just thought, well, I'll get him in. He'll either be my first keeper or my reserve keeper. But for, for that amount of money, it's just... That was, that was a bargain, I think. All right, okay. And then you've got Manuel Souza, which I agree is probably the best centre-back well, in the world on this game. I found him, didn't I? Then I, I, then I had sort of trying to generate money to buy him, didn't I? Yeah. So that's why I saw quite a few players that you'd think, why did he sell him? Why did he sell him? I was trying to get this guy. He is fantastic. Yeah, so once I had enough money in the in the kitty to buy him, then I, I just chucked the money out of there and made sure I got him. Yeah, so and 22 is, years of age, I mean, he was at Liverpool for a couple of seasons, £148 million. Pounds. Yeah. It's a lot of money, but he is absolutely yeah. phenomenal. I mean, for 22, he, he, I don't think anybody's going to buy him off Real Madrid for the money that he's going to be worth now is it so no. he's going to be there for a while yeah I think that's yeah. a good sign and, and I'm hoping that really that's just made my defence absolutely solid yeah brought in Carboni from uh, well not from your old team he actually left your old team and went to Milan yeah. for 37 you bought him for 45 he didn't actually play that much last season he was actually my last one of my last buys wasn't he because I had money left and I thought I've got yeah. to buy some squad players just to fill in the gaps of, of reserves and he actually went straight into my team didn't he yeah so, and he's done out of the well he's played three yeah. games and got an average rating of 10 can't beat that, can class. <laughs> so he's been really good for you. Forty-five million pound looks like it's well spent. Uh, then these are a couple of backup players. Although Udogi, you kind of needed because Nuno Mendes was injured. Yeah, uh, he's joined you for win. twenty-eight million. I think pound. got forty-five minutes left, and he signed on it. Yeah. So. so that was it. And then Missouri, who's on the right back side, because uh, you didn't have a back backup right back after selling him for twenty-seven million. Yeah. So there's the players in. Now, Dad, you alluded to changing the tactic. Yeah. You've gone for this. Yeah. I've just, I've just sort of like bunched it all in and made it really really tight now so I'm because I'm really I'm the same as you really I'm only going for one one cup, the cup. really yeah, yeah yeah so I've got to try and make it a really solid team and I think they are so hopefully yeah. it's good enough to go all the way yeah it's a fantastic team it's still weird how Gonzalez goes in at centre back but he is phenomenal yeah and yeah I think you know I mean we're level on level on trophies now yeah that's how close it is. You only need four each to complete Glory Hunter as we go into the season number 10. So it's quite close. And you've got a phenomenal team here to probably win the Copa del Rey within at least this season, maybe even next. I'm just praying I get it done this season so yeah. I can get get away from, from um, Spain. And I've got to concentrate on Germany then. And I... Yeah, and that's your final country. Yeah. And so, if you find a team in Europa League... That's what I'm praying that happens, really. I'm screwed, really. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I could do with Bayern Munich having a bad season. Though. Yeah, because I'd probably say the Bundesliga is a lot easier to win yeah. than the Serie A. 
Mine. That's the trouble I'm in right now. Would Bayern Munich take me on after offering me the job and turning them and down? And then turning down, yeah, probably not. <laughs> so then, Chelsea, let's have a look to see what I have done. Now, you might see some familiar faces as well. First signing, though, was Esteval for 19 million. This is a great signing. He's only going to be a backup, funny enough, but we've got some we've got some quality players in that position already. Uh, I did sell a couple of players as well. You can see another £172 million I actually sold. Kendry Paez for up to 92 to Barcelona. I'm trying to get them better. Do you see what I'm trying to do here? Selling players to Barcelona because also Latifi went there as well for 36.5. I mean, he's not amazing, but he's gone there anyway. Also an Oysen Lynch as well, 26 million pounds. We've got Gilherm going for 30. So I built up a nice little transfer budget and I bought Letaro Martinez. He did so good for dad. He's 35. I did spend 18 million pounds, but he got 12 goals that season. Yet to score one in the Premier League. <laughs> but he is still good. He's fantastic. Yeah, he is good, yeah. uh, 20 natural fitness. I'm hoping he can come good. Maybe towards the end of the season when we have some cup games. Aaron Hickey for £49 million. Just fills in both sides, which I think is perfect. Uh, we've got like Reese James, who's quite old now. So Aaron Hickey's a good backup there. Cossio from Fulham, £85 million. And I think in my starting 11, best 11, he's on the bench. Uh, but he is fantastic. He's Almost both footed as well. He plays on the right or up front, mainly up front. So he's a good backup for both positions, really. Yeah. Uh, I quite like him. He is good. He's actually played quite well for me, too. I think in the first couple of games, he's only actually started one game. But he's got two goals and a player of the match. So good signing. Martinov from Bayern Munich, £24 million. Pounder. Just needed somebody who can fill in there at the back in two different positions. Bit of a squad player, his dad likes him. Uh, and Thomas Araujo, exactly the same. Plays at centre back. I needed a backup centre back. Uh, and he is perfect for that role. So, my tactic I've changed too. I've gone more. I've took out the left-hand side there. And I've put a player in the middle. Because we have Ali Duckett. Who was fantastic last season. When we did play him. We needed to play him a little bit more. So, he goes in that centre attack midfield role. He's phenomenal in that role. The uh, guy got you back into the Champions League final, wasn't he? He was, wasn't it? Well, the Europa, Europa League, League final. final. Don't yeah. bring that up. It's too soon. It's too soon. So, that's when I go starting at 11. He does stay in there, which did surprise me. Ferguson and Martinez up front. Darvic on the right-hand side. He's still quality. Still really good for me. Only 25 as well. Uh, Turam is kind of the heartbeat of my midfield. He's been already firing in some goals. And Caicedo solidifies things up at the back there. I need that FA Cup though. And I'm wondering maybe I maybe I turn to balance as a mentality going forward this season. That could be an option that I actually think I'm going to go for. Uh, going forward because at the start of the season we'll have a look at my schedule first I have dropped points to Leeds United now I've beat Newcastle easy 2-1 Leicester 4-0 Arsenal 2-0 knocked out of the EFL Cup but that's not a bad thing whatsoever of course I am in the Champions League although I've already won it we both have now I'm still in the competition I still need to do well to keep my job but if you know, there's there's no way of me really getting in the Europa League. That's the trouble now. No. With the new format, you yeah. can't get into Europa League from playing it's poor be in a Europe. Position. You've got to do it through league qualification. It makes it so much harder. That was my big missed opportunity. If I won that last season, oh, I think it's game it. over. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah, not a bad season, not a bad uh, run in the Champions League there, Dad. You started extremely well as well, and you just drew in the first. El Clasico of yeah. the season to they Barcelona. They scored at the last minute, didn't they? Yeah, 95 minutes, yeah. and look who scored. <laughs> <laughs> the sabotage. Everybody loves it. I am, of course. I'm still happy with that because I'm scoring a lot of goals. So. Yeah. Uh, you conceded by Sevilla Athletic Bilbao, but both of the games were already won. Yeah. 5-0 uh, at the start of the season from Villarreal. Let's have a look at your Champions League to see if, well, Real Madrid can get to the fourth Champions League final in a row and maybe win it three times in a row. Uh, Liverpool Inter, Olympiacos, Bayern Munich, Arsenal. There's some tough teams in yeah, there. Yeah, definitely, yeah. Uh, but there we go. Right, let's see how this season gets on. We've got two competitions we are really gunning for. And both of us are desperate to do it first. No surprise that Dab was dominating Spain. He had the top three scorers in the league by the turn of the new year. And Jude Bellingham just won his third Ballon d'Or in a row. I was still chugging along too in the league and Champions League as the FA Cup started. But in the fourth round, I was drawn against Newcastle, who had one of the best strikers in the world. And Dad scraped through the Copa del Rey semi-final, 11-1 on aggregate. And it's looking like an El Clasico final for him. And speaking of finals, I could be meeting my dad in the biggest one of the year. Dad, you have completed Spain. Yep, job done. That's the big boys as well, Copa Barcelona. Yeah.
Better, best way to do it. Semi-final, you won 11-1 against yeah. Sevilla. Yeah. So, <laughs> so it was close, wasn't it? It was a close one getting yeah. to the final. It's annoying that you didn't face them any earlier, but the draw was in your favour. Yeah. And you beat them 1-0 in that Copa del Rey final. So you've now completed Spain. Yeah. That's Obviously, same. you won the league already. Yeah. Marcel was the, the, the only goal scorer, the striker you won, you scored, you bought last season, sorry. So, congratulations. Thank you very much. I'll be doing a press conference in a minute just to announce that I will be leaving at the end of the season. Okay, you're right. All right. Uh, let's see, though, whether I won the FA Cup. I was eliminated 4 0 in the fourth round by Newcastle. By my <laughs> old club, <laughs> Newcastle. <laughs> Now, they have some unbelievable players. Yeah. We've seen one of their players before and both tried to buy him and he wasn't coming because no. we didn't have the money that they want for him. I mean, Oscar Rada has to be one of the best players I've ever seen come through um, as a youngster and he's still really good now. £1.5 million pound they paid for him. That is class and he scored a couple of goals against me in that FA Cup fourth round so i haven't completed england yet i'm still here but i do have some things to celebrate because i won the premier league this season well for a second time so it goes to show you had a good enough team to win the fa cup really, didn't it? yeah i think it's you one took, of those took things city all the way yeah i think it's one of those things again my maybe my formation or my uh tactic is like we said one of those tactics which is good in a league yeah not very good for the cups unfortunately no because uh, that one game, one game can cost you yeah. in the FA Cup, and that's the problem. Even in the Champions League, you've got a second game to try and claw it back. <laughs> Whereas in the league, you know, you've got loads of games to do that. And I won by two points eventually. I drew one less game than Manchester City and one more. Uh, 89 points. I will take that. Evan Ferguson with 19 goals. So I've had a great season. Dad, did you win the league? You did indeed. A hundred and two points. hammered Barcelona. Yeah. Not just points to goal average as well. Look at the goal average. So I was just banging goals in for fun. But when you look at the stats, so you wouldn't think I was. No. <laughs> no, I mean, Dusan Vlavic was only there with 22 goals. You had the highest average rate in all three of them, which yeah. doesn't surprise me. Even Nuno Mendes picked up, even though he had that injury at the yeah. start of the season for five months. And Jude Bellingham with the most assists. And of course, you had the second, well, the same amount as uh, Gregor Cabell in clean sheets. Yeah. So my, my tactic of trying to make Barcelona better didn't quite work. It no. didn't quite stop you. Yeah. So I'm going out with a bang, really, and I've won the league and I've won the cup. Yeah. Now, some would Job say there. going out of a bang would be even better if you want to treble, which means you'd have to win the Champions League. Yeah. And we've come back on the 28th of May, the day of the Champions League final, because today the Champions League final is to be played between both of our teams. <laughs> Absolutely brilliant. So we have to do it. <laughs> yeah, we have yeah. to do it. We're going to watch this live. It's going to be one of the only times we'll ever have the chance to do it. In the grand scheme of things of Glory Hunter, it means nothing. Nope. We both won it. This is just bragging rights. It's bragging rights. Yeah. That's right. So, I mean, let's have a look at our lineups and go to the final. My Chelsea team is almost at full strength, but still very much the underdog side here. And that's because Dad's Real Madrid team is outright scary. I'd like to think I can keep it close. But here we go. Here we go, Dad. Champions League final. There we are. Look, you can see the height difference. You're there. You <laughs> Almost in your stilts. And there, there's me and my big purple jacket. For the Champions League final. Remember, this is Real Madrid's fourth in a row. Yeah. Can they win it for the, the third, third time, time in a row? row. Uh, I think this might be Chelsea's first time in a long time. Okay, you've won the ball quite high at the pitch here. <clears throat> oh, I should have hit it. Oh, he's oh, through. Oh, penalty. Don't give a penalty <laughs> for that. No <laughs> way. But you keep the ball. Camavinga plays him again. Here's Bellingham. Get him, my son. Get in there. He don't miss from there, does he? I feel betrayed. It's like my old boys, you know? <laughs> they are complaining. It is going to be a I think. Is it? I'll, I'll be honest with you, he did look offside, I think. No, I don't, I don't think he through. is. I don't think he is. He's miles off. Oh, he's on top. He is miles off. Miles yeah. In off the crossbar. Oh, I mean, that's, that's 12 minutes, this is. 12 minutes. I mean, you've been battering. I don't expect to win this, I'll be honest, because you have been battering oh, people anyway. 63% as well, in possession. Corner. Get it out, Souza. Oh, right, Go okay. Ahead. Come on, Costa. One of the best goalkeepers in the world. Well, I think on the, on the game, I think feet. he's the best. Yeah. Plays it long. Is it a good ball? Evan Ferguson's decent in the air as well. Yeah, We've got a is. good knockdown there. 
Darvich to Ferguson. Can we cause an upset? Please. Evan Ferguson, the injured Reese James. I've decided not to drop him. I kept him in the team. Not for crosses like that. Here we go. On the break again. Oh, not again. Come on. Not Vinny Jr. Yes. Ooh, we oh, didn't like that. It's too much, though. It was too much. Coyote on the right. Here we go. Look at the caps in the middle. Look. Ooh. You got way too many players in there. Oh, oh my God. Good save. That was a good save. I don't know if he knew much about it, but he still managed to get old, get yeah. old of it. Well done. I mean, is that a goal disallowed uh, from this? Just slightly Ooh. offside. Your set piece. Yeah. Coach doing the business there. The linesman's flag spoiled your fun. Oh, on right. the edge. Coyote. Oh, my God. Good save again. Oh, off the bar. Oh, my God. We are running our luck. Dressel. Come oh, on, boy. Balls. Don't do that. Good tackle. Ali Duckett. Let's go. Half time. It is 1 0. Still in the game for now. I'm not going to make any changes. Are you going to make any changes? No. All right. Straight on to the second half we go. Right. Well, while it's the 75th minute now. Oh, it is actually a highlight as well. I was just going to make a substitute Ooh. to see if I could change the run of play. It's been very tight the second half. Nothing has happened whatsoever. Well not even a highlight. But I feel like, yes, Caicedo, let's go. Oh, that's a bit risky. Right, the counter-attack is on. We've got runners to ramp. That's, that's so poor. I think poor. James' injury pulled up then, didn't he? <laughs> that's so poor. We've won it back, though. Caicedo, here we go. Levi Kowo. The good thing is I've got defenders who are decent on the ball. To ramp. Oh, I don't like it when it goes all the way back to the goalkeeper, though, to start things off. We need to find an opportunity here. Find an open. Cossio, this highlight's been going on for a while. It makes me think that this is going to be it. There's Cossio. Have a pop. Oh, oh such good a good save. save. Such a good save. I need to make those changes now, I think. We'll go for the short corner. I don't think much is going to come of it, though. Ali Duckett. Oh, Cossio, he's well got played. an opening. Oh, he took too Should long. Should have had a shot. Took too long. Should have had a shot. Okay, I think I'm going to make it attacking. I need to. I need a goal. I've also brought on an old friend of yours, Dad. Do you yeah. remember Lataro Martinez? Well, he comes into the lineup now. Estevao as well. And Stukas for Reese James, who's been injured. And also played terrible. But just clear the ball. I don't need anything right now, please. And we just get the substitutes on. Ooh, waiting for the ball there. Could be a bad mistake. Kamavinga. It's it. Cuts inside. Oh, no worries. There. As soon as he made it onto his right, keep it, keep it just watched it. I was already he? thinking of what's happening next. Well, time has run out, and it is a victory for Omega Dad. Before a final, but I'll take it. I like the one 0 finals. That's good enough for me. Considering how well you've been battering teams, yeah. I'll take a one 0 loss if I'm honest, because that Real Madrid team is unbelievable. And this is your last game. Yeah. Last game as Real Madrid manager. There you are, look, crying, <laughs> <laughs> lots of tears, as probably Jude Bellingham lists the Champions I'll League come trophy. To Madrid and I won everything in one season. Yeah, won the treble, and I've got to stay at Chelsea, which will obviously cause somewhat, somewhat of a ruckus. Definitely, where yeah. whoever takes over your job, that might cause something yeah. else to happen. I mean, now we might as well check after this meaningless win for you in the Champions League. It means nothing to Glory Hunter, so. Bragging rights is nothing. You don't get a trophy for that. Although you do go ahead now in Glory Hunter because of the Copa del Rey win. Yeah, yeah. You need Germany. It's on my CV though, isn't it? How many trophies yes. have I won? So that's the thing, isn't it? You need Germany. Yeah. But there's no German clubs available no. for you to go to yet. This is where it gets pretty difficult because you could be waiting for ages. Well, I've got two choices, really. And I either go to Germany and then try and win everything there or I look for a team that's in the Europa League. Yeah. Now, Liverpool job is available. They finish in eighth place. That is not in Europa League, though. So you can't go there. You that's can't go over there and do that one. That is a pity. So that that's off the table. And neither of these positions are also in the Europa League. But whoever takes your job, that could be the deciding factor for where you go. So I've just got up with someone in Germany. Then. One of the top teams in Germany, the manager comes from there, really. That's it. I mean, let's have a look at the Bundesliga before we go. Doing there? Napoli, by the way, by OT Napoli, won the Serie A, which I'm kind of like, oh, that's a shame. But also, I needed to move when I needed to move. Bayern Munich won the title this season. Ooh. So they're, they're like, that job isn't coming up anytime soon. Didier Deschamps, who, if I remember correctly, 
when he took over, you said, well, that job will be available again <laughs> next season. <laughs> he's still there and he's winning trophies. You've got Dortmund finishing in second, so they ain't going anywhere either. Same as Leipzig in third. At the minute, your best hope is a Leverkusen job, something like that. But right now, nothing is coming up. So who's in the Europa League there? It's still Stuttgart, Stuttgart and, Wolfsburg. and Wolfsburg. So if one of those jobs comes up. The dream scenario really is for one of those to come up mid-season while they're in it. Yeah. But there we go. Let's find out when Dad resigns, what happens, who takes his job, and where he ends up next. Before that, though, it's trophy cabinet time, and unfortunately, it's another dud season for me at Chelsea. But Dad completes his venture in Spain and wins the Copa del Rey with just Germany and the Europa League remaining. It's time for Dad to leave Madrid and resign as manager, with only one destination left for Dad to travel to next. Meanwhile, Chelsea expand their stadium for me. And Liverpool have approached Dad, but he never fancied it. And former Liverpool manager Zinedine Zidane returned to Real Madrid to take Dad's job. While the Cologne manager Marco Rose left Germany to take the Liverpool role. Leaving a gap opened up that could be perfect for a make Dad, a club who as recent as six seasons ago won the Bundesliga, but finished in fourth last season. And of course, Dad is still on the hunt for that Europa League. But I was certain Dad would still apply for it. But instead, he left it. And soon enough, the Torino manager took the role. So, Dad, you are still without a job. Yeah, nothing's come up that I fancied at the moment, so I'm taking a chance and just sitting back and see what happens. Yeah, do you think you regret the Cologne job? Not I going was, for that. I was a bit like that. I thought I could make him into a good cup side. And, and, and I thought I'd just sit back and just see if anything else comes up. But... Before I could even think about it, it was gone, wasn't it? it was, yeah. It was one day, two days, and it was there, it was gone, wasn't it? So I didn't even have a chance to think about it, but I don't know. I'm like that with that team, really. I just, they, nothing sort of jumped out and grabbed me with that team. So uh, that was why I didn't take the job straight away. So yeah. I was, I'm hoping for something a little bit better, really. I mean, there's no jobs right now. Obviously, no. we've already just started the season, but it seemed like the Cologne manager, or the Cologne uh, vacancy was taken by a job just below that. And then yeah. they, that vacancy was taken just below that. And you yeah. ended up going all the way down. It was like Heidenheim. Yeah. And we're like, no, let's... No, I was hoping for something a little bit better, but yeah. it didn't happen, so... Okay, so with you looking for a job throughout the season, that led me to just have a free summer, to be honest, without having to worry about what Dad was doing and whether I needed to poach another manager's role or anything like that. So I just focused on this Chelsea team. Now, I didn't really do too much, if I'm honest. I brought in a couple of players, including an old friend of ours, Chua Many, yeah. for quite a good price really and he goes straight into my first team as well for just for 19 million pound good sign very good signing as well especially in terms of glory hunter i accidentally lost lataro martinez you say accidentally because he handed in a transfer request my board accepted a loan deal annoyingly right on deadline day but never mind <laughs> And then the only other signing I made was Mitchell or Michelle Sangare from Everton, who is a left back who can also play centre back, and his physicals are exceptional. Yeah. I think my only real weakness was that left back on play Hikampes there uh, quite often, and he does still go in the, the best lineup in that role. But I didn't have anybody who was like a good left back backup. Uh, so Sangare's there. We've got Aaron Hickey and Levi Carwell who can all play that role. Uh, so I've changed tactic. Uh, so if you look at the tactic now, it's more of a four triple two narrow formation. We had a player over here, if you remember rightly. I think I've brought down this player, this role here, mainly because I want it to be more secure for the cup. Yeah, that was my problem last season. As we mentioned before, one game you lose in the FA Cup and my season's season pretty finished. much a write-off. Yeah. So that's what I need to keep focusing on. I need to make sure I get a good cup run this season. I've got the best team in the league, as proven the last two seasons, I think. Champions League final and, of course, winning the Premier League. I just need to, obviously, win that FA Cup now. And I've got close, but no final even as of yet. So... Let's have a look. Start of the season. I have dropped points already to Bournemouth, but I've had some good results too. I've beaten Everton twice in the Community Shield 6 3 4 1 in the Premier League. To rue that game to Bournemouth, 82nd minute equaliser there from Andre Gomez, and a 2 0 win against Manchester United. And I knocked out Spurs on penalties in the Carabao Cup, who I've got next in the league as well. Now, Champions League, after getting to the final last season, by Munich, Porto, Stern Graz, Celta Vigo, Milan, Marseille, Antwerp and Rangers. I think I need to throw away the Bayern Munich game so that they're having a good season. Good momentum. Yeah. I don't want their manager to get sacked. <laughs> and then the rest of it, hopefully I can win and progress. 
and keep my job. Because that's the most important thing at the minute. I, I can't afford to get sacked. No. Because I still need to win the FA Cup. Yeah, that's right, yeah. I mean, at the minute, I've got the best team. You should be there or thereabouts to that team. Well, I, I mean, I think so. you're close to winning, winning the league, probably. Yeah, we, we won it last season. Yeah. Uh, and finished on the same points I mean, as the Ferguson's season before. already banging goals in for you as Five well, and so, five, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, we're all good for now. But, of course, Dad needs to keep coming back right about that November time when the jobs start coming up. I'm just just going to sit back and just have a little bit of a rest recharge your batteries and just wait and see what happens all right well while you do that <laughs> i'll win the fa cup that's fine let's see how what plays out in this season well for the first time in glory hunter is just one of us that's employed as we go through the season then but as always jobs started to creep up in october none that dad fancied though however in late november the bayer leverkusen job became available and this left dad very intrigued they haven't performed great during the Glory Hunter years, but they have some decent players, and Dad made sure to check the schedule to see that they are still in the DFB Pokal this season, which of course is a bonus. So as to not run the risk of missing this one, he applied immediately. And his run of unemployment has now ended. Right, so Dad, you've managed to get the Bayer Leverkusen job. Yep. Uh, they were in a bit of trouble. Yeah, they're down by the relegation. Uh, zone, so, uh, well, you put them in the relegation zone. I'll point. put them there eventually. <laughs> <laughs> but you did sell a couple of players. You've had a transfer window. You've yeah. made a bit of money as well. So Thiago went out £16 million. Pound. Yeah, you got a lot of money for that type yeah. of player. Armour went out for a million. He's not very good either. Just really good at mentals. And then Adam Hloscek, who starts off, of course, at oh, Leverkusen. Yeah. He was a striker slash left winger. Went out for 18 million yeah pounds. i was just trying to build a bit of a bit of a kitty to get more players in like the, the, one of their center backs was really really weak so i had to get a center back in one happy with the keeper you know what i'm like for keepers mm -hmm. so uh and i think i wanted a better striker in than what i actually had there yeah uh so you brought in the goalkeeper no you didn't actually you brought in the center back to begin with yeah. that is the goalkeeper in fact i got it wrong the egyptian ibrahim marbrook yeah good goalkeeper for three million pound he is better than the one that you had there previously hamad was a center back from gladback for 4.2 million pound both footed marks opponents tightly some good mentals in there yeah. and some good technicals too a syrian there's like a theme going on here you got an <laughs> egyptian a syrian then we got moscone mateo moscone from sassuolo for 17 million that's striker. my main striker, yeah. Coming in, he has got one goal in two games for you so far. And then finally, Sishuba from Toulouse. He spent a lot of money on him. Yeah, I did, yeah. I wanted, I, I, I wanted the formation I was changing. I was just mucking about with the first couple of games. So I've gone for, um, I wanted a shadow striker in, so I've got a good shadow striker in. So this guy was a buy. Yeah, so he's got one goal and one game for you so far yeah. in the Bundesliga. I mean, obviously, I was I was going because they were both they were in the cup. That was one of the things I did make sure that we were in it. Yeah. Um, and my next game was against um, Borussia uh, Dortmund. Borussia Dortmund. And um, so I was trying to sort up my team before I got to this. And as you can see, I, I beat Frankfurt, I beat Wolfsburg, two really good results, especially the Wolfsburg game. Yeah. And then I had injuries, and it was my main players that got me injuries. When it the, the strikers who I just bought as well, and I'd lost the cup game, so. A bit disappointed, but um, I'm building for next season now. Yep, uh, I think your main goal is to try and qualify for Europa League. Yeah, I mean, if I can, I'm, I'm eight points. Yeah, out of it at the moment, I think I am. So twenty points there. It is twenty eight. So yeah, yeah so you're eight. exactly eight points yeah. behind. So that's not a lot to make up. No. But, so um, with a good run, fourteen games though. I know. Yeah, but you never know. I, yeah. I could do it. I've got, I feel that I've got a good enough strike force to do it. Yeah. So it's whether the results just come away. You need a little bit of luck, and I need the results to go my way. Yeah. I mean, you started off when you took over. This was your first game against yeah. Mines. You lost 1 0 in the 94th minute uh, by Munich. I was never going to stand a chance in that game. I was still yeah. messing about with it. Schalke was a 1 1. You need yeah. to beat them. They were in the relegation zone. Yeah. And then you lost to Cologne. Which is obviously the team that I am denam about. So. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> now, while all this is going on. In the other league, I am currently in third place. Just two points behind Man City and Newcastle. But Evan Ferguson and Ali Duckett there were the top scorers. However, it's the FA Cup we are really focused on. And guess what? I've got a fourth round replay against Spurs at Spurs because I drew 1-1. In between winning 8-0 twice. <laughs> yeah. So that's really frustrating. But I beat Bristol Rovers in the third round. Then I come up against Spurs. So yeah, it's really annoying that I've got somebody who's quite difficult in this. Because I mean, 
in the Premier League, they aren't doing that well in 10th nope. place. Didn't you took me to a replay. And you beat them twice at the beginning of the season, didn't you? Yeah. So and You beat them in the Carabao in Cup. The Carabao League game. Cup. Mm. So I need, I need to make sure I go through that because else that's another season wasted because I ain't dropping down into Europa League. I'm already way too far ahead yeah. uh, to be even considering dropping down into the Europa League. I need to win the FA Cup this season so I can move on. I really, really do. Uh, as opposed to other jobs, I mean, now that obviously Dad's got a job, we don't really need to keep checking. Right now, there isn't any. So I don't think anything came up after I took that job, really, did it? No, nah, not really. They're usually quiet and over Christmas and January, yeah. and you should come back about February, March, and then May again. Yeah. So we'll have to see. Yeah. Can Dad push I've, for those Europa League spots? I've committed myself, so I've got to go for it now. Yep. Let's see what we can do with this by Leverkusen team. And let's see if I can win the FA Cup. The replay at Tottenham started great with us taking the lead. But Spurs pinned us back and the game went to extra time, where thankfully we managed to prevail. Things didn't get any easier, though, as we had Liverpool in the next round. Man City following them. And now in the semi-final is Arsenal. But this just felt like our year. We overcome every single tough team in our run in the FA Cup. Up, and in the semi-final, we batter Arsenal 4-0 at Wembley. With the final match to get our hands on the FA Cup trophy, being against my former team, Newcastle United. That 12th place finish. Yeah, I got knocked out of the cup as a knife. Um, so I only had to try and get back into that and I still finished eight points behind, nine points behind then. And that was only the European Conference yeah, League. Yeah, so, so. more than that. So I was a, just didn't get into it, did I really? So Nope. No one near, in fact. I'd, I'd have been happy if I'd been like eight for nine. So, so, so at least I was pushing for it and getting close. Yeah. But I didn't even come close, really, did I? The only good thing is I finished 16. higher than Cologne. So yeah. I was pleased with that. Yeah. Finishing higher than them. So I've, okay. saved, I've saved them. Put it that way. They were in the relegation zone. Yeah. They were right on top of it when I took over. I took them into it while I was trying to get sort my team out. And I took them away from it. So I, I you've got to look at it. It's, it's a good result because I've saved them from being Progress. relegated. Yeah. Uh, transfer budget wise you've only got £9 million next season right it's not a lot goals wise throughout the season Joe Regal got 12 Moscone got 9 in 14 so that's positive yeah um, you you know give him a full season see what you I mean, can that, do there that just tells you a big story straight away doesn't it I mean how often do I have teams where I've only my lead and goal scores only scored 12 goals yeah do you know exactly what I'll be doing now and winning <laughs> yeah exactly uh, but let's have a look because I had a run in the FA Cup and I got all the way to the final and I faced every single bloody hard team there. And in the final, I faced my old team, Newcastle. You did well to get there. And I lost. 3-0 in the final. <laughs> Another season. Another <laughs> bloody season at Chelsea. I must have thought, I thought you were going to do it. You come up against Man City and they were top of the league flying and I just thought, City's going to do you. And you beat them 1-0, I think it was. So, yeah, my run was insane. Oh yeah, I mean you you done you done the Spurs game. Spurs in the replay. replay. Fifth round, Liverpool three two. Quarter final, Man City one nil. Yeah. Semi final, Arsenal four nil. So you've done all the hard work getting there. Yeah, and what makes it worse? They they faced bloody Derby County getting oh. in the final. What makes it worse is the day before. <laughs> This is uh, the day before the cup final. Well, not the day before. The game before the cup was final. Was against Newcastle. Was against Newcastle and I won 6-5. I think it was like 4-0 up at halftime as well. Something like that. Something madly insane. But the games at uh, either the side of it. the last game of season, you won 5-0. 5-0. And Middlesbrough, 10-0. So you were scoring for fun until it comes to the final. And I lost 3-0. 16 21 goals in three games. Yeah. And you couldn't score in the final. I mean, I kind of blame Aaron Hickey there because I was only a goal down. And then Oscar Radha scored two once we had gone down yeah. to 10 men. Uh, and we all know, because we mentioned it before, he's one of the best players in the world on this database. Like, And he's worth 255 million. So Man City <laughs> won him. They already got... I, do you know, right? Man City bought the striker that we were noticing coming through at Atalanta, I think. Yeah. For 209 million. And he hasn't scored that many goals for him, to be fair, but he looks absolutely yeah. mental. So, yeah, I finished second in the league, four points behind Manchester City. Knocked out of the Champions League by Bayern, but I was like, good. Like, yeah. Let's focus on the FA Cup. All the way to the bloody final, and I couldn't win it. Uh, my trans budget for next season is only £25 million. I'm getting less and less. 
And I'm starting to lose players as well. Losing with Lataro Martinez. Reese James has only got a year left on his deal, but he's not amazing anymore. We, we might struggle. I think I've got one, maybe two years of... I think you could sell a couple of players to, to get a bit more money in. Yeah. Right? You could push it close to the 100 million. Yeah. But we did notice something that came up in the job insecurities. Now, job said we come back a little bit early. It's the 26th of May. And usually you get jobs at the start of June. Yeah, because they wait for the season to finish and yeah. have their meetings, etc. But in job security, one job in Napoli is insecure. That's Mikel Arteta. So you can, of course, declare interest for the job, which may persuade them to sack Mikel Arteta. They finish in fifth place, which is the Europa League finish. And their team is better than what I left it. It really is. They've got this man, Jorge Rodriguez. Unbelievable left winger. They still got Nusa, who plays on both flanks. Moretto is a really good centre midfielder. They got Key Smith, again, a very good centre midfielder. They got this man, another third centre midfielder. They have this guy, a fourth, really good centre midfielder. They got a great goalkeeper, uh, Rooney Baji on the wing, Valentin Barco. They've got a cracking team. And they also have, should either of us get the job, £54 million. Now, of course, I've already been to Napoli, but Italy is the league that I need to cancel off, as well as the FA I've, Cup I've and Europa Italy. League. I've finished in Italy. I don't, need it. I don't need to go to Italy, do I? But you do need the Europa League. I need and the Europa League, yeah, so... I'm tempted. Tempted to jump ship. I'm kind of tempted too, because I just need the FA Cup, yes, but I could knock out three in one season there or three in one period because at the moment I feel like I'm wasting my time yeah I really do feel like I'm wasting my time so do I move to Napoli do dad does dad move to Napoli oh, okay well we'll leave that one there yeah we'll have to <laughs> we'll have to see next season I guess <laughs> despite dad already complete in Italy he declared interest in Arteta's job at Napoli for that Europa League qualification because Bayern Munich just won the Champions League completing the treble so it would be very difficult to overthrow in Germany but I was still surprised that he tried to move from Leverkusen however Napoli never responded and the fans laughed off the thought of dad becoming their manager but it's 2034 which means it's a World Cup year and that always kicks up a manager switcheroo especially when it's Sweden and Norway in the third place playoff with an England-Belgian final. Which Belgium won on penalties, by the way. And that left a humongous list of international jobs free to start the merry-go-round. But while that was all going on, Dab was quietly building a very good Leverkusen team. Whereas my Chelsea team began to worry me with six players all entering their last year of contract and none of them are wanting to stay right now and re-sign. Hilariously though, Arteta left Napoli and become the Spanish manager, leaving the Napoli job free. And I still thought it was a crazy move, but Dad actually applied for it. But once again, they laughed him all the way out of Naples. That there were a few jobs come up, you tried rattling the Napoli ball to yeah. sack Arteta. Yeah, I did, yeah. Didn't work. Didn't work. <laughs> then he eventually left anyway. Yeah, you took one of the... He um, took the Spanish, Spanish job. job. Yeah, so... But unfortunately... The Napoli job then came up. You applied for it. Didn't get it. Nope. Didn't even get the interview. Didn't even get interview. I was a bit disappointed with that. I mean, I've got a good record in Italy. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, Andre right. Vesboas got it. Who just left Portugal. Yeah. Big man I mean, to marry around because the It was a big game. gamble, wasn't it? I mean, uh, you were saying, oh, I don't know whether you should or not, but I was just gambling and I was going to go for that Europa League um, place. That was all I was going for, really. So, yeah. I'll stick where I am then and hopefully build a good enough side in Germany. And I mean, a perfect season for me would be to win the cup or the league, or oh, the cup, should I say, and finish in the Europa League spot. Yeah. That'd be a perfect finish for me this season. Yeah, because if you do too well, you're in the Champions League. Yeah, and that's the problem then. I've missed the yeah. Europa League, and you know, I so. Which would be hilarious. That's the problem with the Europa League. The only if you miss it, you miss it, don't yeah. you? Yeah. Uh, you can't no longer drop into it. No. It makes it a lot harder. So we both stayed put. Uh, however, I actually, the reason why I was like, I think you'd be silly to go to Napoli is because I think you've built a really good team here. Yeah, I honestly do. You had a good, some good players anyway, but I mean, you sold £106 million worth of players. Tony Suzo, which was a right back, left the club. Uh, this man left for 30... I mean, how'd you get £31 million out of that? <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. That's mental. Uh, Emmanuel Yeboah's left as well, so plenty went out. Uh, did you sign? No, that was the last one that you got in in the January, of course, because you were signing players in January. Let's see who you brought in. So you're starting off with a Romanian left back who can yep. also play CDM. He's played there for you already. Yeah, yes, yeah. Uh, really solid physical attributes, decent mentals. Only 24, free transfer, can't complain. Nope. 
Babis Vlachos, who is a centre midfielder, I'd say squad player. One of, them weak, one of my weak positions was in the midfield, so I'm just trying to strengthen that up as well, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Mark Brown, again, another midfielder, midfielder who can yeah. also play centre back yeah. from Nottingham Forest. Diogo Travosis, that is your right back uh, replacement there, can yeah. go all the way up to right wing, only pay £15 million pound considering you sold the top one, where whoever that was, Don't Tony Souza, for 50. Yeah. So uh, this one I think is a really good sign. Silas Blackenmire yeah. from Villarreal. He's from Liechtenstein. Yeah. That must be a first. It's got to be in it for us. I think he's better than your left midfielder. However, when we do quick 11, he doesn't necessarily get put in we there. Didn't, he didn't at the beginning, did he? Yeah. So, no. uh, Gabriel Silva, great striker for yeah. 19 million. So, so that's another improvement. Yeah. I mean, I had a good strike force anyway, but that was just a, a, another improvement on that as well. So yeah. I was pleased with that one. And then Tomoyoshi Isozaki. Well, you know what? I'm late for goalkeepers. I'll bring one in. Uh, and when I've got a bit of money spare, which I did at the time, I, I thought I've got to bring a good keeper in. That really helps me. This is my keeper for the rest of my time at um, this team then. So. At Leverkusen. Yeah. Half a season until he gets sacked. <laughs> Great goalkeeper from Japan and a bit of a bargain too at £19 million. Yeah. Uh, but speaking of bargains, Omar Gonzalez from Nacional, £2 yeah. million. What a bargain this uh, is. I can see why he did it. Yeah. Just get him in and he's there for me for the next few seasons now, isn't he? Yeah, I can see why. Uh, so, tactically, you did change it. Yeah. You went a little bit more constructive in the midfield, changed a couple of player roles around. And this is what um, you've ended and up with. And with the good strike force that I've got, you can understand why I'm playing that sort of formation up there with, with three attacking yeah. and a winger as well. So, getting the ball in there, I've got three players running in and trying to score. So, I'm quite happy with that. Yeah. Uh, the best 11 pick puts in a couple of players I don't think you play every single week but no. don't want to nail anybody in no I don't want to nail it no uh, because of the cups obviously that you're trying to win yeah uh, so let's have a look then at your schedule so far you've played three games lost one of them yeah I was a bit disappointed with that it's one a I, was. Slow one. <laughs> I had an injury in midfield dinner and they, they put in my left Left the back, left back and I'm happy with back. it. And I bought a midfield player to, to take that position if, if it was a, if there was an injury there, and they didn't put him in. So I put him in, and then put the left back that was in that position back into the left back. And I, I, I think I might have mucked back a bit too much, and yeah. should have just left it. So, but hey, but I mean that's a great result. I've been asking that result come through. Thought, yeah, ideal. I'm up and running now. Stuff and then in I'll Dortmund. Go, then I go and lose a silly result they got at the end. Nine one as well, and he's great through in the cup. Yeah, the DFB Pokal, which of course is your big aim for this yeah. season. I've got a feeling that maybe just winning that will put you in Europa League. It could do, yeah. I don't know whether it puts you in Conference League or, or Europa League. Well, it might it depend on, on who, it who depends on the league, league and stuff. It, it depends on the league position as well. Don't yeah, it? So. absolutely. Uh, so, I'm staying at Chelsea. and I Honestly, I didn't really do much. However, this could be my last year. Because <laughs> all of those players who are running out of contracts... <laughs> And they're all gone next season. Yeah, you've got a hell of a lot going on. Oh, my God. 20, and the players they are as well. Look at that. All of them. All with one year left on their deals. All in their 30s. Most of them in their 30s. It's going to be the most difficult year uh, to stay next year. So I think this could be like the last time I have this Chelsea team, really. And I've done really well. But I just can't win that bloody FA Cup. But anyway... I've actually promoted a couple of players into the first team. I'll try and find them in a second. But I did sell Thomas Araujo for 19. Uh, Alex Abdullahi, who is a, uh, like a youngster, for £10 million. And Martinoff for £45 million from Man to Manchester United. And I bought Ollie McDonald off of them, uh, who is a really good right back slash centre back. I think Reese James is not as good anymore. And I also brought in Delict for £14 million because £14 million. Unbelievable, right? Still, really, and yeah. he's world class. Those are the signings that I made. Tactically, I have changed it slightly. I think I need more solid backline because this was on a support role. So I've gone for half back with Kaiseido and an inside fullback or inverted fullback to be a three at the back. Half back comes in to make it four at the back and then allow the rest to go because I think I'm getting countered too much. And yeah. as we say, you in just these make yourself really hard to be beat now. Yeah. yeah. So that's that's the aim there. Uh, and schedule wise, I lost the first game of the season 1 0 to West Ham. Won the next two though. Bournemouth 3 1, Nottingham Forest 1 0. Champions League, obviously, I'm in it. Don't really want to be. I'd rather be in the Europa League. PSG, Marseille, Toulouse, Michelin, Real Madrid, Arsenal, Basel, and Stuttgart. If I get knocked out, I'm like, never mind. I can yeah. focus on the FA Cup. Big thing there as well. Real Madrid didn't win the, the uh, Champions League, did they? What, last season? Yeah, didn't it go to... 
Uh, the last season was the winner was Bayern Munich. Yeah, Bayern Munich, weren't they? Who, of course, is in your league. They yeah. had the famous treble. Mm. They did all three. Uh, so that's what you're competing with right now. Yeah. So good luck with that. <laughs> but there, there we go. Let's see what happens in this season. Whether Dad jumps ship halfway through or not. <laughs> Maybe um, no. somebody comes up in Europa League. I've got a good squad here now. I'm going to go. I'm going for the cup, so I'll be here for the full season as long as I don't get sacked. All right, I, I've got a feeling this might be my last year in Chelsea. Let's see if I can win that FA Cup. <laughs> Dad's strange start got stranger as he lost three in a row during September and then went on a fantastic run, beating better sides throughout October, including the next match in the DFB Pokal with the fantastic away tie win. By the end of January, though, my Chelsea team were just a point behind Manchester City in the league, and the FA Cup was well underway. However, I only just overcame Preston in the fourth round. Dad's Leverkusen team was caught in a weird spot in the Bundesliga where he is technically in mid-table, but there's only four points between him and a Europa League qualification spot, so it is possible. But bad news for Dad is that his dreams of a cup win in this season has come to an end with a 2-0 loss to Hamburg in the third round. Luckily for him, his league form has picked up big time in the new year. In England, though, my Chelsea team overcame Brighton in the quarter-final with the FA Cup and face a tough trip to mid-table lead side in the semi-final. Dad, out of the cup competition, and then your team did too good. Point, point. <laughs> I can't believe how close I got to it. Oh, my God. So, oh no. you kind of ruined your next season uh, by qualifying for the Champions League yeah. by a point. Which, I mean, you can <laughs> kind of blame Wolfsburg because they yeah. also lost to Stuttgart and Cologne there. Which I was sat in fifth and six quite a lot, and I was just thinking, come on, come on, come on. And then all of a sudden, bang, I dropped into a fourth. And I can see why now they'd lost two games yeah. in the Wolfsburg. Yeah. That's, I mean, it's it's a great season. I can't I can't grumble really. From the growth I, that from you've had. I've done, yeah. So, I, I mean, I've got a good squad, but I've just missed that. Like, I could have really done with that Europe, Europa League spot with, this, with the, the squad that I've got. Yeah. So To build on that. <laughs> uh, so, I mean, the cup competition... Third round by Hamburg, which I mean Hamburg done me the it done me in the league as well. So yeah, two nil. I was just so disappointed with that. Uh, Dortmund went on. Oh no, it didn't. It stuck up Wolfsburg finally. Yeah, so I had a good a chance. Huge opportunity. I, mean, I don't to know get whether. Um, oh my god, the semi final was even worse. I don't know. Nobody like of any. No, I mean, so Hamburg. So even when Hamburg was there, look, that's when Bayern got knocked out. Yeah. So if, if I'd gone through on, there, I could have won it. Oh no, that's even worse. You'd have, it? you'd have come up against Greuther Firth. If you had beat Greuther Firth. You'd have had Stuttgart, and you'd have been in the final. Got it. Absolutely. Huge good. opportunity missed there. I've missed them just both as well, didn't yeah. I? Yeah. Uh, squad wise, twenty-one goals from Gabriel Silva. Uh, Sishuba got fifteen. It's not amazing, is it? No. Travosis got twenty assists, which is great. Yeah. Uh, from that right back position, I'm really surprised with that. He did not play a lot. No. Maybe you needed to have uh, to have locked, locked him in. Him in. Yeah. Because I think he's way better than Ackman. And I, Ackman played a lot of games. I mean, to be honest with you as well, if you look at that, how I finished, I'd have a bad start. Yeah. After we after we started simulating it, look at the games I lost all in a row. All of these, yeah. So that's another nine points I could have had there if I'd won those games. Yeah. And I was a bit iffy there as well. And how far off was I from the top of the league? From the top of the league. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually. There you go. How far is it? I didn't think so that, of that. I was too busy looking down. Yeah. So the start of the league cost me the whole league. Yeah. Got absolutely. It. Absolutely got it. Could have gone on and won it. But you didn't. Right. Great season though. I'm, I'm, I've got to be pleased with that. Yeah. I've got a good squad. I've, I've got a good chance now of going for both in the um, next season. Are you committed to Leverkusen now? I've got it with it. The, the squad that I've got, I've got to go for that now. Right? What's my budget for next season? 26 million. <sighs> Ooh, no, 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 no. That's not very good, though, is it? Mm. <laughs> I was hoping for a little bit more than that. Well, we'll have to see. Okay, over to Chelsea. I think it's my final season, and I finished in second place in the league. By a mile as well, really. Manchester yeah. City kind of run away with it. Uh, Evan Ferguson was great. Arsenal finished in third place there. My old team, Newcastle's in Europa League as well. And the result of... Whatever looks like, well, Leeds looks like maybe they've won something. Nine points deducted from Liverpool as well for administration. Yeah. They're down in 12th now, so that's a big drop-off from Liverpool. But, unfortunately, semi-final of the FA Cup by Leeds. And they go on into the final against Manchester City. So it would have been the hardest team to come up against, but I should be beating Leeds in the semi-final. Yeah. 
I don't think I'm going to stay. Don't you? I don't. You've got a lot of players going to make a contract now, haven't you? Yeah. He's gone. Diogo Costa, oh. Chua Meni, Moises Caicedo. All of them gone. All of them are gone. I mean, that keeper, that's, that's a big loss for you. Yeah. So to stay, I'd have to have a bit of a rebuild, I guess. I mean, there's still some quality players. Maybe I'm being a little bit stupid here because Ali Duckett is incredible. Yeah. You got uh, Ferguson up front. Yeah. Cosio there as well. Noah Darvich is only 28. And I can sell some of these players as well and bring in something. But, uh, yeah, it's... It's, it's a tough decision, I think. We've got retiring Lataro Martinez. I've managed to keep hold of Kefram Turan, but he isn't quite as good anymore. I'd really need to replace the midfielder. He's, he's signed another two-year deal there. Um, but yeah, losing Caicedo is massive because he is world-class. Yeah. And uh, he did not want to stay. And he's gone to Al-Ali as well, annoyingly. So he's gone to a different country, and well, different continent. In fact, yeah. in Saudi Arabia. Uh, transfer budget... <laughs> The 300 million in the, in the red. So, oh dear, oh dear. I think it could be time for me to leave. But that all depends with the perfect I mean, jobs When you look at up. the players they've just lost on free contracts, that's that's a lot of money they've just lost out on. Yeah. Really, yeah. I'm not selling them. So, so job wise, right now, there's one available, and that's Atalanta, who don't have a bad team. They don't have any budget, though. However, the season is still going on, so they might not have been given their budget yet. They're in eighth place. They win a game. And the other two teams don't. They could go into Europa League. There's a small chance that Atalanta go into Europa yeah. League in the league that I need to go into. Yeah, definitely. That could be an option. Uh, the title's still being fought out by Napoli as well, who the I mean, Boas went to. To be honest, we knew they had a good enough squad, didn't we? Yeah, they had a good team. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if they if they went on and won the Europa League as well. What, Atalanta? No, Napoli. They were, they were in it, weren't they? That's what oh, I was yeah, they to get were there. in it. Yeah, yeah for sure. Uh, they were... Eliminated in the semi-final on penalties by Benfica. Yeah. So the final is between Newcastle and Benfica. If Newcastle win that, even though they're in the Europa League space in the Premier League, they they'll take the automatically win the Champions League spot, don't they? Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Because right now, that might be the only thing that's keeping Steve... Is Steve Harper that interim manager? <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Please do not win because <laughs> I could go to Newcastle with one of the best players in the world in the Europa League if they lose that match against Benfica. Yeah. They, they would want me back as well. I just bloody know it. I know that they want me back. There's an FA Cup winning team there for you. Yeah. But there's no international football this summer, so it's all down to what happens there. And I think maybe me resigning might cause something. I yeah. don't know what, yeah. but it might cause something. So... Nothing to add to the trophy cabinet this season, but let's have a recap and then see what happens next season. For the second season in a row, no trophies are to be added to either trophy cabinet. But Dad is still one trophy heavier than me, and it's that Europa League that's going to kill us both in season 13. Newcastle United went on to win the Europa League, which made them a lot less appealing to try and go for that vacancy if it came up. And it also really cancelled out any options in England for Europa League and FA Cup. And eventually, they hired Pochettino, who was already out of the door at PSG after finishing in second place. To which Dab was offered an interview for that role immediately. As well as the Atalanta job, which also became available, and was rather appealing to me, seeing as I still needed to go to Italy, and they've got some cracking players. Onslaught then left Manchester United to become the PSG manager, a United team that recently won the Europa League. And Dab was really tempted by the upcoming Leipzig job especially because technically that would be a step up for him. Not to mention their transfer budget was massive. I could even go there and make sure dad doesn't win anything. Annoyingly for dad, he could only declare interest for the job and not apply despite the vacancy just popping up. And Thomas Tuchel was announced as their manager, which made things very interesting because that left the Inter Milan job with 180 million pound in the transfer budget available. And I was straight on it, despite being interested in the Man United job and returned to Italy. But they also wanted to interview their old manager, my father, for the job too. But he turned it down and I eventually was offered the role. But then I shot myself in the foot because the Bayern Munich manager was then favourite to take the Chelsea job. 
and Chelsea have put a bid in. And soon enough, the French manager de Jamps had moved to Chelsea, while my dad also reminded me of the butterfly effect that caused a similar thing to happen when he left the same job. Which makes it the perfect opportunity for dad to pounce to Bayern Munich and possibly complete Germany in one season if he played his cards right. And an interview followed really shortly. And while that was going on, dad's next match was actually against Bayern Munich. But a final twist, Dad was unsuccessful in getting the vacancy he so craved and Pep Guardiola was hired instead. And the new Bayern Munich boss brought Dad's Leverkusen team right back down to earth, destroying them 5-1 just days after being appointed as manager. Dad, the club that turned you down. Everybody else was trying to get me and I turned all them down. I went for this job and they turned me down and they stuck they me in the first game. They completely wiped the floor oh, no. with you as well. 5-1. Yeah. Obviously, they took over, well, they took on, sorry, Pep Guardiola, who left the Arsenal role, yep. uh, which was troubling for me in a way because they've previously won FA Cups. They've got this man as a caretaker manager right now who's quite good, actually, but yeah. he was their under-21s manager. He's been there since 2022. They haven't took over a manager yet. They are still, by the looks of it, looking for one. And Zinedine Zidane is the leading candidate, and he's the Real Madrid manager. <laughs> yeah. And there's a bid in for him as well to go to Arsenal. So the, mer the manager merry-go-round that we always mention is still going on. Yeah. The butterfly effect that we had when you were the Chelsea manager and left yeah. happened again. Because I thought it was going to bite me in the ass. Yeah, if I got that Madrid job, that Bayern Munich job, you'd... that's the biggest job that you could have got. Yeah. I mean, I tried the Le Leipzig job as well, didn't I? Yeah. They turned me down as well, didn't they? So. Yeah. Well, that woman was weird because you couldn't apply for the role. No. Oh, yeah, they didn't turn me down. I just couldn't apply for it, could I? And it was so... only two days after the manager left. It was almost yeah. like they already had a manager ready to replace before the guy left. I'm just waiting for the Dortmund job now. <laughs> well, yeah, they go for the, tri <laughs> the quad factor yeah. uh, of all four. But. You're not the only one who had a bit of movement, or no. attempted to move anyway. I'm no longer with Chelsea, as we mentioned, and I am with Inter Milan. Uh, this one come about simply off the back of a few different managers changing, the PSG role coming up, yeah. Pochettino, who actually would look like he was insecure, left. And I couldn't turn down the Inter Milan job for the simple fact that, yes, all right, four or five years ago, I said no to it before even applying for it because a lot of their players were too old. They've replaced very well. Yeah. Like Thomas Tuchel, who was here previously, I think it was Thomas Tuchel, uh, did, it was, did a very good job at putting new players in, some of the best players I've ever seen, <laughs> and they had an extremely good budget. So I don't know actually whether they had some kind of transfer, takeover, promotion, tycoon. Oh, I failed. Tycoon fail. So no, they haven't. They haven't had a, like a new Tycoon takeover or anything. Nope. But for some reason, I had 180 million to spend. I wasn't complaining, so I made the move because Chelsea. I had no transfer budget. I had to start selling players. I mean, you've still got to go back for that FA Cup, and it? it's still got to go back. It's haunting you that one, isn't it? Yeah. That's that could be my lifesaver, really. Yeah. Because you were struggling to get that one. Yeah. I mean, that was four or five seasons at Chelsea. Yeah. Two seasons, obviously, at Newcastle, failing to get that. It is what it is, I guess, but. I'm now at Inter Milan, and I've put myself in a very good position to finish Italy in a one, in one go. Yeah, because this team is unbelievable. So let's have a look at my side to begin with. And I have, once again, as I always do in Italy, struggle with the non-EU players. <laughs> it makes no sense. It makes zero sense. I don't understand it. It tells me the information that I need to do. I listen. I do that information, and it still doesn't work. And I don't understand it, whether it's... Something that I'm reading wrong, something that the game's doing wrong, whether the rules are wrong, I don't know. But it didn't work, and I'm a little bit frustrated about it. Don't worry about it, son. Don't worry about it. Mummy will look after you. Just go downstairs and, and have a cuddle with mummy. She'll, she'll, she'll calm you down. Shut up. <laughs> how's how's uh, Bayern Munich job getting on? <laughs> oh! uh, right, so... He signed one really good player and he couldn't put him in the team. I can't put him in the team. So I signed Yoni Antman, the second Arsenal player that I signed for a good centre midfielder because I had already got this guy in as a non-EU player because I was allowed one this season. Brought him in. Absolutely fine. He registered. And then it told me, I forgot to be honest, that he was also a non-EU. Uh, I was like, okay, so now I just need to sell a non-EU player to a foreign league. That's... How I understand the rules, you cannot sell them to a league that's, well, an Italian team because it won't They've work. They've got to leave the country. They've got to leave the country. Yeah. 
So Carlos Mascara, who was Colombian, a non-EU player, went to Al Rayade, who... It's not in Italy. That definitely in Italy. <laughs> and I still can't register Yoni Antman for some reason. And it still tells me until next season or another non-EU player is sold. Why do I need to sell two then? Makes no sense. But now I'm without a really good centre midfielder that I spent £68 million for the rest of the season. So I'm a little bit frustrated with that. Uh, he's but, not too happy. No. <laughs> I, I bet. He's, he's come over here and then he just can't he's, play for us. He's on a year's holiday. Though. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, the players that they did sign already, Mason Mount came in on a free. Uh, that was also a non-EU player. So I guess... But you never had nothing two. to do with that, did you? No, it was no. already done. That was already there. And I think they'd already sold another non-EU... Yeah, I sold Cher Lacey. Yeah, you did, yeah. To, another to non-EU player. Yeah, so you got rid of two. Yeah, so I got rid of two and I can't bring in two. Makes no sense to me whatsoever. Uh, Vincent Collett was another signing before I moved to the club. This guy's unbelievable. 27 years of age, and they sign him for peanuts. 19 off the ball. Good with both feet. Love that. Fantastic player. I needed a centre-back. That's the position that when I come into the club, I thought that's their weakest position. Manchester United had one for £115 million. Greek. I took the deal. He's very good. 19 for positioning, 18 for marking, good pace about him as well. All right, he's only six foot with not very high jumping reach and bravery, but I don't care. He's good at doing the defensive stuff and positioning-wise, yeah. so I think that's a really good signing. So those are the signings that I made, as well as Nicolas Samame, who was the Peruvian player that I bought in to be a ball-winning midfielder type of role because he's probably one of the best in the world at doing that, and he's only 25, so good signing. The rest of the team, and I've lined up like this, the rest of the team is still decent. We've got Endrick from when Dad signed him, although he is out for like another 10 weeks. Uh, they've got Bove, who Dad obviously signed as well. They've got this man, Adam Walker, English. He's really good, he? he is fantastic. We've, we've tracked his career for, for a while, haven't we? Because we remember when he was at Tottenham and he left for 20 million. Ridiculous, really. Uh, so they've got some fantastic players. They've got the right back that Dad signed when he was here. They also got the keeper that Dad signed at Real Madrid. They signed him on a free. So uh, that was that was a good deal for them as well. But Stoney is still here. So some cracking players. Profondi as well. They've got a really good bench as well. It's, they really filled out the side compared to when Dad was here. And playing this 4 2, well, 4 triple 2 kind of asymmetric formation, to say it's done well is a bit of an understatement. <laughs> yeah. uh, 5-1 against Bologna first game of the season. 9-1 against Salernitana. 4-3 against Lazio away. You might think, oh, that's a close one. Lazio have an unbelievable yeah, team. good side. We've seen a couple of their players, including their key player, who's a right winger, and then they've got a striker. Roberto Martinez is the manager, so maybe that's their main weakness. <laughs> yeah. uh, their striker, this guy, is phenomenal because I almost bought him for 111 million. Yeah. But yeah, so that's their team, and I managed to do them 4 3 at their place. So things are going well. I'm hoping I can get the league and Coppa Italia done in one season. Then I just need to look for an English club using Europa League. That's all I need to do. You're in a really strong position, I think. <clears throat> I'm, I think I'm, I'm a little bit worried. The pendulum swung when Bayern Munich said no. Yeah, 100%. Because as soon as you got that Bayern Munich job, it's like, oh, I think that's game yeah. over for me. But when it came up as a as, um, vacancy, didn't it? You went, oh, no, didn't you? Yeah. And you knew exactly what I was going to do. So, yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's just turned in your way a little bit, I think, with this team. The back and forth of who's got the advantage in this series is mental. Because oh, it... now I feel like I have an advantage, even though I'm a trophy down. Yeah. Because that Bayern Munich team's way too good right now. You've just been battered by them. Mm. So you only scrape through the cup. Yeah. I mean, let's have a look at your I'm cup run. Uh, <laughs> you only scrape through the cup. We'll have a look at the players that Dad signed in a minute. Five three against Karlsruhe after extra time. I, I did muck about with the squad at that time though, didn't I? And I was and I was only trying a little bit. I, I had a different tactic. Yeah. And I played a couple of players that were going to be reserve players really, yeah. just to get them in. And, and I got away with it. But yeah. I can't afford to do it again now, especially since I need to win that cup. Because you've lost two league games already. Yeah. Wolfsburg was a 3-1 win, but then you've lost two league games and you've only got 34 games to play yeah, in the Bundesliga. Know, yeah. So already in the league, but what we did say was if you jam out and get into the Europa League, that's a huge yeah. advantage for oh, that definitely, season. Yeah. yeah. So because that's the that's that's going to be whoever can get their hands, well, whoever can get their team or find a team in the Europa League first, who has a chance to win it, they become favourites. They instantly become yeah, favourites. Definitely, yeah. But yeah, I think right now that that 
move or that lack of move to to buy munich that didn't happen kind of puts it in my favor now looking at how strong my inter milan team is 100 percent. i started signing some good players to chelsea by the way i stayed there i was i was happy there until the end of milan job yeah. come up and i couldn't turn it down no uh, but let's have a look at the signings that you did make, Dad. We're doing this kind of back to front, but it, it would make sense the reason why, because obviously that happened. So last season, you well, this season now you sold another £83 million. Pound. You've had a few players that went out, uh, including Joel Regal for £30 million. Pound. There's another winger went out for £18 million. Ozer, who was like a backup striker, going out for £13 million. And I think you've actually replaced quite well. Yeah. Uh, Christian Rodriguez, Cristiano Rodriguez, sorry, from Sporting, so fantastic name, mm. um, comes in as a really good centre attack midfield. I'll backup. put this guy for the future, really, more than anything. Um, the, when I was saying I messed about with the tactics and got players in, I did play this guy in the, in the, in the cup game tonight. Yeah. Just to, just to let him have a go, really, because I don't think he'll play as in, many. No. no. Uh, but for £9 million, pound, that's it's, it's I think a, bargain, a good buy, really. yeah. Uh, £30 million for a centre back. Yeah. It's a good one, too. Good with both feet. Mentals are kind of lacking, but yeah, he ain't bad. From Ajax, that, was, that was my weak position, I felt, in the team at this present moment. So I needed another one. I took a bit of a chance with this guy because he was injured when I bought him. Didn't I? Yeah, he, he broke was his for, leg. He was he? out for two months, so yeah. he's just come into the team now. So as you can see, he's only played two games, really. Yeah, and only one start. Yeah, so I'm hoping it starts to get better now with him. Yeah, uh, a £1.5 million deal for, for Julian Munoz, who your scouts oh, this recommended. A, this was a bargain, wasn't it? That's uh, a no-brainer, isn't yeah. it? £1.5 million get him in the squad. For, for how good he is. Yeah. Even if you don't play that role, you're like, that's silly, because yeah. you know, it's a three-and-a-half star compared to the rest of your team. Mm. So for 1.5, it makes yeah. no sense passing that up. And then your biggest signing, Romeo Lavia from Torino. Yeah, I just had to strengthen up my midfield a little bit more. They were a little bit weak in that position. Yeah. Um, and he plays a couple of the positions that I, I play, so I've got him in. Yep, absolutely. Experience in there. Yeah. Uh, so your tactic looks like that. Your best 11 looks like this. Now, Vlachos has been suspended because he got sent off in the last game, but it's very similar to the seat. To, to the 11 that you had last year with a couple of obviously uh, new players coming in including Munoz yeah. who you obviously signed but it hasn't gone very well well that tactic I actually you've shown there I only played the Hamburg game in yeah um, so I had a different tactic before that which I was playing a, a defensive midfielder you were playing diamond as well yeah I was yeah, yeah. so um, I just changed it quickly to more attacking um, with the winger and I'm hoping that just because the Hamburg was on when I changed it they haven't got used to that tactic yet so I'm hoping it I improve from now on, but I've got Man City <laughs> coming up. <laughs> and they've been winning everything right yeah. now. Uh, so you've got Man City in the Champions League. You've also got Bayern Munich, who just won the treble recently. Yeah. So that's obviously going to be tricky to defeat them. But yeah, they uh, obviously went for Pep Guardiola back at Bayern Munich. So it's funny how things turn around just like that. There's been some weird manager movements in the last couple of years, which has been quite entertaining. But okay. Here we go. Here we go. This season's quite a big one because if I can get into Milan to win both the Italian Cup and the Scudetto, I am well and truly in the driving seat. I just need that one last move to a good enough yeah. English English side of the Europa League. I'm hoping it's going to take about three years to do that, to win both. So I mean, the FA Cup's cursed. I ain't never winning that. I could... <laughs> I reckon, I, could, I reckon I'll probably win the Europa League before I win the FA Cup yeah, at this probably. point because that, that trophy has uh, completely eluded me this whole time. But let's see what happens during this season. My Inter Milan team continued a rich run of form in the Serie A, beating everyone in our path. Everyone until we faced our rivals, AC Milan, that is. But we still managed to open up a huge league going past the halfway point in the league campaign. Meanwhile, Dab was eliminated from the DFB Pacal in the second round. And despite demolishing Man City 3-0, the performances had been shocking for Dab who's seen some really bad runs which led to the supporters being very disappointed in the job he was doing. And by Leverkusen dropped down to ninth place in the Bundesliga. And into the new year, things were only getting worse until the inevitable happened. And Dad was given his marching orders by the club and was sacked. I would have rubbed it in more if it wasn't for the fact that I was very busy at the end of the season. Oh dear, oh dear, Dad. Didn't deserve that, did I? I can understand it, but I've done really bad, but come on, I didn't deserve that. <laughs> sacked from the Bayer Leverkusen job, where at the time you were sacked, you finished in ninth place. You were in ninth place. They didn't finish in ninth place. In fact, they finished in sixth, which would have been 
a Europa League spot if it wasn't for the fact that Gladbach defeated Bayern Munich in the DFB Pokal final. Yeah. Somehow Stuttgart won the league. We don't know how. This well, we is look, their key player. We've looked through their team and we can't find why they won that league, can we? Guess who their key player is? Yannick Ameke. Yeah. Never heard of him. So, I mean, yeah, we, we've we've had a look and we're not quite sure, like, why... I mean, yeah, I, I guess why. We know why. You were, you were knocked out of the cup. Right, you right. were ninth in the league. Yeah. Your season was over. They cut ties. Yeah. They've already replaced you with Marco Silva. He came in quite early because you were actually sacked in April. Yeah. Uh, after two years and 124 days. So he's only actually been in the job 37 of those days. Um, yeah, it's not gone great for you there. And Frankfurt being relegated as well. That's unbelievable as well, isn't it? Let's not, let's not change the subject. <laughs> Just trying to get away from this. <laughs> you finish in sixth place. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a free agent now, so um, I'm looking for another job now. Now, the perfect scenario, as we can see, is if the Leipzig job came up. Because them finishing in fifth place, they've got a great team. And guess what? On the job security, Thomas Tuchel is insecure. So you can, of course... And Pep Guardiola. And Pep Guardiola, because they didn't win the league or the cup. No. You can, of course, declare interest in both of those jobs. Got it, haven't I? Look who else is in a precarious position. Andre Vias boas in Napoli. And that's because if you have a look at Inter Milan, we are champions by 17 points. Napoli down there in seventh. They've just won the league. And we lost three points Boom. in three games. Look at that. Absolutely incredible. We are top of the league from week one yep. all the way through. We did not drop off. We only lost three games. They were three away games. We drew four games. Three of them were away games as well. We had a phenomenal season. It's got 130 goals as well. Unbelievable. For Fundy with the top score of 21. Don't know how is that low. Look at your goal difference as well. Yeah. 91. Plus 91. We had two of the highest average ratings, two of the highest assisters. We had an unbelievable time. We knew it was a good team. I mean, I was just, I'm, I'm, I was just hoping that you didn't win both. Yeah. Well, did I? I did. One season. One season. Beating Napoli in the final, putting Andre Villas Boas' job into a precarious position. Defeating my old club with well, your old club. Your favourite now? I have to be. Two trophies is all you need. Two trophies to your three. Although, well, you're not in a job. So, no. I mean, yeah, it's, there's I a mean, perfect was, job for you. I, I was hoping that um, I'd, I got away with this season, you know, and, and get a good budget because I felt I was one or two players short with Leverkusen. Turns out it's about five or six. I know. I'm, not, I'm squad short now. <laughs> You're a job short of it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I've completed Italy. Oh, God, dude, that's, um, that's oh, God, it's the money. Now I'm worried now. So I can move on. I mean, I've had a great season there. Uh, £51 million. So I spent that budget from last season really well. It's been a great time. Is there, a, is there any wonder. teams available in the uh, well, Europa that's League the spot or, or in England? There's only one job right now, which is in the Serie A. There's a precarious job at Napoli. Insecure jobs... The only one that's in a Europa League spot is Leipzig. But we all know as soon as I leave this into my land job, that could start something. Yeah. But I gotta time it right. And are we in an international year? We are indeed. We are in the 2036, which, if I am correct, is the year of the European Championships, which is about to be taking place in uh, Spain. So who knows what that international always, jobs like you say, that always gets creates something at the end, doesn't it? Absolutely. Uh, because, of course, the last time like the England manager job come available, Liam Manning is the manager at the minute who came from Fulham. Like He came out of absolutely nowhere. So however they do, our eyes are going to be quite peeled on how that happens, on what happens in there. Of course, I need to go to England. My team, Chelsea, this is the only downside of this season, Didier Deschamps finishing second place, but he won the FA Cup. <laughs> I don't know why you're laughing. You got sacked. 
I didn't. I won two trophies this year. I mean, yeah, all right. I was cursed and I could not win the FA Cup with Chelsea. They go and win it the year that I leave. That's absolutely fine, okay? I'm all right with that. Yeah, I'm fine with that as well. <laughs> I don't want to go back to Chelsea, though, because the thing is, two clubs in the English leagues are in, of course, European spots for Europa League, and that is Liverpool and Manchester United. So, ideally, one of those jobs comes available. Liverpool, I think, have the better team by the looks of it, and only 8 million transfer budget, probably not. Nagelsmann is currently their manager. I don't know whether... I, I think that he's got like a stable job because last season they were... Uh, had really bad finances. They were deducted nine points. The season before... Well, last season again, actually, Manchester United finished in 11th, I think. They haven't been very very good. They got Kieran McKenna, who's actually done quite a good job to take them back there. The two clubs that they got the, is not very the good. The key players were F210, so what's we'll he like? Sorensen is a very good striker. Lord almighty. But he's classed as a right winger, which yeah. is a bit strange. Uh, so, yeah, I mean... Man United is your dream, isn't it? Man United you went to, there and, to and complete glory, Hunter. Managing Man United, that's a perfect story for you, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah. But it's I all can't, down... I can't see me being at Spurs and winning anything. No. <laughs> so I could do with Kieran McKenna, like, darting off, yeah. if I'm honest. Um, and then, I mean, um, we'd both if, be applying for it. If England don't do well in the Euros, someone like that could take the England. Yeah, yeah. I know he's Northern Ireland. Yeah, yeah. But... You know, he's uh, doing well in domestic league. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, so. Uh, other storylines which happened, which made me absolutely wet myself. Now, we're on into Milan. I was eliminated in the semi final of the Champions League by Real Madrid. The semi finals also included Arsenal and Manchester City, which meant the final is between Real Madrid and Arsenal. And remember correctly that Zinedine Zidane um, yeah. was about to go to Arsenal. Yeah. He made that move. So now you're thinking, wow, he's against, he's against his, his own old team. club yeah. in the final. Uh -uh. No, he isn't. Because Zinedine Zidane was sacked and it's now Xavi as the manager. And guess who took over Zinedine Zidane's job as a caretaker role because he was Zidane's assistant manager, Jamie Vardy. <laughs> <laughs> He was the assistant manager of last season. You can see why, and also can you? The caretaker. Why? He ain't that good. No, <laughs> not at all. Uh, but Zidane was sacked. He's now unemployed. So that's another manager we got to contend with. That's that's a problem for me, especially for me too. He's already been a manager of both Liverpool and Manchester United. Yeah, he might want to go to Germany. So take the Real Madrid job, uh, the Bayern Munich job. I'll have the Leipzig job. Yeah, <laughs> it's all to play for now, and it's. It gets interesting and more interesting every single season. But out of curiosity, though, who, who did win the Champions League then? Well, that's to, uh, well, that's it, hasn't it. Been played yet? it hasn't been played. All oh, right, between the two, I'd like to think the Xavi won it. So it's going to be played between our old club Real Madrid, yeah, and Arsenal, who none of us have an allegiance with. So I want Real Madrid to win because I've got loyalty, and clearly you don't because you want Xavi to win it. I'm just thinking of him playing against Real Madrid, but now it's now I'm looking at it and thinking it's Arsenal. <laughs> Exactly. It's a weird thing with you and Arsenal. You always buy their players. You're supporting them now. What's going on there? So that leaves us with the first time that we can add some trophies to the Glory Hunter cabinet in about three seasons. So I'm really excited. Let's have a look at those Glory Hunter cabinets. I had a wonderful time in Italy lifting both the League and Cup to add to my trophy cabinet, leaving just two trophies remaining. Diving ahead of Dad again as the pendulum swings in my favour. But where will both of us end up next? Dad started off unemployed by declaring interest in both the Leipzig job and the Bayern Munich job to try and rattle the boat a bit. Meanwhile, I was joining him in unemployment as I resigned from the Inter Milan role after completing Italy. But this could have been a big mistake because look who took my job at Inter Milan, which left an obvious vacancy for Dad to apply for. I guess he's kind of getting the luck that I had in earlier seasons as he's asked for an interview in Munich. And third time's a charm, he's now the manager of Bayern Munich. 
Meanwhile, the Bundesliga champions Stuttgart are offering me an interview after their manager went to Napoli. But the Euros threw up plenty more jobs, which makes things very interesting. A Euros that was won by Belgium, who beat Spain in Spain in the final. Who also won the World Cup and then offered me to take over as their manager, as well as a few other nations who are managers right now. So, Dad, you got the job that you tried to go for three times, turned down them once, got turned down twice, I yep. think. Now you go there. I mean... Last last season I was unlucky. I got sacked and I was disappointed. I did, but now I'm I'm chuffed to bits. I did get sacked because yeah. this opportunity's come for. Oh, not a, this is the opportunity I really wanted now, isn't it? Talk about landing on your feet, right? Oh, just about. Oh. Meanwhile, yeah, I don't have anything going on. I'm just waiting on holiday for nothing really. So even better for me. <sighs> really frustrating if I'm honest. There was the Euros. All those jobs become available. Not one club job become available because of that, other than yeah. Leeds. And then they took on a job that was the Italian, the ex-Italian manager anyway. Yeah. So it was no manager merry-go-round whatsoever. I was really frustrated with that, to be honest. Uh, so, okay. We get, well, the only job that you were trying to get, really, was the Leipzig job, wasn't it? It's insecure for yeah. ages. Until I lost against them. Yeah. <laughs> so you, you done me dirty, really. I, I've done myself a big favour by losing to them. You did, yeah. <laughs> uh, and hopefully that costs you throughout the season. If they come on and win the league, I'll oh, be no. absolutely crying with laughter. <laughs> uh, but yeah, they're in Europa League. I could have done with that. Uh, you had a busy transfer window, Dad. Yeah. You spent £327 million. You sold 196 Players that you sold, you guys might not be aware of, but uh, there was a couple. that well, There was one that went to Inter Milan, so my old club. There's a winger that you didn't really need. Yeah, there's just a few different players that were. On I had the, quite a on few wingers, cast. didn't I? And I'm only going to play a formation with with one winger, so yeah. I got rid of the other wingers I didn't really need. So let's have a look at the players you did bring in. You've got this guy, Mateus Zuniga. Yeah. They, who, were, they were quite weak at the back, I felt. So. Yeah, so he's a good centre back. You can also play right back. Yeah, uh, but he is left footed. So yeah, we thought that was that weird, puzzled. That yeah. yeah, that was that was puzzling. Marco Nepa, who played. You bought three players from our old club, Real Madrid. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the, the, on the third time, they were like, "Go away!" Yeah. Uh, but you still did it. Centre midfielder. Yeah, Italian. Both, both positions, so I'm just striking the midfield up. So good player there. Yeah. And then two players we remember very well: Coyote yeah. at right back. He's, a, you haven't a, played a game for him yet. He's no, been he keeps, injured twice. He keeps getting injured. This guy, didn't he? So uh, a bit disappointed with that, but he'll, he'll come good for me in a minute. Uh, which was 45 up to 50 million pound, and then Camavinga. Yeah, for 75 for a 33 year old. Well, I, I bought him for a midfield position, didn't I? But then he just slotted into my left back position. Uh, left. Yeah, I don't position, think you have so. a very good left back. No, I didn't. So I thought, well, all right, I'll leave him there then. So yeah. he'll do me all right there. And then finally, uh, the Chilean centre back that I really enjoyed uh, being manager of, Roberto Paredes. Yeah, this has just made my defence absolutely solid now, I think. Yeah, he's very good. Yeah. £115 million. They paid 13 two seasons ago. Well yeah. done, Frank Milan. You can see why they're rich now. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Uh, they've made a mug of you there. Well, they bought one of my players as well, didn't they? They so. did, yeah. yeah. Uh, so tactically, you've gone down this route. You've gone for kind of like a 4 triple 2 but one central, one out on the left there. Uh, Coyote, as we say, has been injured, so he hasn't played yet. But the rest of the team looks like that. And as we say, the Camavinga deal is because you haven't really got a backup left back. No. So Camavinga slots in there. You've got a couple of players who can play there. But this guy's quite good. He was already at the club for you, wasn't he? He was, yeah, he was very he's good. Really the Belgian good, he? yeah. winger. You're still, well, you were trying to sell Jeremy Pino. Yeah. No I luck mean, whatsoever. And he's on his last year of his contract. I know. That was a bit of worrying, really, because he's valued at 15, uh, 50 million. So I'm going to lose him next season. But hopefully. Hopefully, I won't be there next season. So, Wow, well, yeah, that's that's the gamble <laughs> you take, I guess. Yeah. Uh, Musiala has obviously been their key player for better part of oh, 15 years what now. A, what a player to have in that position. Yep. Uh, yeah, Matisse Tell being the same as well. Yeah. Another player who... Uh, I'm in my strike force, I just can't touch them, so I just hope they just do the business for me. I mean, yeah, Shirazzi is unbelievable. Yeah. Look at that. 19 composure and off the ball. Incredible player, and he's German, 25, come through the youth academy. So yeah, even better. One of our own, as they would chant yeah. from the from the crowd. Uh, so yeah, that's the that's what the lineup looks like. That's the tactic. Yeah. Schedule wise, Dad has had a weird one. He's yeah. through the next round of the cup. He lost to Leipzig, and then you beat Heidenheim eight 0 and Frankfurt two 0 Yeah. I mean, for the ones out there that might say I fixed that game with the Leipzig game, I really didn't. I really did want to beat yeah. them. <laughs> <laughs> Got done one nil. Yeah, I mean, it, 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 it done me a favour because then the manager was secure after that. But yeah. I really did want to win that game. You've got a couple of old clubs that we've got to face in the Champions League. Well, yeah. 
Real Madrid. So I got quite Real a few Madrid. players going back to Real Madrid. Yeah, uh, the Newcastle team. Newcastle, yeah. which is my old side there. Yeah. So yeah, it's they, not an easy be... draw really because I've got Man City as well in there. Oh no, yeah, and Dortmund. Yeah, so got to be a difficult one. But, but then I'm not chasing. About that. I'm not chasing the Champions League. No, not at all. Your next cup game is against Greuther first. You're just you like Man City is getting all the easy ties all the way I'll, through. I'll take it, mate. I'll take it. Yeah. You can say what you want. I'll take it. But, yep. Yeah, what do I be doing? Well, i just got to be waiting, I guess, for either a good enough English English team for that FA Cup or somebody that's in the Europa League. And if a job comes up that's in the Europa League while we are going throughout the season, and I think, well, I can jump there and possibly win it in a one season, that's what I've got to do. Yeah. So, I guess we'll come back if or when... I find that job. However, nothing appealing ever came up. It took until January, but finally, an interesting job came up. I was even favourite for the vacancy. However, they placed an interim manager in charge, meaning I couldn't apply for the role at Spurs. And Dad finally being at Bayern Munich wasn't going as good as what you'd expect it to to begin with. By January, though, he had salvaged a poor start in the league and climbed back to the top spot. But of course, he is also chasing the German Cup. And that was a lot harder than he thought it would be as well. It took until the end of the season, but there's a vacancy I have finally applied for. Back to a place I had success with in the past too. I can't believe we got to the end of the season, Dad. And I've only just found a job that I can actually apply for. Yeah, you were, you were chasing the Spurs job, weren't you? That just didn't come up, did it? No. I was a bit worried because if you'd got that job, you could have... You could know, have caused something. Yeah, uh, De they, definitely gone for the FA Cup at the time. They might you? still come up. And because of the registration in terms of uh, the qualification, sorry, in terms of the Champions League, they might get a Europa League spot. I think it would only be a Europa Conference League yeah, probably, yeah. because Aston everybody Villa probably will bump up, up yeah. uh, which is a shame but yeah right now Morgan Davidson is an interim manager and you just simply c I could not apply for it no. at you all. were favourite as well it, uh, just... <laughs> 1 to 16 favourite which yeah. is almost like oh he's got the job they had out of a budget for you as well for the January transfer window as well yeah. didn't they so... uh, they've only got 192 now so only, he yeah. spent a little bit <laughs> they, he spent 44 million pound in February but yeah I mean I was so annoyed with that because at the time obviously they would have still been in the FA Cup they yeah. didn't have Europa League football they were in the Champions League but they've made the Champions League final so they were a good side incredible so that, I mean that's good for pushing all the teams up because there's two English teams in the final yeah but that's true, actually. Yeah. Mm, I don't know whether he would... Would he just drop into Europa League from I don't know. No. I, I, I honestly don't know how that, how that qualification works. But the Newcastle job is an interesting one as well. They only finished a point behind. Their former manager, one that we've been around quite a lot, is yeah. Pochettino. He's sacked after two cup wins. Both were the... Were the well, one was the Carabao Cup, to be fair. Um, they have still got quite a lot of players from when I was the manager, well, all the way back then. Uh -huh. So, in 2026, so 11 years ago, they still got players that I yeah. bought, which is a mental, really, when you think about it. But they've, still, they've got Oscar Rada, that striker that we mentioned. He's still there and still available and still looks incredible. They, they've got Garnacho, who I think was there but he's looking like he wants to leave uh, Usman Diamonde who I bought I think yeah. for for Newcastle they still got some incredible players so if but, I did put it this way they've got a good enough side to win the FA Cup absolutely that's what you're there for isn't it really? yeah and hopefully just slip straight into your old belief oh that'd be so jammy if you do that would be great uh, they have 125 million pound in the transfer budget so I have applied haven't had anything back yet I've literally just applied because the manager has only been sacked when the 19th so five days before that so it it hasn't been too long since that's happened maybe i get the job maybe not i'm hoping the spurs job comes up as well yeah and then i've got the choice then yeah go into which one i can pick and choose which team i want obviously england is my preferred destination because of the fa cup however if something comes up where they've landed in europa league spot for at the summer maybe or at yeah. the end of the season maybe yeah. i'll do that but before we have a look at other jobs and their situations, Dad, you had a free crack this well, year. I, 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 it was a brucey bonus for me, really. You doing absolutely nothing, so I had a chance of just being clearing up. So yeah, we well, you didn't win I, the Champions League. I had a good, yeah, I had a good enough side. I won't worry about that. Was I? I yeah. had a good enough side to do it all. So I fingers crossed. 
Did you do it? Well, won the league. Won the league, yeah. 79 points. I had a, I had a bad start as well. I was yeah. a bit worried because obviously we, we were coming back all the time, weren't we? Yeah. To find you a job. And all the time I'm looking at seeing how I'm getting on and I'm thinking, I'm going to get sacked. I'm going to get sacked in a minute. I started getting worried and all of a sudden it just kicked in and I started playing really well then. Scored 102 goals eventually, only lost five games. Yeah. Uh, had a great time, 79 points. So it looked comfortably. Yeah. In the end, Matisse Tell was the top scorer. You also had the highest average rate. And Chirazzi, I was surprised, didn't, was nowhere near. Yeah. Uh, he got 11 assists, though, so he was up there. And Dennis Seaman had the same amount of clean sheets as Nico Mantle. Uh, so, you won the league. That's one trophy to add to your Glory Hunter cabinet that you've been trying That's to get. That's the job. But in this season, did you really capitalise and win the cup? I'm too gutted. I so wanted to do it. If I can, I, I was just saying, if I can get both done without you doing absolutely nothing, I'm applying for the same jobs as you then. Yeah. For the for the Europa League, and I, anybody that's in the Europa League, bang, I'm in. But no, I'm here for another season. I've got a good enough team to do it, so I'm here for another season. The way it goes, isn't it? Quarter final by Augsburg, who went on, who are in the relegation zone because oh, they're no. in the relegation playoff, uh, and the final is to be played from Leipzig. And Kaiser Slough one. I mean, now you look at it now, we're in identical position now. Yeah. We need a cup. One cup. And the Europa League. Yeah, but you're in a club which is most likely to win that cup. Yeah. I'm looking for a cup which has been cursed from so me the, from so about the, eight seasons. So the the, the, uh, the thing's just turned The again. pendulum again. It's just turned in my favour this time. Yeah, the I'm only way the I would say I'm slightly favourite is if I pick up a team that can't finish in a Champions League spot no. and I just slip into that yeah. Europa League it yeah, all depends right, yeah. how I do in that season now Leipzig is an interesting one because at the start of the oh, season you would that was the team you really for them to come in yeah. one you could muck about with me couldn't you and yeah. mess, mess my chances up but they were in the Europa League they were in the Europa League yeah. uh, and unfortunately their manager Thomas Tuchel kept his job and they went on and the other team was Manchester United. That was the other team I was tracking because yeah. they had an insecurity last year, never sacked them. Or did Kieran McKenna take over during when I was at Inter Milan, I think? Something yeah. like that anyway. But they were in the Europa they League spot They were in Europa well, League spot. Yeah. So I thought, okay, Europa League, FA Cup, that would be perfect for Manchester United. Never came up. Thomas Tuchel was the other one that I was hoping would get sacked. They got to the Europa League final against Manchester United and Manchester United won the FA Cup, well, won the Europa League final in the 93rd minute as well. However, more butterfly effects because Manchester United could have, I could have cracked out both. They have just won the FA Cup final against Brentford. So they've won both the competitions I'm exactly. seeking to get. Yeah. At the beginning of the season, they just teased you yeah. and then snatched it away. Oh, so annoying. He was, <laughs> he was under threat, I think, but he's been there for a year and three years and 20 days. So it was while I was at um, into, well, when I took the Inter Milan job was when the Manchester United job came up which I don't regret doing because Inter Milan that one season was fantastic for me oh, perfect you, if you in could, and out yeah, if you could gone. drop into one country and do business and out again yeah. I've nearly done it with, with Bayern so I've got, to, I've got to be there for another season but. but yeah so let's have a look at the situation again currently the Newcastle job I have applied for the other jobs available right now I have no interest in uh, even Leon down in eighth place no interest in going there whatsoever but if you go on job security is there any other insecure jobs now we've got Marco Rose at Valencia who finished in sixth place sixth place could drop into a Europa League spot especially because there's one game left to play so it might not have fulfilled it's all all the stuff that they need to could be Europa League qualification yeah if his job becomes available that's another tempting one I guess yeah, not bad, sorry. Uh, with this Valencia team they got a good club Brighton uh, they got 37 million pound in the transfer budget the key players are not amazing but this guy will definitely get you goals so there's some options in there there are some options in there and then of course you know if I don't get one of these jobs who knows what's going to happen with the Spurs manager will something else come available we're not quite sure but the Premier League is a destination I really hope I get uh, as it looks like obviously Manchester United despite finishing in Europa League spot qualify for the Champions League now I would probably suggest that England are going to get another Champions League spot they usually do yeah uh, which means Liverpool finishing in fourth place probably won't be in Europa League which is a shame but yeah who knows whether it jumps down one maybe Aston Villa's in it I don't really know right, right now but Newcastle currently have the top scorer of the league as well which is interesting uh, and then Tottenham have the third place one so 
Newcastle looks like it could be my destination to go back to, which is quite funny, all the way back from season three. Yeah. So I guess we'll have to find out. Yeah. But, Dad, you've got a trophy to add to your trophy cabinet, but it's only one. As expected, Dad picked up the Bundesliga this season to add to his trophy cabinet. However, that only ties things up with two trophies left, and could this Newcastle job even the playing field as we go into season number 15? Not only was the Newcastle job available, but the Valencia manager Marco Rolls was sacked too and they are currently in the Europa League next year. And to be fair, they do have a decent side as well, but there was something that just wasn't jumping out at me to go for this role over the Newcastle job. Something just didn't feel right. Meanwhile, Tottenham brought back Arn Slot, which also meant the PSG job became vacant, which might cause some more manoeuvres. But of course, they asked me in for an interview first. And after I turned it down, Andre Villas-Boas was announced. Qualification in the Premier League was all over the place, but it's still nothing for Newcastle United. However, it wasn't long before they responded to my application, and we reminisced on the good old days. They've even signed Jurgen Klopp as a director of football since, which I found quite surprising. And just like that, I'm back with the Toon Army, 11 years later. Dad, meanwhile, had his eyes on an incredible Croatian midfielder, but had to also battle against other big sides wanting his signature. But the midfielder turned down Dad's Bayern Munich side to go to Liverpool. Right, Dad, that guy rejected you. Yep. Dead to I was you disappointed. Now. I was so disappointed with that. That was a hell of a player, wasn't it? He was class. When he come up with that prize, you think, oh, just as quickly, I had a seller player quickly, you know, yeah. try and get him in. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, still rejected you though. Yeah. So instead, you brought in Beckham Medway. Yeah, I mean, this the is the best name I've ever heard in football. And he's a good player as well, so I'm not so bad, but I mean, the other player was a better player, but this yeah. is still a good player. I'm happy with this one. And he's done quite well for you, yeah. to be fair, in the uh, the games that he's played. He scored in the cup game, which he came on in his yeah. debut. He got a good average rating in the league. But of course, he was an Arsenal player. Oh, no one. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I had was that money type of thing. So I had a sign, the best one I get in Never Arsenal. I'm looking at you and you're looking at me and I'm thinking, you've got to say it again. <laughs> <laughs> Given number seven, though, I respect it. Yeah. Beckham, Beckham. Medway. Yeah. Uh, so I definitely respect that. Plays in both positions. But other names, Josko Gvardio. Yeah. I'm, when I had my um, new tactics set up and all that, I, I realised I didn't have any good reserve centre-backs. No. Spent a lot of money on a 35-year-old, but he's still good, so... He's only 10 million. It was the wages, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah wages, yeah. he's on fringe yeah. of 75k. So, um, but I got him in, and, he, and he's gone right into my first team anyway, so yeah. it was, it's worth the 10 million. So. Yeah, he's fantastic still. Yeah. And he covered he me at left back when I had an injury at left back as well, didn't exactly, he? Exactly, so, yeah, you yeah. play both. Uh, it's weird now that we're at the stage where Josco Vardio, who obviously in real life is starting his career, is 35. <laughs> yeah. Alan Ramsden, this is arguably your best signing, I 100%, think. 100%, yeah. He's fitted he's straight fantastic. into the position I wanted him to be because I have changed my tactic, making it a little bit harder in my midfield, really strengthened it up. And mm. obviously I'm going for a cup now, so he's, he's done really well for me, this player. Yeah, I mean, that 20 for vision, likes to beat the offside trap. Yeah. 14 for finishing with 15 composure. He is very good. Four goals in three games. Yeah. Average rating of 8.47. What a player. He means business yeah. already. For £72 million, pound, that looks like a steal. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Which is meant I mean, this, to this, I'm hoping this is the guy that wins me the cup. Yeah, he was a uh, release clause one as well, wasn't yeah, he? Yeah, he was, yeah. Uh, then this one might be a little bit over... Uh, paid, considering that one was only 72. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. When you look at it that way, yeah. But... We are struggling for fullbacks, aren't we? Oh, 100%. We just... Fullbacks and defensive midfielders, yeah. for some reason, we just cannot find good well, ones. We've we spent most of our time just looking for those two positions, haven't yeah. we? I mean, this guy came out of nowhere, really, and, and, and he looked good. And I just had a jump at it, really. Yeah. I know I did spend a lot of money, but he is still good, though. He is very good. He, play, yeah. he plays naturally on both positions. And that was one of the other reasons I bought him, really, wasn't it? Yeah. He's uncovered on both sides. And, Absolutely. And, and you look at his value now. Yeah, yeah. It's, so. it's probably because they know. Uh, yeah. There's no other full That's right, yeah. <laughs> this is as good as what you're gonna get. So I'm really pleased. I've got, I've got, I have got a small squad. Yeah. But I'm really pleased with the team I've got. And, yeah. You know, so I've changed the tactic, like I said. So I think I'm, 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 I'm in a really good chance this time. Absolutely. I mean, yeah. players on the outs. You can see there's a list of players here. You might recognise some of the names of Dad used last year. But of course, they're all new gens. Anyway, so there's no point really looking at them. No. Uh, but tactically, as you mentioned, you changed it. You've gone for a box formation, the Brazilian box, the yeah. standard four triple two narrow attacking as well. And if you do pick without restriction, best eleven, Camavinga finally goes into his natural position. Although yeah. he did a great job for you at left. Back. I was going to say that was another position I really wanted him to be in. That's what I bought him for. Yeah. Tonight. 
So I was pleased that he went into that position, really. But moving all the centre mids, well, the DMs up into centre mid has meant that Prince Vita yeah. actually goes at right back for you. And what a right back he is as well. He's decent right back. Yeah, yeah so I mean, world it was a, class. It was centre, like a Brucey bonus uh, of that when he moved into that position, really, wasn't it? Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, that's the lineup, how it looks with the best 11 nailed in there. Yeah. Uh, how have you been doing? Well, you've won all games so far at the start of this season. It's been a good start for you, really. And the, uh, the Super Cup. The pleasing thing about it is, well, I'm not conceding very many goals. It's all right. One, it's one every goal game. every game, but I'm still not conceding very many. Yeah. So I'm happy with that. Uh, you beat Trier. They didn't try enough. 8-1. <laughs> Hamburg 7-1. Mines 4-1. Gladbach 4-1. So no close games. It's really. a better start than I had last season. So Yeah. And yeah. already, again, you're facing Man City. You, you seem to play them every year. Yeah, I do, yeah. So, uh, so happy days. But I'm not worried about the Champions League, so... No. Nope. Don't get me wrong, I'd like to win it, because it's, it's a, it's a never one for my... Yeah. My sort of... Um, Ego. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Trophy cabinet. That's what we meant. Uh, for your for your badges, and etc., and how your profile looks, yeah, but... My profile, uh, that was the one I was... Yeah. yeah. Same thing. I'll take the Eagle, though. Yeah. <laughs> But of course, you're going for the DFB Pokal, my yep. favourite trophy, which is weird, right? Because I've only just thought of this. That's the first one I won. Yeah, it was. Because I won that before I won the league. Yeah, you came in You came into Germany, didn't you? And won that, then, yeah, that then was the league. Yeah, that's where I started. So yeah. the first trophy I won is the last one you're trying to win yeah. before we obviously both go for the Europa League, which yeah. is almost impossible for us to both get. Uh, so you ideally need to get it done this I, year. I really, because we've only got what, five seasons left after this season. Yeah. So that at least gives me five seasons to go for it then. Yeah, because I, I still think I might struggle with the FA Cup. I think the FA Cup's going to be too difficult for me uh, with like the likes of Man City, etc. And Man United obviously winning it the last couple of years. I think it might be hard for me. It might take me more than just one season to get the FA Cup done. Uh, so you might well, we, then we, we, take we the advantage the cups, into the Europa League. Yeah, we all say it with the Cups, don't you? When you're going to lose one game and yeah. you're out. We'll see. But yeah. speaking of which, I've tried then to make my team very hard to beat. And I think I've done quite a good job because, I mean, the formation I'm using is a 4-3-3. Four, three, three. It's very standard in, in what it is. It's a balanced mentality, so I'm not pushing too many people forward because the players I've got that do go up there, phenomenal. Yeah. We already know about my star striker, Oscar Rada. He is one of the best strikers that we have seen in this yeah. whole save so far. He's been amazing. He's scored loads of goals for Newcastle. He's already got me four in three with two assists and two player of the matches of yeah. an 8.17 average rating. He's right, been okay. great. Yeah. Got a couple of good backup strikers as well. Uh, but I have made some good signings and I've made some questionable ones as well. But we'll see how it goes. So they sold £242 million worth. I played a bit of part of that. There's a there's a couple of players that I actually sold myself. Uh, I think Otake was one of them. Roman Chuk was another one who was one of those backup strikers that any other team would be my star striker. Yeah. But I thought... Oh, you're not finishing 18. Unbelievable, yeah. But I thought, no, I'm just going to go with one up top. I couldn't get yeah. that much money for him. I've gone with one up top. So the players that I bought to go around it are okay. So I've got Vitor who's come in, who is a centre-back... Uh, Brazilian centre-back. He doesn't start, but I needed somebody who can play on both sides. He's strong and very strong with both sides, of his, uh, with both feet. Uh, so he is like my number one backup centre-back. They didn't have any when I first joined the club. Joe Veloso, because we needed extra legs in that midfield. And he is very good and gives yeah. me options as well. Uh, because I've got, as you've seen my tactic, centre midfield on attacks. He's really good at doing that. Because he has runs the ball through the centre, moves into channels. Come seat to get ball kind of stops him from doing that, but at the same time, I don't mind it as much because the other player that I've got centre mid is unbelievable. 1.9 million pound is the same when when Dad, do you remember you found that Munoz? He was yeah. at Leverkusen of 1.5. This is my version. He's not as good, I don't think, as Munoz, but for 1.9 million pound at Boca Juniors, my scouts have done really well, and he has that player trait gets into opposition area so that's the stuff i look for in center mid there and o'neill nib is the, the funniest name but <laughs> he was the last signing i made to go up right back and again can't find fullbacks cannot no. find decent fullbacks he is not amazing he also doesn't even start which i'm like how compared to the other right back uh, so I have been trying to start him. I might have to nail him in. I, I don't want to. Uh, but if I do best 11, he doesn't go in the side. Uh, this man here, who annoyingly you sold two of them last season, <laughs> is causing me way too much trouble because he is a terrible right back. Yeah, He's not very good. So 
yeah, I don't, I don't quite know what I'm going to do, whether I do decide to, to nail him in or not. Uh, but the rest of the teams, okay, we've got Karai here, um, who for some reason plays at centre-back quite a lot instead of the other centre-back. He's just got great positioning and, and like okay physicals. Heading-wise, marking and tackling is not fantastic. Uh, Garcia is a very good player. Uh, going forward, though, Collier is one of the best midfielders in the world. 26, and he's homegrown. Did yeah. he come through? No, he come through uh, Everton's. But he has that gets forward whenever possible, which I love, with unbelievable physicals to play Talk in that centre midfielder. Well. Attack. Talk about your other midfielder. Archie Gray. Yeah. Unbelievable talent. Obviously, uh, leads in real life. But at this point, he, now he's 31. £54 million pound was money well spent. I mean, in real life, he's just starting. Yeah, he's just getting into the prime yeah. of his career. Uh, Reed. John Reed is playing from that right-hand side, but he can also fill in in centre mid, which which is good because I've got quite a few different wingers if he needs to be required to play in there as well. But I think I signed quite well to not be able to do that. Uh, so he plays from that right-hand side. And we've also got Minter on the left. He's a cracking winger, to be fair. Good left foot. Both of them have been doing really well. And both of them are English. So it's been working all right as well. Because the only games I've conceded in are in the Chelsea game, which I've just beaten my former club, Chelsea 3-1. Ali Duckett, my former player, of course, my <laughs> former favourite player. You did look to try and buy him, didn't you? Yeah, he was 160. There, I was like, yeah. every club I've gone to since, I'm like, can I get Ali in? No, I can't. Uh, and Hull, which I did a fully rotated team, yeah, pretty did, much. Yeah. So the other teams, Everton beat them 2-0. And Tottenham, I give a big fingers up to them after <laughs> they wouldn't even interview me for the job. I stuffed them 4-0. And Arn Slot even came to one of your games to look at players, yeah. didn't he? Because uh, he was shitting himself after I beat him. 4-0 <laughs> so yeah I mean I don't have to worry about the Premier League I've done that already with Newcastle and of course with Chelsea as well but uh, you know well, I'm third at the minute my season really starts when I get into January after Christmas yeah but at the same time don't want to be doing too well in the Premier League because if I can just slip into that sixth place fifth place <laughs> and put myself in I'm contention for Europa League but you'd be struggling with that team. I don't. I, I no. honestly, I think I've I mean, made it too good. Like you said, you've made your tactics to make yourself very hard to beat. Yeah. Because of the cups. So I don't think you'd be struggling. No, I don't either. But anyway, that's 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 our goals. That's our yep. targets. Dad's got to win the cup. I've got to win the cup. And I've got to somehow find our way into the Europa League. Can it happen? Will it happen? Let's find out. If anything, though, we were too good. Like smashing worldies in the top corner against Manchester City good. Although my former side Chelsea did have a slight advantage at the top of the table. And hilariously, it's the same Chelsea that knocked me out of the Carabao Cup and who I've just been drawn against in the fifth round of the FA Cup. Dad was also in a similar boat as me too. He is top of the Bundesliga going into the back end of the season, but it is close. And who's in the way of the DFB Pokal? It's his old side by Leverkusen. But thankfully, he put in a solid performance and progressed through to the final. Against the Borussia Dortmund side, who had just beat my dad's Bayern Munich team in the league. Well, Dad, it looked a little bit ropey at it, some point. Like said, we were right on my ass all the time, really. Yeah, it but was... you eventually won the league. Yep. Pleased with that. Six points. Not that I needed the league, but obviously it makes sure I didn't get sacked. That was the main thing. If I started doing badly, they could have sacked me quite easy, couldn't yeah. they? So. Only lost two games in the end. Dortmund, which was the end of the season. Yeah, it nearly cost me the league. Who also you face in the DFB Pokal oh, final. No. So one year down to one game, and I just lost. It was, what, two games before, wasn't it? Yep. So I was a bit worried, especially seeing they were doing well, really. And you look at their, their end record really they were they were on a run yeah they were absolutely so but how did you do you won it just on penalties won it. Really just that's so frustrating 95th minute they equalized 9-8 on penalties yeah <laughs> they sent it because you were too 2-1 up yeah. into the 95th minute oh, then they scored in the 95th minute again in, in uh, extra time and you scored in the 111th and I missed the penalty you missed the penalty Ooh. on the 5th minute uh, but penalties you actually only missed 1 uh, whereas they missed 3 in total so, or was that just 2 that's 2 because it's the same person Yeah. so yeah congratulations you now have just 1 trophy to win and it is the Europa League but you cannot do that by Munich no, nope, I'm, I'm. Looks like I'm off again. So Daddy I mean, offs. you give like, uh, you know, you got loads of options now. You do not have to be nailed down to one. As soon as somebody comes up, that's in the Europa League. You yeah. can pounce and go for it. 
But has that meant that the pendulum has swung in Dad's favour or do I also only need the Europa League to win? Well, let's find out because my Newcastle side won the Premier League. Two times in a row I've come into Newcastle and shot them up from 7th or 6th straight into Champions of the League. I'm worried, but this could be so exciting. Because we're both waiting for the yeah, Europa League. I know. If you've won it, that chapter, the, the FA Cup. Oh. Did I? Did I not? I did not. Oh, Chelsea. Fifth round by Chelsea. My old club. Your old club. Because somebody got sent off. And it was the damn player that you sold to them two <laughs> seasons ago. <laughs> the butterfly effect again. Yep. Which is so frustrating, because he is crap as well. And I didn't want him to begin with. And my old favourite player that I bought scored the winner in Cossio. Just after I got back into the game as well. Yeah. Equalised, and then he got sent off the like minute after. I think the from big thing off. as well, looking at that, Man City are not in it. So they must have got knocked out quite early. Yeah. And they were the dangerous side of the league at the, up until then, weren't they? The only... Big club that was in it at oh, that point knocked out. was Man United. Yeah. So if I knock out Chelsea, it's mine to win. But no, they went through and they won on penalties against Brighton. Huge opportunity wasted. Yeah, definitely. 100%. Uh, what I did find funny is two teams that we've been mentioning quite a lot recently are to play each other in the Champions League final. <laughs> and it's my club versus your club in real they, life. Spurs knocked me out yeah. for the Champions League, so... They were the past winners last year. Good so could job. they do two years in a row? That'd be absolutely mental under Marco Rose. Uh, which is quite funny because obviously I was waiting for that job. Yeah, you were, yeah. They won the ch We didn't know that they won the Champions League yeah. last year. So their interim manager won the Champions League for yeah. them. And they've reached the final again. Uh, semi-final, they knocked out Chelsea. Atletico Madrid reached the semi-final. So weird teams that, that, that got to that point. Uh, they also knocked out Porto. You are still nowhere to be seen no, here. I was in the round of 16. Until the round of 16. Yeah. Which is quite funny, Four, but three and there we go. So, yeah, very interesting. Job you need, done, you done. now take the advantage. Job done. Germany, gone, gone. Another trophy to add to your trophy cabinet for Glory Hunter with one left. The hardest one. How are we like just chopping and changing non-stop? It's really frustrating. <laughs> My anxiety is through the roof. So now you're going to be looking at clubs who are in the Europa League. Mines and Schalke, probably not the ones. No, they're if not. If I'm honest. No. Uh, but then, is there any actually clubs around? There is, but it's Manchester City, who finished in second, second place. Yeah. Uh, I don't know why, whether he was sacked or has just decided to leave Gallardo. He was sacked despite winning two Premier Leagues in two years. The first time he doesn't win the Premier League because of me, he's sacked. Exactly. Which is quite so funny. who's in the Europa League now then? Chelsea and Manchester United. But if Manchester United win the Champions League, obviously they won't be in Europa League. It would be Chelsea or maybe Fulham. So I could do the Chelsea manager going to Man City. Well, yeah. <laughs> it's uh, it, it is is all. I mean, who's in charge of Chelsea? Unai then? Emery is insecure in the Serie A oh. and finishing fifth place, which again is Europa League. So whether you decide to go there, because they've got some cracking players too. They've got one of the only good right backs in the world. Yeah, we've been mentioning you won't have to worry about right backs. He's got they, they've got a good one over there that they've brought in from Ghent ages ago. So you won't have to worry about right backs. They've got them. Uh, so that could be an option for you. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. If you try and rattle a cage there, they're probably one of the best teams in Europa League. If you get that, I'll probably be like, right, okay, it's it's game over because there's no point in me leaving. Newcastle, I've got to just get that FA Cup out of the way. Yeah. Got to just do it. So, yeah, job security wise, that was it. If you have a look at the other leagues, though, the other clubs who are in Europa League football next year, Villarreal, Alaves somehow are doing quite well and they've got into Europa League football next season. No one jumps out there for me, really. No, in the French division, you've got Toulouse, yeah, Bollocks of it, or Nice, who were also. That's my old team. And. They were also insecure. Edin Terzic at Nice. Yeah, that could be tempting. Your former club. Yeah, I've done well there. Which I remind you, Nice board, he screwed over and left to go to PSG. 
and then you knock me out. They kept on knocking me out of the Champions League, though, they didn't did. they? Yeah, they get their own back. <laughs> Whenever good I was proper. going to different teams than that, yeah. Yeah, uh, so that's in the French League, which Where you could obviously go, go for. Uh, but there we go. Those are your options for next season. Or you just sit and wait if nothing comes up. We are, again, in a World Cup year, 2038. Oh. The World Cup is to be played this season, which we know will cause a little bit of drama and a little bit more managerial movements. Belgium are the past winners of both the World one Cup of the top and Euros. Teams comes up though, and they're in that and they're in that position. I think I've just got to jump in quickly. Yeah, just and get take a, a chance. Yeah. yeah, but this is the hardest thing because once you're in there, you basically really you've only got one season because you either it's hard to qualify for it two years in a row. Oh, definitely, yeah. Uh, speaking of the Europa League, though, how has it played out this season? The winners was Everton. Two English teams as well. Two English teams in the final. Mm. Everton were the winners. So they'll take a Champions League spot, won't they? They have done. Yep, they have done in the Champions League. So yeah. take a look here. What you can see there, they finished yeah. in 10th place, which, of course, meant that there's... Uh, I think they took Chelsea's one. But Chelsea, I, I, I got a feeling, because of what happened last season, where Liverpool were also gifted a Champions League spot for where they finished. Mm. Chelsea will be given another one as well. Yeah. Um, and they still got Dejomps as their manager, so he might keep his job just because of that qualification. Really the Champions League, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but Kieran McKenna at Manchester United across the season is no good, but they are winning cups yeah. non-stop. They're not doing anything in the leagues. They just keep winning bloody cups. Imagine if that job comes up, I'll take that. If you finish it off with Manchester United, honestly... Imagine if I'd done the double FA Cup and the Europa League. Yeah, to stop me from winning the <laughs> FA Cup. I don't know what I'd do. <laughs> oh, that would be such a good finish. Come on, man, you're going to sack him. <laughs> right, well, I mean, we're going into the, the back end of Glory Hunter now with just a couple of trophies for me, one trophy for Dad, but that Glory Hunter cabinet needs to add one more trophy. And unfortunately... It's going in dance. Let's have a look. Once again, the FA Cup eludes me. I must be cursed. But congratulations to Dad. He has done it. And now the DFB Pokal complete in Germany and leaving just one trophy remaining. Dad's quest domestically is done and he resigns from Bayern Munich and immediately puts his interest into Juventus who still have a manager at this point. Meanwhile, I was targeting that Croatian midfielder that rejected Dad last season for Liverpool and he's on the transfer list. But at least dad holds no grudges for the player. But out of nowhere, Newcastle went under a transfer embargo because of a looming takeover and all of the transfer dealings I had done were cancelled. A couple of weeks later and the takeover was complete, a new chairman and according to the news reports, it's a new tycoon as well. Back to job vacancies and the Schalke manager Tits has left the club who are also in the Europa League this upcoming season. And they're also bidding for some of my players too. Dad didn't fancy it though because their key player was pretty average compared to the players he's used to. Man City made an approach for Dad and the only up for taking that role would be to stop me from winning the FA Cup but ultimately Dad passed on that opportunity as well. Because it was World Cup year and that was well underway which would cause more jobs to become free. Like the Barcelona vacancy which very rarely pops up. And they wanted to interview Dad as well as me too to be fair. A string of more jobs came through but again nothing in the Europa League and Dad's hope started to dwindle. Meanwhile, my director of football club was targeted by Napoli and he decided to leave, meaning I had to find myself a new one right before the season. Jackpot for Dad, there was Unai Emery left Juventus to take the PSG job and Juve, of course, have Europa League this season. And it wasn't long before Dad was invited for an interview. Just like that, Dad's quest for Europa League is underway at Juventus as they hire him as their new manager. Right, well done, Dad. You found a team in the Europa League. Yeah, I was Just lucky to get in, I think. Today. So uh, we had to wait for a couple of managers moving around, didn't we? And went to the, um, he left. Yeah, uh, which, again, you you kind of are learning from because the Schalke job was there. You could yeah. have gone there. No, you waited. Juve eventually come up, which is really the one that you kind of wanted. 
I guess. Well, out of the two teams, Juventus did have the better team. They haven't got a great team, but they did have a better team where the uh, the other team just had no players whatsoever to work no. with. So I, I knew I'd struggle if I went there. And to be honest, I've only got one season to play with. I, you yeah. know, I could be here at Juventus, not do it, and I might have to move again. So you know, I Emery left the club, yeah. went to PSG, which was another job that came up again and again and yeah, again. We keep right, joking yeah. about ah, oh, if that if that job ever comes up, you got to go for it. How many times has that job come <laughs> up? It's been ridiculous. <laughs> Uh, so you joined Juventus I stayed at Newcastle of course trying to get that FA Cup dad is one step ahead of me but let's have a look at the signings that you did make now you had zero budget when you came in yeah that's right Yeah, so I had to sell a few players yeah, to try, so you, and, try and create a bit of money yeah you sold a couple of players including this one here which was 20 million but yeah. you only got 60% of it uh, so you raised 23 million pound here in Santiago Jimenez you had no left back no left back that's unbelievable wouldn't it yeah <laughs> Uh, so you had to bring well, in left back. I had a right back playing left back who wasn't very good at right back neither was he yeah. so. but you have actually got one of the best right backs in the world oh unbelievable that, yeah. he, he was my star player from the start so yeah. I, knew, I knew I wasn't going to struggle in that position so yeah. he's right there and then let's not talk about this man because he's no. a non-EU unregistered player I didn't I didn't see that when I was trying to buy him did I I mean as it happens I, we couldn't register him at the end could we no. just before the season started well, after the transfer window, but as it happens, I actually changed my formation for what I bought that player for. Yeah, because I wasn't doing too well, so um, doesn't really affect me because I'm not. I can't play him anyway. So yeah, I mean, he would have been a good centre back cover option. For yeah, you, that, was, that was. I'm just annoyed with myself because I, there was a couple of English players that I could have bought, and I was thinking well, to myself, well, English would have still been non-EU. Well, that's why I didn't buy them. Oh, right. I looked okay. at them and thought, oh, they're English. They were good. And I thought, oh, no, they're English. I can't buy them. Yeah. So I kept away from the English players and I just didn't notice that this Went guy for was... an Argentinian <laughs> instead. <laughs> uh, so tactically, you mentioned you changed it. This is what you've changed it to, a 4-3-1-2 yeah. narrow formation. Yeah. Uh, it's not a bad formation. You've used it in the past before. You've got some key players in there. Guerrero is one of them. Yeah. Uh, he's not, not the best type of player that we've seen recently, but no. he is one of your best players. Yeah. I got two good forwards as well, so um, yeah. there's, there's my right back. He's he's amazing, isn't he? Yeah, he's so, mustard. He's very yeah. good. Uh, you got Fran, who used to be my player, and I yeah. sold him to them uh, thirty years ago. I mean, his finish is in ten, so it's not brilliant. But Nineteen composure, though. Yeah, so uh, he takes his time, then he, yeah, <laughs> and then he misses. <laughs> and then Mendes up top is your main key striker. striker, your main striker. Yeah. yeah, again, not amazing. No, but there we I'm go. A, and I got a really good goalkeeper as well, so. Yes, yeah, you do have a good goalie because yeah, I was yeah. actually eyeing him up myself. Yeah, you were, yeah. Uh, but I didn't go for him. Now, the start of your season, uh, <laughs> yeah, in two Oh dear, uh, lost three games, including the rivalry against Lazio. That's not that's, very good. There. That's where I changed my tactic tonight. Yeah. So the my next game I came against Inter, who were um, champions last season. So yeah. I was happy with the one. You know, I, I still lost, but I was happy it was only one nil. Yeah, uh, the only game you did win was a 4-1 win against Fiorentina. Yeah. But, of course, you don't really care about the Serie A. you just got to make sure you don't get sacked because of a bad result. You care about the Europa League. Yeah. And your teams going into the Europa League, you should qualify. One team I didn't want to see in the Europa League was Tottenham. Yeah, but I, I think the rest of the teams are poor yeah. enough for you to manage to Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm hoping I'll go through with that quite easily. So, um... I mean, if you're looking at the league, we can. Go, you can't do preview on who's favourite. I, I, you might be a, somewhere else, but if you're looking down, you've got a former club there in Nice who are okay. Uh, Atalanta, I think I stole their best player. Yeah, you did. So yeah, I was pleased that to see that. Advantage. Yeah. Villarreal are okay. Yeah. Obviously, we've seen Schalke is already in there. Fulham have some really good players. They in did. This. They are amazing. They've player, got they? Nick Carter up top, who is absolutely yeah. incredible and could win a game by himself uh, I mean he hasn't scored that many goals throughout the years but just looking at him he is amazing Connor Cody is also their manager yeah. which I find funny <laughs> uh, so there are a few really good teams in here which you are obviously going to be battling against I mean what I'd really like to see would be me against Tottenham in the final and then Spurs do me a favour and let me win <laughs> I'd love that too because Spurs have an unbelievable team Yeah, Alex Pogue is their centre back no, I inquired about they're going to get him favorites. Yeah, I think it's, it's well. Marco Rose is a manager too, and we yeah. we've already seen how much he's managed to do in a in this Glory Hunter series so far. So he's been a dotted around a few I different clubs. Just, when it goes to the the knockout rounds, I just hope someone does me a favour. Yeah, and knocks them out. Absolutely. Okay, so that's what you're lining up like for the Europa League. But what have I done to win the FA Cup? So I spent a lot more money. Uh, Two hundred sixty-seven million. Also, I sold a player to your club. 
So that was last year, I guess. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I've sold quite a few players. Uh, Phil Beatty's gone. There was uh, another. Th- I sold another three hundred and sixty-seven million and brought in another three hundred million. So, so many players have left the club, including I finally got rid of that player that was really annoying me. Who kept going in at right back <laughs> and is not a right back, and I don't need him for right midfield. So I got rid of him too. So many players have left. Uh, all players that I didn't really want to use or intend on using, uh, and I got quite a lot of money for it. But what I did spend, I was also really happy with too. So, to begin with, I brought in a centre-back from Barcelona because I didn't want to spend all of my budget till I realised I could bring in loads. Uh, so this guy actually comes in, Turkish centre-back, not bad. But this man is insane for £65 million. That's my starting right midfielder. Yeah. Straight away, I've levelled up com- compared to what I had last season. Uh, then we've got the man that you tried to sign last year at Bayern Munich, but he rejected you and went to yeah. Liverpool. I've now got him. Uh, what an unbelievable midfielder he is. So happy with that one. This is a better centre-back, although he sometimes doesn't go into the into the side because I needed the left-sided. Uh, but I picked him up from Inter Milan. This is that Atalanta player that I was on about. £115 million. He is now my centre-defensive midfielder. Probably one of the best in the world. And he's only 20. Yeah. So, yeah. Hell of a good boy. Incredible. And then finally, we've got Freddie Sands, who's good with his hands. It's a goalkeeper. <laughs> uh, 27 years of age, he is the England international goalkeeper, and he is an upgrade from the goalkeeper that I previously had, who actually wasn't that bad, but no. Freddie Sands is just way better. Uh, so I'm sticking with basically the same formation, but I've changed a couple of player roles, including that DM uh, position there, which is now a deep line playmaker on defend. This is what the team looks like. Again, as I mentioned, I would prefer it to be like that, but I'm not too worried about it. Finding a good right back, couldn't get one. Just couldn't get one. Well, they don't best. exist. I got the best one, that's why. Yeah, they just don't exist, unfortunately. So I had to stick with Sakachi, who isn't bad, to be fair. Uh, just not very good going forward. Defensively, he will do, and he's got good mental attributes as well. So, yeah, I mean, I've got some good options off the bench. I'm happy with the team. How has it been getting on, though? A little bit ropey. I lost to Leeds 2-1, which is a little bit unexpected, really. And I also drew to Brighton with Oscar Rada scoring two goals. Uh, but outside of that, I beat Chelsea, my former club, in the Community Shield. Beat Aston Villa 5-0, thinking that's amazing. Hull City 4-0, and then I only managed to beat Fylde 2-3 <laughs> with my strong team. But never mind. Uh, I've actually got Tottenham up next as well. But again, I'm not really worried about this first half of the season. No. I'm worried about the second half with that FA Cup. So, let's see how Dad starts in the Europa League before we take a look at how I get on in that FA Cup and see if I can close the gap. Dad started the Europa League with two wins. However, it all started to go downhill from there. Because in the Serie A, it wasn't looking fantastic at all as he sat sixth place in the league. But where Dad cared the most, it still wasn't improving with some heavy losses. But this goal from a corner, however, might just save him. Because even with this terrible qualification campaign, the three wins gave him a 21st place finish just scraping through. I, however, needed a replay to go through the third round of the FA Cup. But a comfortable win against Huddersfield and it was on to Stoke in the fifth round. Some terrible penalties against Galatasaray and Dad's Juventus team scrapes through to the round of 16 of the Europa League. Or... Is it Dad's Juventus team anymore? Because after a 1-0 loss to Napoli in the league, Dad was fired. Oh dear, Dad. (laughs) Sacked. I was getting better. I I was at one stage, I was 19th in the league, wasn't I? And I pulled it up to 9th, something like 9th or 8th. And then I I scraped into the the knockout rounds, didn't I? But I had Galatasaray, and I thought, that's going to be an hard one. And I only won 1-0 at home, didn't I? Yeah. And I thought, I'm gone. I'm definitely gone now. And I lost to them, but I beat them on penalties. Beat them on penalties. So I was through with Tottenham to play. And I thought, all right, I'm going to struggle with Tottenham. I didn't even get a chance. They just sacked me. (laughs) Sacked before you faced Tottenham in the Europa League. However, they did get battered in the Europa League. Yeah, they did. It was 3-0 and 2-0, was it? Yeah. Yeah, Uh, But hilariously, then the Tottenham job became available and it's still there now. We're at the end of the season. There's a few clubs out there, actually, which you might be interested in because there's another one, by the looks of it, that's in the Europa League in the same division at AC Milan who, yes, are in the Europa League. But is there a chance that I also might be going for that Europa League spot? I hope not. 
So, uh, by Leverkusen, they finish in 10th. They're not going to be in Europa League whatsoever. Tottenham only finished in 10th place. Yeah. But look who was champions. Bayern Mar was mate as well, didn't you? 11 points. I'm Oscar worried, Rado though. with 28. The highest average rate and the highest amount of assists. Man of the match and clean sheets. Which meant I was playing incredibly well. So let's dive more into that Premier League season. Very good from me. And by the looks of it, if we go by past positions, once I got up there, there was no stopping me. No. I held on to it to be honest, all the way through. You had a hell of a squad, though, didn't you? Got a great team. Yeah. Got a fantastic team. But did we carry this team all the way and lift the FA Cup? No! Oh, so cursed! <laughs> oh, I don't believe it. No, oh, I don't believe it now, Rush. Runners up. Oh, so Everton. Penny. On parodies. Where did they finish in the league? Third. Did they? They finished in third. Uh, one penalty missed. Archie Gray. We've spoken about him so much drop coming through Archie the ranks, Gray. haven't we? Yeah. I'm absolutely gutted. Yeah, I am as well, mate. <laughs> well, I have to stay. Because this this is my only, like... There's no point in me going for the, the Europa League right now. I'm in the <laughs> best position I can to get the FA Cup. Yeah. I just cannot... This might be, I think it's like my ninth attempt at the, <laughs> the FA Cup, and I still cannot win it. It is It is a problem. Like, we've all been saying all the way through a cup game, you lose one game and you're gone. Yeah. I'm in mean, my run to get there. Let's have a look at that, because I did see some tasty teams in there. So, third round, uh, we were against West Brom, knocked them out on a replay. Uh, fourth round was Huddersfield 3-1. Uh, fifth round, 1-0 against Stoke. You haven't really come against anybody hard yet. Chelsea, my old team, thank yeah. you very much, who knocked me out last season. Uh, Semi-final, Liverpool, that was a tricky one as well. But then the other Merseyside team managed to beat me, Everton. Uh, what makes it worse is well, they finished in fourth. What makes it worse is their key player. It's a player that I sold to them at the start of the season for £55 million. <laughs> oh my God, I can't believe that. I cannot believe that. I won the other one. I think I spent sick time off won that one. Fulham were a good sub. We did mention yeah. Fulham, didn't we? And yeah. I don't know where they did do in the... Um, they were in Europa League semi-final. I know they beat, they knocked Spurs out, didn't they? Yeah. Never wrote any. Yeah. So, that I was mean, a team I, I wish I'd come for. But I, well, the well, job never have, come available, you? did it? They so. won the Europa League final. Did they? They beat Villarreal yeah. in the final. That is mental. Uh, they also knocked that Schalke along the way. The yeah. other team that you could have gone for. Oh, my. Well, we did mention Spurs and, and Villa were, uh, Fulham were going to be the, the two teams to yeah. watch, weren't they? And Spurs knocked me out and then Fulham knocked them out. I mean, there's only it. one team to go for in Europa League in the English League, and that's the Leeds. So it's not yeah. really an appealing one because I don't think they have that good of a team. That's their key player who is very good. Uh, but the rest of the side isn't that fantastic, to be honest. What about the other leagues? So, I mean, it, across the other leagues, we know about AC Milan. Um, Barcelona, at one point, yeah. were down in 10th. I nearly applied for the job, didn't I? Because yeah. they, they were unsecure, weren't they? Uh, but they managed to salvage their yeah. season and finish in fourth, uh, but which is Champions League. So Villarreal, who just got to the final, is there. So is Espanyol, but I imagine they're not amazing right now. They've got a very good centre-back there, but outside of that, nothing really to write home about. The other divisions in League uh, well, are, nah, and that's kind of where you're looking like, mm, really? Marseille and Angers. Marseille, mm. maybe... But I haven't really seen too much about them at all in this no. whole time that we've been doing Glory Hunter. Uh, so I wouldn't really say that it looks like it's going to be either Lazio or Milan what for about you. The German League. Bundesliga, we noticed that a Leverkusen finish really far down. Yeah. Leipzig are in Europa League. That was the other team, wasn't it? No. I think they've just replaced they've just, their they manager. Yeah, they've just replaced it. I did see that. Yeah. So I don't think that job's going to become available. Simone Inzaghi has just joined, we think. Um, let's have a look. So managers, yeah, he's been in, No, he's been there for 360 well, there, days. He was it was insecure. insecure. Yeah. So he might still be there. I mean, let's have a look. If we go on yours, we can see it a little bit better. Um, the insecure teams, he's not there there, though. So I am surprised with that. There was a time where he was really insecure, but he's managed to salvage his job. He's stable he won, now. He won the last four games, and he yeah back into it. So I think your only option at the minute, Dad, is whether you go for that AC Milan team. I mean, their team looks okay. They got this man here on the wing. He looks quite good. 
Um, let's have a look. Tactics, we can see. So, Mariani up front. That's their striker. That's already better than what you had. Yeah. Uh, Cater on the left. Wow. He's a good winger. Is that the one from Le yeah, Leipzig last mm. season? Because uh, he came up quite a few times, didn't he, on, uh, on mine. I almost pulled the trigger. Centre midfielder is very good, but he's leaving. That centre midfielder is very good, and he's only 19. That's good, then. Um, that name, which you would never be able to pronounce... They've got a good team, Dad. He's only 19. Yeah. They've got a very good team. This could be the team that you go for. And have another crack what's, at it. What's the budget? What's the budget? Are they going to give me any money? Because uh, Juventus gave me no money today. Six million. However, we are only on the 31st oh, of right, May. Yeah. So, so it might not have transpired yet. But they're giving you what they have across the next season. But they don't actually have a lot in their overall balance. So you might not have anything either. No. So, it's a season which it feels like both of us are cursed. Just a curiosity, where did Juventus finish? Because I can't see it there. Eight. Eight. Yeah. Which means they just dropped out. Yeah. But when you had them at one point, they were like 16th. I got them in the ninth. I think I was the best I got them in yeah. the ninth. So, yeah. It's All a right. season of, uh, of absolutely nothing, really. I came so close. Uh, we could have been battling both for this AC Milan yeah. job, which would have been hilarious. But, no. I think I'm going to have to stick around and... And, uh, and see if I can make this Newcastle team any better with £124 million and a, a transfer budget of 1.47. So it gives me about £180 million. I'm sure I can find somebody to spend that on and hopefully win the FA Cup think, next season. I think this could be my last season being on my own. I think... I, I, you, no, no, you're just saying that. Cause know, just to jinx me. I know, I know, you, I know, I know. That's what I like about it. Yeah. I could see you winning the FA Cup easy next season with 180 million yeah, in the bet. team you got. I bet. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll have a look at the trophy cabinets. They're not much changed. So again, it's no trophies to add to either cabinet, which still means Dad just needs that Europa League, but has his reputation now been tarnished? Meanwhile, I am being very successful at Newcastle. I just can't win that damn FA Cup. I began season 17 selling off players to buy better ones. And I was bringing in some outstanding talents, including probably the best right back in world football from Tottenham and a cracking centre back option too for my old team, Leipzig. Meanwhile, my dad was targeting that job at AC Milan to continue his Europa League quest. But more jobs in Europa League was popping up for him, including the Lazio vacancy which was next and another one that dad applied for immediately. And they welcomed him in for an interview. However, bad news for dad as he was overlooked for a different manager. AC Milan also gave dad an interview, but like Lazio, looked elsewhere to fill their vacancy. Meaning dad starts the season unemployed. Oh, dad, that was a tough summer for you. Yeah, it was, yeah. Um... I'm 100% sure of which team I wanted to go to out of the two. They didn't mean anyway, so did it make any difference? No. Both teams in Europa League from Italy came up, which out of all the teams that were qualifying in the top five leagues for Europa League, you think, oh, actually, those probably are the two best teams to go for. Yeah. AC Milan and Lazio. But you of them decided that they wanted no, you. I think the worst thing for me possibly was just being sacked in Italy. I yes. think if it had been a team from a different country, I might have stood a chance. Yeah. I agree. So, uh, if you have a look at the Europa League, you, we can actually see. Obviously, Fulham uh, won it last year. It's been three English teams on the bounce, then a French team, and then yeah. another two English teams. So, an Italian team hasn't won it for ages. Leipzig look like they are the best team in there. I would probably say, if yeah. you look at player-wise, they've got some quality talents in there. Uh, but Inzaghi only really... Well, he's great. He kept his he job. He saved his job at the death. So I'm hoping yeah. they're going to have a bad start of the season. <laughs> Get rid of it before the transfer window. They've won three out of three so far. Oh, no, yeah. That's so. not happening. Bayern no. Munich are the ones that are, are struggling down yeah. there. But yeah, out, out of all of those sides in the top five leagues, you're looking at it and you're thinking, really, it's only Leipzig, Lazio, Villarreal, if that job comes up, will be crucial well, they got to the final. They did get to the final. Oh, sure, yeah. Um, but yeah, outside of that, I mean, you're kind of guessing who's yeah. going to be in it. There's only one English team as well with Leeds. So you are really going to struggle if you're going to pick yeah. up I mean, the Spaniel job was there as well, but I just didn't... They got a real poor side, didn't they? So yeah, not I, great. I can't see them doing anything in it was too much for me to rebuild that side. Yeah. Uh, so, it kind of gives me a free year. The only downside, obviously, is I, I've still got to win that FA Cup. And I <laughs> really don't think I'm, I'm uh, in a fit state to do it. Although, this season, I have bought 
some class players. Now, I sold one player just to make up the money because uh, I had enough, really. There's a free transfer. I knew I needed a backup striker. This guy's perfect for a backup striker. Good off yeah. the ball. Great pace. Good finishing ability. Uh, I free transfer as well. So, not too high of wage. Happy days. Brought him in. The two signings that I did bring in for money, I was given around about £180 million. I went big and I only signed two. One was Giovanni from Leipzig. Their best centre-back. Absolutely incredible centre back as well. Six foot two, right footed, just what I needed because Diamonde's 35 now, gonna be 36 this season. And then finally, Alan Simpson, the best right back in the world from Tottenham. From Tottenham. You're not buying Tottenham players. I am. <laughs> I am indeed. He wasn't the only one you tried to buy, though, was he? No, they had really good centre-back, yeah, but did, he, yeah. wouldn't, he wouldn't come to me, nowhere near. Uh, but this guy is oh, easy, the best right-back. Yeah. Uh, so He's better than the one I had at Juventus, isn't he? Yeah. So, I mean, he's been at Tottenham through their youth academy because of their such a bad finish. He wanted to leave. He wanted to come to the Champions. And I heard he wants to win the FA Cup. <laughs> now, I have changed tactics slightly. Um, that being... I have changed the player roles and the player instructions, but I don't know whether it's paid off and worked. I've made it a little bit wider. I've also dropped the tempo ever so slightly as well. And I've changed the wing back on the left back position to an inverted full back to make it more solid. That will create a back three with one sitting in front and allow my new right back to go forward. Because if we go best 11, my left back is kind of a very good centre back as well. Yeah. To be honest, I probably should have upgraded the left back position. I don't really have a lot of options in there. Uh, Jimmy Wong isn't exactly registered either. So that probably was a mistake not highlighting that sooner and going for a left back. But I'm okay with the team as it is and Simpson being allowed to go forward and hopefully create some danger with these guys up front. Just one tournament. That's all I need. It's really annoying just to catch up. So schedule, it hasn't been the best for me, if I'm honest. Now, I beat FA, beat the uh, FA Cup winners, Everton, in the Community Shield 2-1. Very frustrating when that happens. I uh, beat my former club, Chelsea, 3-1. But I lost to Manchester United, 3-2. And I drew to Villa, 1-1. And then I played a fully, fully rotated team. Not one first teamer. I beat them 3-2 in the Cup. So I thought, <laughs> I'm, I'm happy to go out on that one. So I don't know whether this season's going to go well for me or not. I just need that one competition. And that is all I all I really need. But I guess you're just going to be keeping an eye on the jobs coming up. That's all I can do. I've got, you, I've got a list, you've of, got the, a list of, of the, the clubs in, in it. the Europa League. And I'm yeah. just going to wait for it to, to hopefully someone pop up. Yeah. All right. Preferably well, before the January transfer window. That's what I need. Yeah. So they're still in the competition. Yeah. So, let's find out. Do any of those jobs come up for Dad before the January transfer window? And after the January transfer window, how does the FA Cup get on for me? Let's find out. This Newcastle team I've built could be unstoppable now. We are beating teams like Brighton 9-0 and even better teams like Arsenal 8-0. The Arsenal job as well was one of the ones that came up for Dad during the season, but he never went for it. And I was thinking Dad just needs to stop being so fussy. But I guess that's easy for me to say as I crack on with the FA Cup. By the middle of March, Dad was getting rather impatient and starting to listen to me and Manchester City popped up and they were currently in ninth place, so he applied with the hopes to take them himself into Europa League qualification. But they didn't even shortlist him for an interview, which is quite worrying. And it also turns out that former Manchester City manager Thomas Tuchel was actually sacked after getting absolutely spanked by my Newcastle team 5-0 in the FA Cup quarterfinals, meaning I was also getting very close to catching Dad up. By the end of the season, a lifeline appeared for Dad though as his former club Leverkusen were looking for a manager again and have just finished the season in the Europa League. An easy decision for Dad to make. Well, we've got to the end of the season, Dad. Yeah, I'm still unemployed. Still unemployed. Yeah. Uh, you were turned down by Manchester City. You didn't even get an interview for no, them. No, I didn't, know. Um, they, they come up and they weren't doing too well, didn't they? So I, I took a chance that they might scrape in to the Europa League spots. So I applied for the job. Um, but I I, like you said, I didn't get the interview now. Did no. I? And so, they, they've done better than that, didn't they? They yeah, got into the Champions League spot. They jumped the up into the Champions League spot yeah, at the so. end. Uh, so one job has popped up at the end, which you have applied for. But of course, there are other leading candidates. Yeah, he's the guy. man who took your <laughs> former job. Yeah. <laughs> 
uh, at by Leverkusen, yeah. a place that you know very well. I'm hoping that just because I've been there, done well there, they, they might sort of like favour me this time. But... Did you do well? Because I seem to remember you <laughs> binned them off. <laughs> I won the cup with them, though, didn't I? I can't remember if you did or not. I can't, I can't remember. remember. Uh, the way you no, tell I didn't. it, no, I didn't. I had a you win. left. I had to win the cup with. Um, yeah, you won nothing. No. They they haven't won anything for years, look no. by the looks of it. But they do find themselves in fifth place, and their team is basically the same team that you left. They're just five years older. Yeah, uh, I can work three, with that. Three or four I years can work older. With that. Yeah. So there are some good players in there. Yeah. Um, but there are some older players in there as well. Uh, they haven't been given their transfer budget, but I don't think they're going to have a big one because no. they are not exactly uh, a lot a lot of money. They, they, they're actually in debt. So you have applied for it because they are in Europa League next season alongside Union Berlin as well. Yeah. Uh, they finished on 52 points just outside of that top four. Perfect position for you to take over in the Europa League. No other jobs that are available right now. No. Nope are also in the Europa League. Nantes and Nice, which you think, oh, they might be. No. Just missed out, didn't they? Just missed out. Nantes and Europa Conference League because Strasbourg managed to qualify for the Europa League. I'm guessing they won a cup. Yeah. Or they won the Europa Conference League. However, we have seen something else which would suggest that they didn't win the Europa Conference League. We think it might be Chelsea. Yeah. They also didn't do very well. No, they didn't, did they? No. Speaking of Chelsea, so that's dad's side of the thing. Still looking for a job after a year of unemployment. Kind of a year wasted, if you ask me. It, well, it, it is, yeah. Uh, which gave me an extra edge. Of course, this is Glory Hunter Season 17, which means we've only got three seasons left now. <laughs> yeah. And the hardest thing is, is building a team to win the, the Conference League. Yeah, yeah. You're not Europa League. The Europa yeah. League. You're, not, you're only there for a year. I know. Unless you're really lucky and you, and you end up in the same position again the following season. Yeah, but then without getting sacked. Yeah. That's the trouble. So, how did I get on in the FA Cup? Well, Newcastle to begin with won the Premier League again. 12 points. Like you should Walk. think. Yeah. Walked it. Tottenham in second place. Which I find quite funny, actually. Uh, Man United in third. Man City climbed, as we said, into fourth place. They did very well. Fulham in fifth. Of course, they've got a cracking team. We know that. The Europa League spots this season were sixth and seventh, which is Villa and Leeds. Liverpool still further down. But there we go. Chelsea, Europa League, which suggests that they might have won the Europa Conference League. Yeah. Unless they won a domestic cup. Please be the FA Cup. Please be the FA Cup. There's only one way to find out. Finally done it. The curse has been lifted. After about nine attempts, maybe even ten. You've done the, you've done the, uh, the treble, mate. The domestic treble. Which is why it would suggest that they are the Europa Conference League winners. Because the FA Cup, I beat Fulham in the final 1-0. Uh, absolutely battered Fulham 1-0. By the they looks didn't of have it. a shot on target. Then only two shots in total, one shot on target. Uh, but the road to the FA Cup final, it wasn't an easy one. Uh, we beat Leicester there in the third round. And we know this because when we were coming back, we had a look. And I was in the replay in the fourth round yeah. against <laughs> Luton. And I beat them in the replay 3-1, thank God. Uh, the fifth round, I beat Peterborough. We knew I would have faced Peterborough, but yeah. we didn't know anything after that. After that, we faced... Oh, actually, we did know that because that's I was the reason why Man City was sacked their manager. Yeah. So, 5-0, we defeated Manchester City in the quarterfinal. Semi-final, 7-0 against Bournemouth. So, you got to the final quite easily then. Yeah. <laughs> Other than one replay, but I finally managed to lift the FA Cup. And we've been talking about it the whole series, that pendulum that keeps swinging in each of our favours... You've been turned down for three jobs in a row now. Yeah. That pendulum's just stopped my side and yeah. gone to your side now. I haven't been sacked once in this series. No. I'll repeat that. <laughs> haven't been sacked once. Guess how many dads been sacked? <laughs> Double one. It's two. Uh, so I think the pendulum is well and truly back on my side. But we only have three seasons to do it. To win that Europa League. I don't know what we're going to do if neither of us can win it in three seasons. <laughs> 
I don't know, most tro most trophies in total, I guess. We might yeah. have to count that up and see what that is. Uh, but I've got a feeling I might oh, be ahead on I'm that. I say, with the two seasons you just had with Newcastle, I think you should be in the head of that now, shouldn't you? I mean, how many did I have at Chelsea where I was trying yeah. to win the FA Cup and I just kept winning the league instead? And I yeah. was like, not the bloody Premier League. <laughs> it's not giving me all these Premier League titles. I don't know where to put them. You just won the Carabao Cup twice as well, didn't you? Yeah, so... I think that could be the case, and now I might apply for also the Leverkusen well, job. Well, this, this is the problem I've got now, isn't it? Because it, you will well within your right to apply for a job, and I think if me and you come up against each other, they'd be silly to take me on rather than you, wouldn't yeah. they? You're the you're the manager with the success at the moment. I've been sat back for a year and a half. Yeah. After I've been sacked. Yeah. So that is a problem for me now. I've got a. I would. I was. I'd apply for that job very very quickly, and I was hoping I was going to get the interview and all that done. But it didn't. It just carried on and carried on, and now your job's done. You're well within your right to apply for it now. Yeah, I'm in trouble, which could yeah put you in in a lot of trouble. Yeah. I've enjoyed my time, my second stint at Newcastle. The team I've built here is un like, absolutely unbelievable. An incredible team. Uh, you know, I'm leaving with 147 million pound in the budget. I'm like, <laughs> 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 I'm like okay. absolutely gutted to to lose that. But I've won so many trophies. I mean. My team one alone was just 26 there with 14. Your, just look at your profile, like, all those 20s in there. Yeah, so it's been very good. I've had a fantastic time. Competition wins, as we can see there. So many, so many just this season. Uh, in the last three seasons with Newcastle alone, it's been absolutely insane. So it's time for me to resign from Newcastle. But there is also a trophy to add to my Glory Hunter cabinet. Oh, it's got so interesting now. <laughs> Let's have a look. Finally, after over 10 seasons, I get my hands on the FA Cup. Meaning, I am now completely level with my dad with one job left to do. And it's a race to win the Europa League to complete Glory Hunter. With FA Cup success comes my resignation from Newcastle United, which devastated their ball. However, I have a quest to complete Glory Hunter and Leverkusen could be key, which of course could screw my dad over. But needs must and I am invited in for an interview. Whereas dad wasn't once again. And just like that, Leverkusen wasted no time and welcomed me in as their new first team manager. And I was well underway with the task in hand. The Aventus job did come up though, which again Again, was in Europa League, so Dad applied. But not even an interview there. Union Berlin then came up, and again, they're in Europa League. But not even an interview. France then won the Euros in 2040, which opened up a lot more job vacancies. Like the PSG job when Emery went to manage Spain. And the Aston Villa job after Eddie Howe left for Liverpool, which Dad saw as a last-ditch attempt to find a club before the start of the season. But nobody wants to entertain the man who led Real Madrid to a Champions League glory. Well, Dad, uh, we are at September, so it's yeah. been over a year since your last job and it's not like you haven't applied for any oh no I just, I'm, I'm having no luck at all no one wants me I'm not even getting interviews now <laughs> I keep people showing people more trophy cabinet and they're not interested no not even making the short list no. uh, and this is the thing I've been saying to you I think you need to go further down the, the pecking order now and you need to start building your reputation again yeah at a club that's going to accept you. Because we can see here, Aston Villa is the last team that's rejected you. They're still waiting for another manager. I mean, that's, I think, three or four clubs came up that had... It was four, because it was Leverkusen, Juve, Villa, and... Union Berlin? Union Berlin. Mm. So there was four clubs that were all in Europa League that came up, I mean, job-wise. The, the other ones, apart from this one, the other ones, I, I, I was like, oh, I've got to apply for them because when this one came up, I really wanted the job tonight. Yeah. I felt that Villa could be a team that would I would I could really benefit being in charge of. But Got a cracking team. Yeah, I just didn't, didn't even make the shots. Didn't get sniffs, no. So <laughs> was, I'm a bit disappointed. Um, I've got to let the league start now and let, and see how it goes. And I, I'm, I am thinking about what you said. I've probably got to find a team that's not doing very well and then just take over and obviously try and take over then. So. Yeah. And with a cross fingers hoping that it, a team that's not doing very well. I mean, someone could take over Villa and they're not doing very well at the beginning of the season and sack him and I could just jump in then. But yeah. if, if they give me an interview, you know. So that's what I'm going to, I'm going to possibly wait until December because of the January transfer window. And then I'll probably jump in then. Okay. There was another job actually you applied for, which wasn't in Europa League, uh, but I think you even missed the deadline. It was only two days oh, yeah. later. It was the Liverpool, Liverpool job. job. Yeah, that came up and went straight away. But yeah. they were in Europa Conference League. Yeah, so and you kind of think, well, that's a 
good competition for them to win because they're, they're going to right they're going to be a well. strong they're going to be a strong team in that cup when they so yeah. the chances are if you win that cup you're automatically put into the Europa League so then it's a case of just trying to keep them out of the Champions League yeah spot that's, when it really, that's the trouble so yeah uh, which is what I'm hoping to do at Bayer Leverkusen I want to just slowly slip into Europa League in the league. Maybe what will really help me is a good cup run. Yeah. Uh, and if I don't win the Europa League this year, I can qualify for it again next year. That's yeah. kind of my my aim and goal, really. And I think I've started quite well because I've only gone and won two and lost one already. So my Europa League group, this is what I've got to put up with team-wise. Chelsea, Atletico Madrid, obviously Benfica's in there, Juventus. Leeds, who have been in there for quite a few times. Aston Villa, who we mentioned earlier. Uh, yeah, some tricky teams, but I think I've got to be one of the favourites in there. So. Oh, yeah, definitely. I think you've you've definitely improved the team since you took it over. Yeah, with no money. With no money, yeah. So you, 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 whatsoever. You, you've done well to improve. Yeah. You've had to create your own money, which is it's an hard thing to do, because sometimes you just can't sell players, can you? No, in absolutely not. Uh, I also only have 70% of the transfer revenue. Uh, I've got £7 million in there now, but there's nobody really for £7 million that's going to come in and improve the team. So for now, I've just got to uh, bear with it. I've, I've loaned out uh, a couple of players. I've sold a couple of players. But I've also loaned in a few players as well. Uh, so these are the players that I have brought in myself. So... It was a centre-back. Again, we're not looking at anything too special here, guys. Vassalo, who is a left-back. One of the only good left-backs available on our free transfer. Because uh, I had no left-backs. So no, I know. had to bring in one yeah. at least. Uh, a centre midfielder who plays CDM. But I don't actually have a CDM playing right now. But he does play in a few other positions in like an accomplished role. And then we've got a few loan signings. So we've got Mohamed Johnson, who's been starting for me up front. Because uh, the strikers that we have, one was injured, one wasn't very good. So we've got this guy coming. He's a bit of a beast, to be fair. A bit of a tank. He's got 17 for strength. Good finishing, good header and ability. Then we've got Ray Jean Gibbs from Chelsea. Uh, he also plays up front, but does play from that right-hand side as well. So he plays naturally in both those positions, which I think helps me out quite a lot. They went into play there most of the time, which I'm kind of happy with as well, uh, really. And then finally, Franco Manelli from Tottenham Hotspur. Uh, he plays centre midfield, which is the role we are going to be trying to use in, in advanced playmaker. That's what they want him to play. So I'm just going to have to just try and put up with it because he's better than any centre mid. Well, <laughs> outside of the two that I've got, which is is Munoz, who you bought when you were here. Yeah. And Vlachos, again, a player that you bought. Outside of those two, I had no options. So the Loney's Manelli is going to come in. We've got a couple of you who says like, Oh, that's the guy that I obviously brought in on free. Uh, but Rodriguez is in that center attacking midfield role. He's very good as like a shadow striker, can break the line of defense. I've got him in an attacking midfielder role. Uh, I might use it. Yeah, I think I'm going to go for shadow striker, actually. We're not scoring enough goals. So we'll try that. And we're just going to see how it goes. So sticking with a standard 4 2 3 1 for this season, because as soon as I go to a weird and wacky formation, I get knocked out of cups. <laughs> so, yeah, one season crack. Maybe two if I can get myself a lucky finish. I'm fingers crossed now that you just don't. So I mean, we've only got three seasons yeah. left. Uh, I've sat out one complete season and I'm setting up another half a season. So. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I missed one season as well. Yeah. So, okay, let's see if Dan can find a job. But if not, let's have a look at my Europa League campaign. Well, my Europa League campaign started off very well, in fact. My only loss early in the league phase was because of a stoppage time winner at Villa Park. And November, there came plenty of jobs coming through. But again, Dad's having no luck. He couldn't even get job interviews in the relegation zone. Meanwhile, in Germany, I was having a great time. Second in the league, top eight in Europa, with only one loss and quarterfinals of the DFB Pokal. Eventually, finding ourselves in the final of that cup competition against Schalke. But there's only two more games that stand in the way of me reaching the Europa League final. Dad, we've gone through the whole season. You've applied for so many jobs. It's got to be at least 15, 16 jobs. Not one interview? Nope. I don't know whether it's something wrong with the game now. I'm not quite sure because your profile is good enough. You've got four and a half star reputation. The clubs that we're going for is nowhere near the reputation that you've got. And some of them are not even entertaining it saying... Uh, you would have been a good candidate, but you're not even on our shortlist. Well, the Villa one was, was the prime example, wasn't it? I, I applied for that job twice, and the second time they even said, you were a brilliant candidate, but we're just not going to shortlist you for an interview. You, yeah. yeah. Uh, so I'm not quite sure what's going on. If you guys have ever experienced that, let us know. You've just applied for two jobs which have come up in the Bundesliga, the league that I'm in right now, with Dortmund and Gladbach. I mean, I'd love to have the Dortmund job. My yeah. favourite German side, so... 
Did, did you know that? No, I didn't. <laughs> uh, seventh place they finished in, which isn't in Europa League. No. But we have got to the end of the season. Where did I finish? Third. Well done. You wait for Champions League qualification, which means if I don't win the Europa League this season, I don't have next season. <laughs> Uh, so, I mean, Dortmund, they could potentially get a Europa League. Mm, I don't know, actually, whether, unless it goes down to, like, the cup games. I don't know. Uh, so, let's have a look. By Leverkusen, Europa League final. Well done. Against my former club, Chelsea, who cost me <laughs> so many times in other scenarios. Now, I've picked the team. I don't have a left back. Uh, I don't know what's how this is going to get on like some of our players are absolutely dreadful because of injuries we've got loads of different injuries down there the other thing is i'm also in the dfb Pacal final we've had a good season to be fair yeah uh, by a minute ran away with it cologne and i were just uh, battling out for second place they finish in second place i'm joint there with my old side leipzig uh, only a point away from actually finishing the Europa League spot again, but there we go. I just need to win it. It goes down to this final day, because if I don't, then I don't think we're going to be able to finish off the series, because <laughs> no, no. you ain't getting a job. Well, no one seems to want me, so no. I'm just sat here enjoying myself watching you. <laughs> yeah, and I'll have to, I'd have to leave the job and find another one and do this all over again. So, let's have a look to see what happens in the Europa League final. Well, the final started off great and my Leverkusen side took the early lead through Julian Munoz, a player that my dad bought for 1.5 million pounds six seasons ago. But the game stayed in limbo for a while until the second half where Ray Jean Gibbs, who was on loan from Chelsea, scored the second goal against his parent club. Chelsea then came back firing a minute later to put themselves back in contention. But we held on to the very end. And thus, winning the Europa League and completing Glory Hunter in 18 seasons. Finally, Glory Hunter is complete. Hold well on. I've got to give it to you. I mean, I've learned so much from this being my first time I've ever tried it. I've really enjoyed it. It's a shame that it finished the way it did. Or I couldn't get a job, but you deserve it, I think. We, we could have done with a good showdown yeah. at the end, can we? I mean, we were thinking about if we went the full 20 seasons, when we, what, how could we finish it then? And it was the only thing we could come up with was who had the most trophies in their cabinet, which would have been you in a way. Yeah, yeah. Even, even though you wasn't winning the FA Cup, you was winning leagues, you was winning Carabao <laughs> Cup. I was winning Premier League without league. caring yeah, about it. So, I think that even if it went that way, you would have still won anyway. So congratulations. You won it fair and square. That's that, And I'm glad you have, really, because it would have been a shame if we'd gone to the end of the 20 seasons and one of us, Had won of it. us hadn't won it. So. Yeah, yeah. So that's brilliant. Well uh, you put up a bloody good fight, though, considering this is the first time you ever yeah. did. I can't believe how many times it was switching over. Yeah, definitely, yeah. Obviously, I took the early start yeah. with the Leipzig oh, first you, season you were, win. You were flying, weren't you, then? Yeah. And Straight I just, over to Newcastle yeah. and knocked up another one. Yeah. But then right after that, it was when the comeback came on. And uh, yeah. yeah, that was that was a good fight. But I thoroughly enjoyed Glory Hunt, and I'm glad you all have as well. Yeah. From, for everything that you've been uh, putting down in the comments, we've absolutely loved seeing it all. We've absolutely loved uh, entertaining you with this series. It's not going to be the end just there. No. Uh, hey, we I'm do have other things planned, don't we? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I mean, I've lost, so I, I don't like losing. So I'm coming back. Yeah, I'm coming back. Absolutely. So we've got other challenges that we want to take uh, a hit at as well and have a go at. But I really hope you've enjoyed it. So make sure you are subscribed because you don't want to miss what we've got up next. But let's finish off with that final trophy going in to my trophy cabinet. Valiant effort from my dad in his first Glory Hunter attempt, one trophy away, and he probably did get screwed over because of those seconds at Leverkusen and Juve. But once I finally overcome the FA Cup, I was ruthless in the Europa League and got the job done in one season, completing Glory Hunter in 18 seasons in total at seven different clubs, and even making it into the Hall of Fame Top 10 Managers.